This is the interrogation of Brittany Gosney. Now, this is little James's quote unquote mother, if you can even call her that. Okay, as you see, this is February the 28th. Okay, this is the day, the morning, that her and her boyfriend threw little James off into the river, threw his little dead body off into the river. If you are not familiar with this case, please go watch this video where I explained the details of the case and what happened and just prepare to be shocked at this mother and what she is capable of doing to her child and children with her boyfriend just because her children were getting on her boyfriend's last nerve and her boyfriend said, I can't deal with this. Either you and your disrespectful children leave or I'm leaving. Now here's the thing. You will hear him say all of this in his interrogation as well. Again, if you're not familiar with the details, please go watch the video that I made. It is entitled, Have You Heard About James? And then come back and watch these interrogations of Brittany and her boyfriend. Now keep in mind, these people have tried, have pled guilty and they are in prison now, okay? They tried all these kinds of things, mental illness, you name it, nothing actually worked. It's, it's horrific. I started covering this case when it very first happened because it wasn't one of those cases at the time that was catching any media attention except local medias like nobody even knew about this case you can even look at the comments in the video i made and they're like i never heard of this so yeah here's this mother's interrogation prepare to be pissed off And again, of course, they've got her just sitting there thinking about what she's done. It's been a, it's been a long day for her because at 3 a.m. this morning, she was doing some very horrific things with her son, James. So they're letting her sit there and think about what she's done and again, letting her stew just like they did her boyfriend, which was over in the other room. Same thing. Yes, they're watching her. Yes, they're paying attention to her. She acts like she doesn't have a care in the world. Now, her boyfriend actually acted like he was nervous and worried to death. She acts like she has not one give a damn. Absolutely disgusting. And again, they leave her sitting in this room by herself waiting for between 15 and 30 minutes. So just to let you know, I have cut out some of the of her just sitting here doing this because there's really no reason for you to have to sit here and just look at this and wait for the interrogation to actually start. Alright, cool. Alright, bud. Alright, what's your name on? Um... Uh, 
Brittany. Brittany. Russ Goldberg. Is that A and Y at the end? It is now. <laughs> All right. What's your last name? Gosney. G O S N E Y. What's your date of birth? 2592. And you're so. So, tell me what's going on. What happened? I'm Detective Hoover. Okay, they called me and my partner out for anything to do with children, missing children, children that have been abused, whatever. That's what we, me and one other guy do here at the PD. Okay, so this is real important. This part is you have to be 100% honest with me with everything. Okay, because we don't have this. We're missing a six-year-old little boy. And we're trying to figure out where he's at. I got to make sure he's safe. Okay. So, you know, your cooperation goes a long, long way. Okay. But you have to be honest with me with everything, no matter what the circumstances are. Okay. So, you can remove your mask if you would. If you don't care. Do you care to take off your mask? Okay. As long as you don't have COVID. I don't. Do you? Yeah. No. Then we're good. Okay. So, what happened? What time did you guys go to bed last night? Well, the kids go to bed at 9. Okay. And we normally go to bed at 10. Mm-hmm. Um, last time I knew, I told them, told them all it was 9, 9 o'clock time for bed. Mm -hmm. So they all went upstairs to their rooms. And I went upstairs a little bit later to see if they were asleep. Sure. And they were all asleep. So then that's when I came down, waited a couple minutes just to see if they might have come downstairs or something, and then I went to bed. Okay. What time did you get up this morning? Um, he woke me up at 8. He woke you up at 8. Uh, did he wake you up any time before that to say that uh, James was missing? Not that I remember. I, okay. He said he tried to wake me up several times, but... But you don't I'm remember. medicine, so. What kind of medicine do you take? I take anxiety meds. Okay. I do too. <laughs> so, uh, what's it called? What do you take? Um, hydroxyzine mm -hmm. three times a day. And then I take this blue pill. I don't know what the blue pill is called. Okay. At that time. This is where I need you to be honest with me. It is what it is. Okay. Do you use any other type of narcotics, drugs, illegal drugs, or anything? Do you smoke weed? Do you? No. Okay, you don't use heroin, you don't use, uh... No, I've had family members that went away from that stuff and... Okay. Do you <laughs> know... pushes me away, so. Do you know if your, uh, boyfriend does? Does he use any type of dope at all? Not that you know of. Well, you would know more than anybody, that's why I'm asking. You're not going to get him in any trouble, I just need to know if you're being honest with me. That's why I'm trying to feel it I out. Mean, I've never seen it. I mean, we smoke cigarettes. I'm not talking about that. I said drugs, illegal drugs. Um, of course. A lot of people smoke cigarettes. A lot of people smoke weed. A lot of people use I heroin. I mean, he smokes weed, but okay. that's the only thing I know. Okay, okay. that's all I know. I don't know if he does anything else. Okay, you don't need to protect him. I'm just getting, I'm getting a feel for you, if you're going to be honest. I just need you to be honest with me, honestly. Don't overread into any of my questions, okay? I promise you. Um, so he wakes you up at 8 and tells you what? Or you wake up, do you wake up on your own at 8 or does he wake you up at 8? Well, he woke me up and because he went looking around first, he said he had come in there several times before mm -hmm. to try to wake me up. And he said I didn't respond to any time. So he just went outside and looked around, went through all the rooms, the closets, and all that, and he couldn't find them anywhere. So then the next thing he thought to do was just go around a couple blocks, mm -hmm. see if he might be close by. Did he walk there, or did he drive there, or what did he do for that part? Uh, he drove around. Okay. Um, but he came back and woke me up and... He was like, you know, James is calling? I was like, what? And I was like, no, I thought he was upstairs asleep. 
and I even woke well, up the brother and sister maybe seen, thinking they might have seen him up about moving around or something and they said they didn't hear nothing, they didn't see him. So the baby's name is James Hutchinson? Mm -hmm. Okay. What's his date of birth? 6.30.14. He's a baby baby, so right. I'm kind of worried about it. Well, sure. Yeah, I'll be more than time, but huh? So tell me what kind of kid he is. Um, he's, I mean, he has ADHD. Mm -hmm. He struggles real bad in school. He struggles to pay attention. I mean, he's otherwise than that, like in school and stuff. He's they said he's good in school. He tries to focus. He's physically healthy. No yes. health issues. No. no. Oh, great. Good, good, good. Good boy at home. Yeah. Pretty good boy. How do you guys discipline him we when, when he does? Stand him in the corner. When those, I mean, and again, there's no. I spank my kids. My kids are grown now, but I did spank my kids. There's no nothing wrong with that. Do you spank them? Do you just ground them? Do you take just, stuff from them? Well, my son with the red hair, mm -hmm. he, he likes playing like video games and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Well, my, my the baby doesn't really know how to work the controller or stuff. He tries, mm -hmm. but. Um, we um, just make them stand in a corner just for like a little bit to make them know that you, know, you ain't supposed to do that. Is James in school yet? Yes, he's in first grade. He's in first grade. Where did he go to school? Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks, okay. Uh, when was the last time he was in school? Um, well, it's every Monday and Tuesday, so he was in school last Tuesday. Okay. So he goes two days a week, Mondays and Tuesdays, yeah. down at Rosa Parks. Yeah. Okay. Um, but you're saying other than that, he's a pretty good kid. This, I mean, as far as like behaviorally, I mean, he's a six year old, so I know six year olds. I mean, he has his little fits here and there, his tantrums. I just overlook it. Right. Because, I mean, that's the only thing you can do. Because, I mean, the other ones have the same thing, or they like to throw themselves down to the floor, or right. stomping, or something like that. But other than that, he's a pretty good kid. What's, uh, what's the address on Crawford there? 507 Crawford. 507. And how long have you guys lived there? We just moved in there. You just, like, oh, yesterday, a week ago? Um, to the beginning of the month. The beginning of the month, okay. So, beginning of February. Yeah. So, about four, three, four weeks, four yeah. weeks -ish. Okay. Um, is the room that he sleeps in? There's a pillow in there, and there's like some scratches on the floor. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know. It looks like maybe with a toy, maybe, or something like that. The kids play upstairs in the room. Have you ever noticed those scratches before? Do you know what I'm talking about when I say that? You do not? No, I don't. Okay. It could have been there when we moved in. Yeah, sure. I, really I didn't know if you paid attention to the I didn't really look at the floors. Okay. Do you have mattresses for the kids or anything no, like that? We've been trying to get some. Okay. Okay. I've been calling around asking um, for furniture vouchers, mm -hmm. and everywhere around here is mm -hmm. not helping with that right. right now. Right. So where do you work at? Um, I don't work. I'm a stay-at-home mom. Okay, and where does James work at? Um, with the landlord. So he does odd jobs like that, like cleaning um, up stuff? Or he does stuff? electric. Oh, okay, good. That's a good trade to have. So, really good trade to have. You can make some money now. Yeah, he's trying to work on getting his... Um, like the degree or whatever, you know, it, yeah. and so he could actually start doing actual work, work, like major work, so right. he can get more paid. Right. What time did James say that he first noticed uh, James missing, the, book, the six year old missing? Well, he, I don't know what time he exactly got up, mm -hmm. but he normally, every day normally, he gets up around four, anywhere from four to five, maybe sometimes a little later. But other than that, because he's used to early morning work, mm -hmm. I normally sleep in until about eight, but or later. I know just like a couple days ago, I slept till twelve. All right. Has James ever walked out? I mean, been missing before? Um, he's he was missing once before. How long ago was that? Um. 
I want to say it was the first of the month, but it could have been later than that, but I know it's sometime this month. Uh, from that house? Yes. Uh, so he was missing once before from that house, and how long was he gone for? Um, I don't know when he was outside, but we found out, that, well, he found him at the, the you know how there's basement stairs? Mm-hmm. Well, he found him at the bottom of the basement stairs. I don't know what he was doing, but... Is there only one way to get into your basement? Yeah. That's from the outside? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, is that is it a big door that you have to pull open, or what is it? Um... Well, you'd have to have a key to get okay. in there, so. You start locking it after that. Yes, and that's yeah. probably why he doesn't right. didn't try that route. Right, right. So how long do you think he was gone then, that you just couldn't, a few minutes or um, an hour? I honestly don't have a clue. Okay. Um, and where did you meet James at, Hamilton? Um, as um, ex-wife's house. How'd that turn out? Um, well, I was with somebody else at the time, and basically we were homeless. Mm -hmm. And, um, I've known him for several years. You've known James for seven years? Several. Okay. And, um, I figured since we was homeless, call him up, see his pay, can we move in till we find something else, get situated or whatever. And he said, yeah, that's fine. We'll come get you guys. Mm -hmm. So we came to us and we lived there for, I want to say like two or three months or later more. And then um, they, husband and wife had a big argument. and that was it. Yeah. yeah. They had a big argument or whatever, and um, he found out she was cheating on him, and a whole bunch of crazy nonsense. I didn't want to get involved. I was like, uh, okay. So I try to stay out of their business. Mm -hmm. But how long have you guys been romantically involved? For almost a year. For almost a year, mm -hmm. and then you just moved in together for the first time, or were you living? Well, in we was living. Well, once they started arguing and all that, we neither one of us had a place to live. Mm -hmm. So we went to the hotel in Dayton because mm -hmm. we was trying to find cheap hotels we can afford. Mm -hmm. So that was the cheapest one we could find. So we just uh, went and got a, um, a motel until we was able to save up enough money to get our own place and we were just now able to get our own place. Okay. Now did you guys live next door there for a while? Uh, no, him and his ex-wife lived there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you guys were staying in hotels mm -hmm. here and there and then finally got this place last month or mm -hmm. beginning of the February. Mm -hmm. I got you. Do right. uh, you only have the three children? Yes. Okay. Um, are you in love with, with James? Okay. All right. Um, how does James discipline the children? Same thing I do. Make them stand more for a couple minutes. All right. Where do you think your child is now? Any idea? I have no idea. Okay. And he's six. Mm -hmm. and, and his date of birth was in June. Mm -hmm. So he'll be seven here in June. Mm -hmm. I got you. Yeah, my the middle son. They're both like a year, well, a month and some odd days and a year apart. Uh, you get the other uh, two children's names. Um, and they have both of them have the same last name as me. The seven. What's his date of birth? Seven twenty one thirteen. And the and the girl? Oh. Uh, That's my little girl's name. And she is how old? She's your ID ten in October. So she's nine. What's her date of birth? Ten nineteen twenty eleven. And they all go to the same school. Rosa Parks. Mm -hmm. 
they aren't really liking this COVID stuff and having to do their work on the computer. Mm-hmm. They're used to their teacher trying to help them out. I try my best to help them out, but mm-hmm. well, anytime I have a question about their work, I try to contact the teacher mm-hmm. when they're when I think they're not busy. So they keep changing the days of the well. They go by the the initials mm-hmm. of your last name. So um, mine goes. Monday and Tuesday, and then the other kids that have different last names goes, well, they used to go Thursday and Friday, and now they put it to Wednesday, Thursday. So everybody gets three-day weekend. Yeah. Okay. That's and then we have remote, They well, they normally have remote learning on Wednesday, mm-hmm. and now they just switched it up to Friday. So. Okay. All right. So I've been a policeman for 27 years. Um, I've been assigned to detectives about 10 years. I've interviewed a lot of people, hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of people over my career. Um, yeah, I was just talking on the stop. news that, uh, for like last month. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to look for this little boy. Well, I'll find him. Okay. I'm really good at my job, so I'm going to find your boy. Okay. Um, and my partner's really good at his job, so that's what we do. We won't leave here until we find this boy. I need you to be, um, you know, if you, if you think of anything you need to talk to me about, and I need you to make sure you tell me, okay? Um, if you're protecting yourself because maybe something went awry and the boy's hurt, then I need to know that kind of stuff. If you're protecting James, your boyfriend, from something he may have done accidentally, then I need to know that. Uh, I'm going to ask you to take a polygraph exam. Do you know what that is? It's a lie detector test. Okay. And um, that, there's something going on here. Something's not right here. I've done this, like I said, I've, I've interviewed hundreds, hundreds of people over my career. And, you know, people get scared. They get themselves backed into a corner and they don't know what to do. And my job is to help them through that because sometimes it is what it is. It, it's an act, something happened and you, parents freak out and, um, you know, don't know what to do, okay? So I, my job is to, I'm going to go talk to James here in a few minutes, and I'm sure he's going to tell me a little bit different story, okay, because that's what I get. That's what I find when people aren't telling me the whole truth about everything. Um, you can help yourself out tremendously if you know anything about anything that happened, because if I prove otherwise that you didn't tell me the whole truth, then that doesn't look good for you. Okay, that's not going to be good. If you're forthcoming with me now, I can deal with whatever happened. I can deal with whatever, and we can go through that together. Okay, but I need you to be honest with me about everything because I'm going to find what happened. I'm good at my job, and I'm going to find what happened to this little boy. Um, so, is there anything else before I walk out of here? This is your opportunity to be 100% straight with me. I suspect James, or this is I got mad at the boy last night, and he. I spanked him and he took off out the door, or just anything weird is fine to tell me. You're not going to tell me anything that's going to surprise me. Okay? No. I mean... Did you hurt your baby? No. Right. Do you I know? love my kids. I would never. Okay. Do you know who hurt your baby? No. Right. Do you know your baby's whereabouts right now? Okay. Do you, do you suspect James is doing anything to your baby? No. Okay. You're one hundred percent sure on that one? Yeah, he loves him like the room right now. Okay. All right. Just hang tight. You want something to drink? Yeah, I need to use the bathroom. I'll let you be able to use the bathroom. You can do that. I'll let you do that. You want to drink uh water, coke, or mountain dew, anything to drink. Because I'm thirsty. That's why I'm asking. Right. I'm more worried about trying to find my baby. Okay. All right, then hang tight for a few more minutes, okay? I got a polygraph guy coming in. Okay, and he's going to ask you the same questions pretty much that I asked you, okay. if you know the whereabouts of your baby, or if you know what happened to uh, James, okay? Um, you know, before you go through that process, again, I'm going to ask one more time, is there anything you need to tell me before I walk out of this room? Because I feel like there is. I feel like there's something you're holding back from me. No, I'm like, I can't remember exactly what time he woke me up. Well, I'm not worried about that. I understand that. Or what time he was up or what Well, I'm a little confused that the baby's been missing since 4.30-ish, we'll say. Okay. 
and we don't get the call until after 10 a.m. That's peculiar to me. You understand why? Do you see that? Because it's a lot of hours. It's a lot of hours. You're, you're missing a six year old or a first grader, and the police aren't called. So obviously that draws suspicion. Okay. Right. Um, you know, I don't even know what time it is. So. I don't know, it's probably 11-ish right now. I don't know what time exactly it is. It's probably 11, 30, 12 o'clock by now. Okay. I'll see last time it was 9 something. Okay. Well, and then, you know, the police aren't called. The police aren't anything. Do you have a cell phone with you? Yeah. Can I see that? Well, my sister's calling right now, so. It's okay. What time the cell phone is that? Um, it's through Boost. Boost? It's... I don't know what kind of phone, I don't remember what kind of phone it is. This mobile? Yes. What's the, um, what's the passcode on? Um, 7128, I think. 7128. He does all that, so you may want to double check with him. I'll just check that. Trying to figure out how to work it. Yeah, my partner will do better than me. He he like he does this stuff for a living, so I'll take it. Seven one two eight though. Yeah. All right. You can double check with him and make sure. I'm not sure. I can't stress to you enough that I'm not. I'm I'm very concerned. Not only for, for your boy, okay. And I'm very concerned that there's something you're not telling me. Again, I, just, I, I read people really well, mm -hmm. and I'm, you know, I'm very concerned that you're going to let me walk out of here and not tell me something that you should have told me. Okay? Again, if I find out differently, you know, you're look, you could possibly be looking at criminal charges down the road if you're not telling me everything. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because this is serious. I'm missing a six-year-old boy. I hope he just ran off on his own, okay? But something's not clicking with me. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Something's not clicking with me, okay? Is this family trying to see, see if I'm okay and stuff like that, probably? Yeah, okay. Uh, they come so in last time we saw your baby was 9 o'clock last night. Yes. And the baby's been missing since 4-ish, 4.30-ish, whatever. And nobody's called the police since 10, until 10, after well, 10. we came here at 9-something, I believe it was. Uh, I can tell you exact time. Ten sixteen. Right. I really don't pay attention to time. Okay. I'm going to get you the best in here in a second. Um, you are willing to take a polygraph, then, so you don't know anything about anything. Okay. Just have a seat and I'll be back in with you, okay? Okay.
Just go to the bathroom. Yes, you just okay. go. And you, now do you want something to drink? Yes, please. What do you want? I got Bob um, and I got... Do you have Dr. Pepper? I don't know. I know we got... Yeah, Pepsi. Pepsi? Yes. Okay. H-U-T-C-H-I-N-S-O-N-S. Thank you. So he does not have the same last name as you. Yes. They all have the same last name of uh, Hutchinson? Okay, I misunderstood you. That makes more sense. <laughs> Get in trouble last night. Yeah, he got in trouble for something. I don't remember what it was. You don't remember what it was? Okay. What was the punishment last night? Corner. Corner? Um, I don't really like putting my hands on my kids. That's okay. That's fine. Some people don't. I didn't have a problem with it. <laughs> so, and I didn't, you know, spank on the butt is what I'm talking about, of course. But, uh, the kid said something about, uh, you guys, what you have for dinner last night? They had pizza rolls and chips. The kids did? Okay. They're, they're telling me that James had gotten in trouble for something and that he wasn't given pizza rolls, but he, he was given bread instead because that was his punishment. Do you remember that? No, we gave him like lunch meat sandwiches and, um, Lunchtime. And then uh, all three of them you're saying got pizza rolls last night? Why would the kids tell me that? It's my it's my experience that the most truth you're gonna get out of anybody is from a child. And both the you know, I got a six and a or a seven and eight, nine year old or eight year old almost or nine year old almost that is telling me that he got in trouble, so he wasn't get, he wasn't allowed to have. He had to miss dinner, been given bread and something to drink instead. So why would they tell me that? I don't know. They had bread. They had they had bread for lunch. Okay. I don't know. If they kind of got lunch and dinner confused. Okay. Was was he? Punished by not giving any type of food at some point yesterday. Maybe not dinner, but maybe lunch. Maybe that's what they're getting confused. But they had lunch meat sandwiches, you're saying, at noon, at lunch. Yeah. All I would never them. make them go without any meal. I'd rather oh, go, I know that. I'd rather go without before them. I understand what you're saying. I'm just trying to figure out what they're talking about, what the kids are talking about. I have no idea. Okay.
Is is James your boyfriend? That's what I'm talking about. Now. Has he ever hit you? Yeah. Put hands on you? Yeah. Uh, have you ever seen him put hands on the kids? Yeah. What was the needle that we found down at the? There was a needle found at the side door, where it supposedly was unlocked or locked or something like that. But you know anything about that? So do you use needles for any of your medication? No, there's, uh, the people next door do drugs. Okay, so maybe it was from one of them, is that what you're saying? Yeah, and there's, there's, we've all, we always see a whole bunch of people just walking in through the, oh, yeah. cutting sure. it, cutting through me. Yeah. Like, the, have you ever seen James, you had any needles? Kids are here. Oh. That's what you're hearing. They're probably worried about, where's my mom? Where's my mom? Yeah, they're, they're actually, your neighbor come over. Rick. Rick. Nice guy. Super nice. I think he's a nice guy. I don't know him like you do. but Well, I don't really nice. know him either. He's known him longer than me. I just met him when we moved in there. So, you said something about James does work, like doing electrical work for houses. Yes. Like rentals, I would assume? Yes. Alright. Like he gets them ready. Who does he work for? Taylor. This only thing I know his name is Taylor. And was Taylor just giving the keys of these? Are they all vacant, I would assume? Um, I'm not sure. Do they go clean them out? What do they do? Do you know? Um, I know, he I know when, like when they put people out and they get evicted and they sit people's stuff out, put it, I don't know if they sit it out, put it in the dumpster, I don't, I don't know what they do. Um, I've never been with him on a job or any of that, so okay. I really don't know much. Does he have like keys to the house, James? Does he have keys to the houses and stuff? I um, guess that he works for. I. Did he ever come in with a bunch? Of, I mean, you would know. I mean, does he come in with a bunch of keys or? He always had the same key that he's had. But not some like extra keys that you no. heard of. Uh, basically, I'm waiting for my guy to come here. He's going to do the polygraph for me, and we'll just kind of go from there. I got guys out canvassing the neighborhood, um, so we're actively looking for James. Okay. Little James is what I call him now because I got we got big James in there. It's so, confusing. I understand. So we're looking for James now. Don't think we're just sitting here talking to you. I got a bunch of people out doing that. I was going to say, is, it, is anybody even out there yes. looking for him? Yes, one hundred percent. Because I'm sure brother and sister is worried about the yes, little yeah. brother. Right. Right. Your daughter also said sometimes Big James doesn't get along with Little James. What would, what would you mean by that? I have no idea. Does Little James get any more or less trouble than the other two? They all get in right. about the same. They're all close to the same age. They all, yeah, okay. So not. I mean, my daughter, for instance, when she went to school, threatened to stab somebody. Right. I had a, when she came home that day, because the teacher pulled me to the side oh, and yeah. dismissal and was like, have you ever heard of your daughter threatening anybody at any time in your, her life, in school, anything? I was like, no. Okay. Because I, I don't know where she would have got that from. Right. They said that she could have heard it from her little friends talking about knives or something. Okay. Right. I know James does like being mean to them, so. Like? Hitting them, taking their toy away. Oh, little James. Yes, not okay. that. I got you. <laughs> How about I just say my son? Get that over. Uh, all right.
can you read? I can read some words. I don't understand some words. I have to fit like big words. I can't understand. Okay. I'm going to read this to you. What you don't understand, I'll explain it to you. Does that sound good? It says, warning, I am a police officer. I want you to have the right to remain silent. They, they say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to consult with a lawyer before, before and during any questioning have a, and have a lawyer present while you're being questioned that if you cannot afford a lawyer, won't be appointed to you free. Before any questioning and you can stop talking to me or any other police officer at any time during questioning. Do you understand that? Meaning that I'm not forcing you to talk to me. I'm trying to figure out what's going on with your baby. Okay. Flip that card over. Do you understand that? Okay. Sorry, I've just never been to no, that. No, that's all right. I need you to print your name right here saying you understand that. You know, the date and time. You said print? Yeah. Are the kids okay? Yeah. If you're out there eating food, <laughs> junk food, I'm sorry. So we got here. Hey, it's something, huh? Yep. Today is February 28th. Start right February, just, just at AD. is fine. Of 21. And the time is 111. PM. PM? Yes. Thank you. All right, so James is. On a little different story. All right, so this is what I need to know. In the middle of the night last night, okay, you went upstairs and you got you picked James up out of his room, and you went downstairs where your boyfriend was at. Okay. Tell me, I want, and I'm not going to go into everything James has told me, okay, because I'm still looking for you to be honest with me. Okay. Tell me about that. Tell me what happened after you picked him up out of the room and went downstairs. I said, I don't remember picking him up, taking him downstairs. You don't remember anything about picking him up, taking him downstairs in the mobile night? James is pushing this off on you. Okay, I'm going to be real upfront with you about this at this point. Okay, so you need to be very smart. And honesty goes a long, long way with me. And if there's any criminal charges in the future, honesty goes a long way. Okay, I'm getting a story that is totally different than what you've told me. And I don't know why James is telling me that, but that's what he's telling me. Okay, that's part of what he's telling me. Okay, he's wanting more detail than that. Okay, but I'm not going to share that with you. I need to know what happened last night with your your boy, your six year old, or this morning, early this morning, in the middle of the night, whatever. I don't know. He said that he had a nightmare. The but six year old? He, yeah, but he didn't, I didn't carry him downstairs or anything. Okay, who carried him down the steps? He walked down the steps. He walked down the steps in the middle of the night? By what time was that? I don't, I couldn't tell you. I didn't pay attention to the time. No, in the middle of the night? Yeah, I was more worried about what he was wrong with him. What does that mean? Like what? Why he was downstairs? Why was he uh, downstairs? Why was he awake? Uh, what was bothering him? Did he feel sick? Or he had to use the bathroom? Okay, so he's downstairs, and what does he say to you? We had a nightmare. Okay, in those words. Okay, so we had a nightmare. What did you do? What did you? What was the next thing you did? Just try to sit there and. Did he? Where did he come to? The living room. No, he went in there, woke me up. In the bed. Yeah. Uh, and was James in bed with you at the time? Yeah. Uh, and then what happened? 
He came in and said, Mommy, I don't know how many times he's probably mm-hmm. said my name. I'm a deep sleeper. Okay. Uh, but I was rolling over and I heard, Mommy, Mommy. At first I thought I was just hearing things. Right. And then something told me, like, maybe I'm not hearing things. Mm-hmm. So I opened my eyes and he said, Mommy, we had a nightmare. Or, Mommy, we see a shadow. I was like, what shadow? Mm -hmm. He said, I don't know, they're white. I was like, do you know what it is? I said, I don't know. And he said he couldn't really sleep. Couldn't tell me what he was dreaming about. Or his nightmare was. Just he was scared. And then what did he do? Or what did you do? I just kind of comfort him. Console him? Mm-hmm. Okay, how did you do that? Just hold him and tell okay. him it's okay. Okay, and then what did he do after you were done doing that? Um, I believe we were just, I was just kept asking him if he was okay. Did he sleep with you the rest of the night or what? I told him if he wanted to go back up to his room, he could. Mm-hmm. Or if he wanted to sleep downstairs. Well, since we moved into this new house, it's kind of new surrounding to them all. Mm-hmm. So every once in a while they'll sleep upstairs, but then they like to sleep downstairs, I'm guessing because it's more comfortable mm-hmm. with mom downstairs. Right. They normally sleep in a living room. Well, not normally, but... Right, I got you. When they have a bad night or whatever the case may be, they sleep downstairs. I allow it because, I mean, I would want them to be, let them feel like comfort mm-hmm. that I'm closer to them instead of all the way upstairs. So uh, I told them, wait, if you don't want to go upstairs to your room to sleep. Let me go upstairs to get your the bedding because mm-hmm. we don't have mm-hmm. mattresses and stuff so he can lay down. Mm-hmm. Um, so I went upstairs and grabbed his bedding because he said he was still kind of scared to right. even go upstairs, which I couldn't understand if you're having nightmares. Thought you seen something. Mm-hmm. So I went upstairs. I told him, look, I'll be right back. Nothing's going to happen to me. I'll be right back. I'm going to go. So you're downstairs, downstairs in your room at this point? Yeah. Okay. So you go upstairs. So I went upstairs to grab his bedding. Mm-hmm. And I told him I laid it out next to the other two because for some reason they wanted to sleep downstairs. Mm-hmm. Um, but they get up early in the morning to go upstairs, play, stuff normal kids would do. Mm-hmm. That way they're not, they try to let me have some sleep. Yeah. And plus they're used to getting up, going to school and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I went upstairs, grabbed his bedding, brought it back downstairs, and laid it with the other two so he felt that I'm in the next room. With the other two? The, the kids. The two kids were already downstairs? No, they were upstairs. Okay. And somehow, I don't know how they got downstairs. But I woke up when I seen James kept yelling, Mom, Mom, Mom. And it looked like he was scared to even use the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Because he was, you know, how bullies hold her. He was holding himself and um, he said, Mom, can you please take me to the bathroom? I was like, yeah, I'll go with you to the bathroom. I'm not going in the bathroom, but I'll stand by the bathroom door. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want him to feel like I'm messing with them or any of that. Um, well, he, he used to joke around with me all the time, the, the kids. Mm-hmm. He used to joke around all the, all the time with me and say, Mom, you're looking at my pee bird. I'm like, dude, I'm, all I'm doing is washing it. Right. <laughs> so I told him, does he feel, because normally he can't really pee in front of me. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing because uh, he thinks I'm standing there watching him. Right. So I'm like, do you want me to stand in here with you or stand outside the door? He said, just stand outside the door, Mom. So I just stood outside. Well, I don't know, well, I don't know if you've been in our house yet. Mm-hmm. Um, the little room that's supposed to be the laundry room, we just ain't got the washer and dryer in there. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I stood right there. The door was wide open. Uh, we got that little night light that's in the bathroom. Okay. Um, that way they don't try to help them not be scared to go use the bathroom. Mm -hmm. um, but I told them I'm standing right here at the door. And I told them the night light's on. That way we don't wake nobody else up. And so you're saying, and what's your other voice name? We're already downstairs. Yes. Were they on the couch or were they on the floor? They were there on the floor. Okay. So they were already downstairs. I don't know if they had the same issue. I don't, okay. I don't know. They were already downstairs. Okay. Um, but uh, he was. they were all upstairs sleeping in their individual rooms. Mm -hmm. But sometimes the boys kind of like sleep together. I don't know because I guess they feel more safe. Because, I mean, we've been in hotel rooms and living with other people, and they're not used to each. Right. Well, the little girl's used to having her own because she's a little girl, but the boys ain't used to right. being apart. They're used to sharing a room. So when you put them to bed last night, they were all upstairs. Yes. And... I even went up there... Do the two boys have different rooms? Um, they share a room? Well, I leave their bags of clothes in the one room because... Right. They, I tell them if they want their own room, because there's three bedrooms upstairs. Mm -hmm. I told them if they want their own room, then that's fine. But if you don't feel safe right. well, or yeah. comfortable, you can sleep in your brother's room, but you cannot sleep in your sister's room. So he gets done going pee. And then what? Um, we went in there. I turned car tins on. And you've already been upstairs by now and got his bedding. Yeah. Okay. What is his bedding? Um, a blanket that lays on the floor. Mm -hmm. Another blanket to cover up with, and a pillow. Okay. Um, so I went up there, came back down. I turned because he was like, "Mom, can you turn something on so we can see?" And I turned the TV on that way, went waking everybody up in the house. Mm -hmm. So I turned the TV on. He asked, "Mom, can you put cartoons on?" I put cartoons on for him because they like. When they're doing their schoolwork at school, they do their work. I don't know if your kids get on YouTube and watch all these SpongeBob and all that. They get on YouTube and watch SpongeBob, but he wanted to. We don't have cable, cable, so mm -hmm. um, he has to watch cartoons. I was like, I'll find something, and there might be something on it this time. Mm -hmm. But I was going through the channels, found the channel. He said, That's fine, Mom. So. I sat there on the couch. He was sitting on the floor on his bed next to brother and sister on the floor. And uh, he was just sitting there. I asked him a couple times here and there, are you okay? Is something still bothering you? Mm -hmm. Are you still scared? Do you feel a lot better? So how long have you been asleep before you think you woke you up, brother? You could guess if you could guess. I don't know, maybe like thirty four hours. Okay. So if you, I mean, once what I, time I go, to you bed, go to bed, I go to bed at ten. Once okay. I go to bed, I'm I'm out. Right. So why didn't you tell me all this prior to before when we were talking? Why didn't you tell me all this story before? Because I just asked you if you remember going upstairs originally when I came in, because that's what I'm being told, and you didn't remember any of that. Now all of a sudden you're remembering detail about him. Being I have scared. a bad problem with memory mm -hmm. issues. Um, I can't. I can't tell you, but I can't remember day to day. Okay. You're still not lying. You're relying to me about some stuff. So. Are you, did you grow up in church or anything, in the faith? Christian um, faith? I remember when I was a little kid that my grandma used to take me to church all the time. Wow. Well, I suspect something accidentally happened, okay, because you, you are all over the place with your stories, okay? 
for whatever I'm reason, just, you're scared and you're not telling me the whole truth. Okay? And I understand you being scared. I know you don't know me. Okay? But I'm the most honest policeman person that you're ever going to talk to. Okay? I'm telling you, it's in your best interest to tell me the entire truth. Okay? Or you're going to be in a world of hurt. I'm telling you. No matter what happened. If it was, no matter what happened. If you, by telling me the truth goes a long way. It's going to go a long, long way in this process. Okay? I know that something, that something either accidental or something happened to James or you wouldn't be all over the place like this. I've done this a long time. Okay, this is all I've done for 27 years. Okay, is talk to people. You have to tell me wh what's going on and what happened. Okay, at this point, because James, your boyfriend, is telling a different story than what you're telling. Okay, you're deflecting, you are minimizing stuff, meaning that, you know, you're not, not telling me the whole truth. Well, he's breaking down. Okay, he's telling me the whole truth. Okay, so you can sit here and keep lying to me. I can't make you tell me the truth. You know that. You're going to have to take a deep breath and tell me what happened and what's going on here. Because something happened. Okay, there's nothing you're going to tell me that I've not heard a million times over my career. Okay, but I need to know the truth. Because believe it or not, I know it's an old cliche, the truth is what helps people. The truth is what sets people free. Okay, you don't want to live with what's going on here. Okay, you want to tell me the truth. Most people finally tell me, okay, this is what's going on. Okay, that's your choice, huh? Okay, but you know what happened. You know what happened. Only you know, and James knows, but only you're going to be able to get out in front of this the best you can. Okay, I have to see some remorse. Okay, I understand. From remorse. Well, I have to see that. Okay, I, I've not been telling you the whole truth. I'm sorry. Remorse means I'm sorry. Okay, I have to, so you understand what I'm saying? This is what this is what happened, and this is the truth. Okay, a six-year-old just doesn't get up and walk out the door. Okay, there's more to the story than what you're telling me. Okay, I've talked to James. My partners talked to James extensively, and James is coming off of this slowly. I would suggest for you. Just tell me the truth now. He might have told me more now. I don't know. I'm not, I've been in here with you. Okay? But James, is, uh, he took a deep breath, and I suggest that to you. Take a drink of your pop, take a deep breath, and just tell me what's going on here. Okay? Stuff happens in life. There's no perfect parent. There's no perfect person. I got very pissed off at my kids many, many times over my lifetime and been aggravated with them to the point where, yeah, I can yeah, literally I get, choke them out. I get aggravated with them a lot, but I wouldn't. Okay, tell me what's going on with the with the baby. Take, tell me the truth this time, the entire truth. Sorry, my anxiety. I understand that. Off the chart. I understand that. Okay. And maybe something did happen that you didn't mean for it to happen, but I need to know that. Okay? That's what I'm trying to get out of you. Okay, I talk to parents every day. They do stuff that they, I, I, don't, I understand. Okay, you had a moment of fury. I've been furious with my children before. How many kids do you have? I have three. Same as me. Okay, and now mine are adults, two married, one engaged, but they're adults now. But there was many times that I lost my temper with them severely. Okay, and stuff that I regret doing. Okay, we all have regrets. There ain't nobody in this building that doesn't have regrets and stuff that they made mistakes. There's nobody perfect here. But I need you to be tell me what's going on with your boy and tell me what happened truthfully. Okay? So you just took a drink of your pop. Tell me what's going on. Sorry, I'm trying to get my okay. You're good. anxiety to okay. calm down. Just take a deep breath and just tell me what happened. Okay. Okay, the kids wasn't listening. Well, you know, kids don't listen. You've mm -hmm. probably been there a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, kids wasn't listening. I try my best. I don't like yelling and scream at my mm -hmm. kids. Because I feel like if you're yelling and screaming at them, they don't want to listen. Okay. So they're more scared mm -hmm. of you yelling and screaming at them than wanting to 
listen to mm-hmm. what you're trying to tell them. Right. Um, but anyways, we took the kids. I'm sure you did too. But we took the we take kids as like the toys, take them away, put them up mm-hmm. until they start right. coming back to being behaved. Mm-hmm. Um, they also have a lot of times lying about mm-hmm. I didn't pee myself and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I the one that's out there, the boy, mm-hmm. the son, he likes peeing on himself and sure. kind of I'm sorry, mom, but yes, I did. Like 20 minutes later, like. Why wasn't you telling me then? Mm-hmm. But anyways, um, they were they wasn't listening, mm-hmm. and he thought that James thought I wasn't making him listen, Mine, right? Because um, he's normally at work mm-hmm. nonstop, but. Um, he doesn't, he thinks they're, they hate him because mm-hmm. they don't really listen to him right. well. And sometimes they don't even listen to me, but they're kids. Sure. Um, but. We can get into all this book, okay? Tell me what happened. He told, James told me to get rid of the kids. Okay. And so. Um, I took them for a drive to make them think I'm mm-hmm. going to get rid of them, but I'm not going to get rid of my kids for anybody on mm-hmm. the planet. And he told me to get rid of them because they were not listening. He was tired of putting up with it. And I kept telling him, like, I'm not going to get rid of my kids. Like, I can take them, give you a break. Mm-hmm. And for me and them for a little mm-hmm. while, take them for a drive, whatever. But I'm not getting rid of them. They're my kids. I will not do that. Okay. And I said, if I wanted to do that, I would have them up a long time ago. Mm-hmm. But he kept telling me, either get these kids under control or um, get rid of them or do something with them. So I tried asking family members to... So what um, happened last night? Let's fast forward to that. We went for a drive. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what road it was. Okay. It was just, we were just driving around. Um, well, the kids were going to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. I had pulled over to this I don't know, a little booth. In Little Town? Yeah. Okay. It's a little stall or something. Mm-hmm. A bathroom. I pulled over to the bathroom and let them all use the bathroom. While it was raining and stuff, I left the, left the door unlocked in the van mm-hmm. and told them, we'll all go in here. Not all of us at once, but each one of us go in here one at a time, use the bathroom. So we went in the bathroom. Well, I couldn't go in there. But when I went to go in the bathroom, I told him to go ahead and just get in the van. Mm-hmm. Well, James had slipped and fell. Because his mm-hmm. shoes were sweat slippery. And he had hit his head. Mm-hmm. And. Did it kill him? Did it kill him? Did it fall hurt him? Well. He was, I asked him if he was okay, he wouldn't answer me. So, I noticed he was breathing kind of heavy. Mm -hmm. And I thought, maybe that's not normal. I've never seen him blurry that way before. Well, he was breathing, I don't know how long he was breathing for, but he had fell and busted his head on the side of the van Mm -hmm. and trying to get in there. And... He was breathing heavy for a couple minutes, and then he, I couldn't, I tried to do CPR, I couldn't get him. So he stopped breathing, and where's his body at? You're doing good, okay? Just tell me where his body's at, because I gotta go find him. I, for you, okay? This is called closure now, okay? Where's, where's his body at? Would you take it back home with you? 
No, I left it. And you left it. So who's all in the car with you? All of us. James, you. Yes, we always have the three children. As a family. So all five of you. Yes. All right. And where? What park was this, or where was this at in Middletown? Because it would make sense to put. To me, it was. Did you put him in a dumpster? Did you put him? Did you just let him lay right there? Was he buried? I mean, I, that's what I, I need to know. I didn't do nothing with him. I just left him lay in the parking lot because it was a plain parking lot. There was, I believe, like water over here or something. Mm -hmm. And there was a one little stall, and I left him just lay on the ground. Okay. Did James? Was, did James do anything with him? Your uh, boyfriend? I mean, it doesn't make sense just laying right there on the ground. So well, I left him laying in there on the ground because yeah. I was going to call the ambulance, but I was right. I was scared, shook up, didn't okay. know what to do. Okay. So, so now we need to figure out where this is at. Well, he, uh, the, big, the little boy was laying on the ground. I went to the bathroom and told him, to try, you try real quick. I couldn't hold myself. Mm -hmm. I told him, you try real quick to give him CPR. Mm -hmm. And so I went to the bathroom. I came out. He was gone. Okay. Where, what did the other two children say about all this? Um, well, they were in the back seat, so they couldn't. Okay. I'm going to give you a break here for a second, okay? Take it. Relax. Okay. I'm going to go out and talk to James real quick and see if we can't figure out where this is at. Okay? Indiana and Kentucky. Between Indiana and Kentucky. I don't really know my ways about. Okay. Was well, the body wrapped in anything? Or did you just have clothes on him or what? He had clothes on. Okay. Do you know what he was wearing? Uh, his red jacket. It's like a camo red jacket. Mm -hmm. um, black and white shoes. Red? Cincinnati red? No, it's just like a plain red. camo red jacket. Okay. Um, you know the brown school pants? Oh, yeah, and, and yes, a pair of those and um, it was a black and white shirt. I don't remember what was. Mm -hmm. It was a long sleeve. I don't remember what it was. Um, I can't remember exactly what was on the shirt. Just I just know that's what he had on. Sure. He had a glasses on. Did you have his glasses? Um, Where are those? No, but he has his glasses. So whenever he went in the water, he had his glasses? He, he, he wears them every day. Okay. He's blind. And you made sure he had them on whenever he... Mm -hmm. Right. Now, he, now, James tells us a little bit more detail. Okay, so I'm going to get into some of that with you now. Okay. And you've been, you're, you're starting to come around with honesty, and I need that. That's what's going to help you, okay, and help us find him. Um, so the only, one of the differences is James says that he wasn't with you up, up at the park when all this happened. Is that true or not? I don't know if it was a park. It was an empty parking lot. It was an empty parking lot? Was it near, near any water, near a lake? There was um, water here. I don't know what it was. See any boat docks, any boats in the water? Uh, not that I recall. Okay. And then there's like woods off to If I pulled it up on a map, would you be able um, to look at it or no? Was there a... Uh, was, I'm trying to remember the park. Something run. Rush run? Yeah. Was it Rush run? Yeah. And you were near the water? Yeah, it was. It said it was Rush Run Park, but I seen water, so it had it been a lake, or I don't know sure. what it was. Uh, now, James goes into a little bit more detail what happened to him. 
what happened to your son. Okay. First off, was James with you when all this happened? Your no. boyfriend. He was not. The, the, the three, three kids. The three kids and you. Yeah, well, he told me to go somewhere. To, to do what? To get rid of the kids. To get rid of the kids. Okay. So the truth now is he didn't just slip and bang his head. Okay. Because you've done really good up till now. I need to know it's precisely how he died, how he passed away. So I know this is, this is a hard part for you. Okay. And I know that you're a mom and, you know, I know you have feelings for James, but you also, you're a mom and you love your children. Okay, I'm sure it was one of the hardest things you. I know it was the hardest thing you've ever had, you've done to one of your children. I've never looked after any of my kids ever. I know, and you went down a wrong path here, and you know that now. Okay, specifically though, he was not with me. Okay, it was just me and the three kids because he said he needed a break or I need to do something with the kids. Okay, and you were tired of hearing him or what? I, I was tired of listening to it. Okay. So I just got grab my kids because that's what I think of first is to grab my kids and go. Mm -hmm. And he told me I can drive the van okay. or whatever. So he told you to take the van. Yeah, he told me whatever I wanted. I wanted to drive. I can take it. Right. Because I have my license. So I took the van and it was going to the lake park, whatever it is. Well, have you ever been there before? Um, what made you go there? Because it's kind of out he of the He has a friend. Well, he used to. He no longer does in life and whatever got an argument. Um, he has a friend named Dean and Ashley that lives somewhere out there. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly where. Because uh, every time he went down there, that's where he, so, he drove. I don't, I don't know yeah. nothing. I'm the movie driver. So we were kind of familiar with that area. From being up at their house? Yes. Okay. Kind of, kind of not. I remember him stopping once to let one of the kids use the bathroom in his porty potty thing. Yes. And so that's why I stopped because they were like, I gotta pee, I gotta pee. And that's the only place I knew around here that had, I knew for a fact had a little bathroom. That's porty potty Because there was no gas station. I couldn't remember no gas station. By nearby, and I didn't want him to pee all over. Sure. Uh, so I stopped at the porta potter, let them each kid use the bathroom. So James went to go get in the van. Uh, well, James didn't want to get out of the van. Right. I'm talking about the kid. Yeah. Cool. He didn't want to get out of the van. And he was forcing me, like, you gotta get rid of this fucking kid. Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, dude. Why should I have to get rid of my kids? Right. Why can't you just go? Sure. So he wouldn't get out of the van and go ahead. And I told him, because he was, had to use the bathroom too, told him I wasn't going to leave him. Mm -hmm. Well, I was thinking about leaving him, so I kind of like pulled off a little bit. And James fell kind of down on his knees, mm -hmm. got back, went to go get back up. And then just dropped. Did you hit him with the van then? No. I didn't hit him with no van. Okay. I didn't run him over. I didn't do none of that. Okay. Um, so he hits the he van. He had the, the van door slides open. Mm -hmm. So he had a handle of the van. So the door is open? No, they slide back. Right. It's a minivan. Right. right. They slide back. He had the handle of the van, the mm -hmm. back door van on the driver's side and when I went to go kind of pull off he didn't have the handle in his hand mm. it was kind of just like standing there not close close to the van but just kind of standing there holding the van door trying to get back in mm -hmm. well that door out of that door is messed up right and it it I don't want to unlock it don't want to lock so um I went to go pull off, and James, as I was saying, he was a walk. He fell, tried to get back up, and he fell and hit his head on the ground. And you were in the parking lot there. Yes. If you, I'm gonna explain it more. Okay. If you go in the driveway. I don't remember 
how to get there. If we took you up that way, could you show us where? Where he was at? Yeah. Um, yeah, there's actually a little, not a big, big glob of blood, but there's like a, this much blood. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it might be even more, where his head had hit the concrete. Mm -hmm. And um, I rolled him over, mm -hmm. kind of try to help him back, mm -hmm. see if I can get him to come back. Mm -hmm. Well, did you know he was dead pretty soon, though? At first, he was still breathing. Like I said, he took a couple, like. Where was he bleeding from? Right here on the. Right here. Like, no, right right like he wants to fall down. Is he breathing out of his ears or his mouth? Um. Uh, and if you don't remember. I don't, it, he didn't have his mouth open. Okay. I know he had his eyes kind of like. You know how you kind of like sleep with your eyes open, yeah, like right. a tiny bit? Right. That's how he had his eyes. Okay. Um, so he was like responding, but I guess couldn't talk. Sure. Um, but he was breathing heavy. I don't know how many, I couldn't tell you how many breathing fast he was. But when I got, when I was with him, he was breathing still. And I was doing my CPR that I learned mm -hmm. how to do and try to bring him back. And I, I just, I couldn't. Mm -hmm. So after, so I did it for like five minutes, and I knew after five minutes there was no getting them back. So what did you do then? Um, I drove home. You picked him up, put him in the van. Yes. Okay. I just, well, I, he thought I just threw. I right. Just, I can't do that to my kids. Sure. I don't want to just throw them in there. Right. Right. Well, the I've never seen a dead body before or know how it looks. Mm -hmm. It was nothing. So I just kind of like, like a baby, pick him up, his head and his legs, and sit him in the, the like the, oh, have you been in the van yet? Mm-hmm. I mean, I've seen okay. it. Okay. Well, it has seat. the back seat. Right. And you got that empty spot yes. right here and mm -hmm. then the two front seats. Well, I had laid him nicely, softly. I didn't just... Right. Throw them in there because sure. that, that's just disrespectful. Right. And that's my blood child. Right. Um, he told also he told me not to tell you guys this, but James's real dad's name is Lewis Edward Hutchison. Mm hmm And I can give you his date of birth. You can even call him. Okay. Uh, I don't well I don't have a phone number for him, but you can talk to his ex wife. Uh, I used to date Lewis Edward Hutchison. That is to James's biological father, as he told sure. me not to tell me all that. I don't know why, but that's what he told me to tell him. But I was going to tell you guys anyway, because you guys have the right to know he has a dad with the same exact last name mm -hmm. as you just heard me say, Louis Edward Hutchison, the same spelling, mm -hmm. L-E-W-I-S, mm -hmm. not the U in it. Um, his date of birth is um, James. My son James. Oh yeah. Uh, you want to write his name down? His dad's biological dad's name. You're talking about James. My son, son James. James. His biological bio father's name is Lewis. L E W I S. Edward Hutchinson. Same as James's. And his birthday is 10 12 And the reason why I had left his dad is because he threatened to kill me in my sleep. Hmm. Okay. And I didn't, I couldn't just stick right. around to find out if that's right. really what he was going to do because he kept saying it over, I'm going to kill you in your sleep, right. I'm going to kill you in your sleep. So I just, how long ago did you leave little James's dad? Two months ago, I would say. Okay. How long have you and James been together? This is James. Almost a year. So we've been on together almost a year. So therefore, if we, I can't remember, figure out how the, it's been a, we would, me and James's real father, we've been together off and on for several years. Like sure. we were in school. Mm -hmm. Right. And I've known him all my life. Right. Well, he came down with this rare to um, seizures, just 
came out of nowhere. Well, he kept having seizures like if uh, the kids were yelling too loud or something like that. He kept having seizures just randomly. Mm -hmm. Well, I told him he needed to go to an emergency room to get checked out because you don't just have seizures here and there, here and there for no reason. Right. So he went to his job and checked out and he said it was due to stress and a whole bunch of other stuff. That he was he was known for seizures and he was taking medication. Sure. Well, there's for a while he wanted to refuse to take his medication. And I told him, well, that's why you have the medication so you don't keep having the seizures. I said, don't you want your son to know who his dad is? Right. And he was like, yeah, so I got him finally to start taking his meds back. And um, so therefore, his ex-wife's name is Priscilla Hamilton. She goes by still. She lives at 1229 Woodside Boulevard. And this is where we all used to stay at. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where James's biological father lives. Only thing I know is Tikwa. I don't know his address, phone number, nothing. The last phone number I had, he came. Why didn't he want us to know about James's real dad? I tell you. He told me to tell you that. I'm still confused. Yeah, I am too a little bit. Okay, so let me back up a little bit. So you put your son back in the van. You drove where? Um, back home. Back home. What did the other two children, what were they saying or thinking? Did they they were just kind of like shook up. They didn't. Okay. Where were they at whenever James, little James, fell? Um, one was coming out the bathroom and one was just standing there. My daughter was the one just standing there, and she said, Mommy, you didn't run him over because I was scared. Like, please don't tell me I ran him over because I would have really, 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 really felt bad. But at that point, whenever you got standing out there, just coming out of the bathroom. room. No, was standing out there. Was coming out the bathroom. Was coming out the bathroom, yeah. and then you've got little James over. Yeah, there. and the door was open. But you drove away. No, we. Were, I was uh, sitting at the porty potter. Mm -hmm. Well, I went to go drive off. So you but started. But he told me to make them seem like you're leaving them. Mm -hmm. Right. So me your vehicle and, um, was in motion. Well, it was in park, and then I put. I noticed his hand wasn't on the handle because I looked out the mirror. Mm -hmm. His hand wasn't on the mirror, on the okay. on the handle, and so then I went to kind of like just pull off a little bit, just to scare him. Yeah. So, but that so you're saying that you were there basically to leave him. Yeah, because he told me to leave him. And, and, and that's fine. I get that you're trying to keep Big James happy. By getting rid of your kids. Well, I was trying to tell him he needed to leave, but right, no, no, no. I stay, stay, look, here look, 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 stay right here. Just what we're talking about is you're you go there to drop the kids off, mm -hmm. and you're going to leave and leave them there. No, I don't leave. Leave like I don't leave the 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 park. The park. Uh -huh. um, but that. But I got to the end of the the entrance. Okay. And then turned back around and went back in there and got him. Okay, but little James was on the ground when you yes. got back. Yes. But whenever you left, he your had, initial I didn't intentions were to leave them. That is why you went there to begin with. Them. And you were going to leave them and come back to Middletown. Is that what... No, I was going to leave them and act like I was going to leave them, but I was going to tell him that I left them. And in reality, I did. Uh huh. What were you going to do with them? I wasn't going to do anything with them, to be honest. Well, if you took I them took them to there because he told me to take them somewhere and drop them off. To get rid of them? Yes. Correct. So I talked. I, I couldn't get rid of my kids. And, and I don't doubt that a bit. I don't doubt that a bit. But that's where, you know, and, and honey, you're, you've been through a lot. And well, I was raised when I was a kid and all this stuff. Right. Well, we're just just focus on whatever we're really discussing now. Okay, you're kind of getting off all over the place here. We're just trying to figure out. Just hold on. 
exactly what you were thinking. Why? Because from what you've said, and please correct me if I'm wrong, okay. James told you, I want the kids gone, I don't want to see them no more. Yes. So that, so. He even told me, because I want, I told him to just go upstairs. Okay. Here, but really okay, but listen, so, but when he, when you loaded up in the car with the kids, Mm -hmm. You left Crawford Street with all three kids. Yes. James was in that house. Yes. He wanted you to take them somewhere and never bring them back. Yes. Okay. So you're confused. You you care about James. And I also just, just you care about James, right? Yes. So you take off driving. Mm -hmm. Did you go kind of straight to Rush Run? Well, he told me where to go to. Okay, so he told you to take them yeah, to Rush Run. I didn't know what the name of the Sure, place sure, but, was. but you knew what he was talking yeah. about. So you get to Rush Run, mm -hmm. and did you tell them, hey, I hop out and pee or the day? Well, they or said, at first they said, I have to pee. I said, okay. okay, well, go ahead and go to the bathroom. And I figured that was did the best time. Did you get out of the car, or did you stay in the car? I got out. Well, no, I was in the car, and I didn't get out until I went back okay. to get Okay, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. So you're in the car. Yes. Wait, and did out. you ever your seatbelt on? Yes. Did you ever take it off uh, at that point? No, I don't believe so. Okay, so all the kids get out of the van. Yes. Are both doors open? Just the driver back door. The driver's side sliding door yes. is open. So that one opens up. The two got... The two kids got out. The the ones out here. Uh -huh. They got out. Yes, James was in the back seat. And he didn't want to get out. He acted like he was asleep. Uh -huh. So I just nicely picked him up, set him outside on the ground. So you did get out of your van, or did you stay in the van? Well, at first I stayed in the van. Okay. And then I noticed James didn't want to get, didn't out. Want to get out. So I picked him, got out the van, unbuckled. Mm -hmm. Well, I unbuckled and then got out of the van. Sure. Then got back there and grabbed James. Did you go in through the door? Yeah, you got out and you went in through the side door. The side back door, yes. Right. And you lifted him out. Yes. Set him on the ground. Yes. I didn't throw him or anything. What, okay, I sure, out. sure. Nobody's saying you did. So once he's on the ground, what happens then? Um, I went to go pull off. So did he? He had already used the bathroom, came back out. So... He, you put him on the ground, you get back in the car, mm -hmm. and then he walks around the front of your car or the back of your car? My car was like this, and the bathroom's literally right here. Sure, okay. So he just, like, walks to the door. So you pull in, and your face is in the woods. No, it's the water. Okay. So, so the woods is here, the water's here. All right. And then there's so the road to out that way. This is... All right, I just had it. Where the hell is it at? Here we go. It's called Russian Run Lake, I think. Yep. Yeah, you know, they're all the time. So right, right here. Here's the water. Here's the road that you came in on. Okay. Okay. Where did you say the water was again? Right here. That's water. Okay. So there's usually the porta potties right there. Does that look familiar? Uh, this is yeah, it kind of does. And is there like a driveway going this yes, way? Yes, yes. It actually goes yes. this way. So I was parked at the parking spot. They, they were there. So did you pull into a spot? It was like down this way. Like those lines were kind of faded. Yeah, so you parked kind of down this way. It was close to the bathroom, but not close enough. So you were so you were actually nosed in. You were pointing towards yes. the water. So... You got two kids over here, and then you've got James milling about. Let's say that's you right there. Okay. And you got James milling about over here, right? Uh -huh. Is that right? Yes. So, where was James whenever you backed up and pulled out? Little James. Well, I wasn't all the way into the parking spot. Uh -huh. I was just like halfway there, and not sure. all the way there. Um, I went to just, well, I didn't even have to back up. I just went to go this way. So you just went to loop around? Yes. And pull, okay. And he was, he didn't have a handle when I looked out my mirror. Uh -huh. 
when I went to go pull away, I'm guessing he had the handle. Right. And um, and then I went to go drive off, and he, of course, sure. had a handle. Sure. When I looked, he didn't have it. And uh, and then he was. So real quick. So here's the poor potty, there's the water, here's the road coming in. Uh -huh. Let's say, so your part kind of like that. Okay? Yeah, with my headlights this way. Yeah, the towards water. the water. So you and got... Two, all the way in the parking lot. Sure, lot. so you got a little bit of room there. Yes. So show me where James was whenever you put it um, in the drive. He was like right off the here, like he's and tall enough he can reach over and grab a handle. But he wasn't touching that handle. No. So then, which way did you pull out? Did you I go? I just went like this. Okay. Because there was plenty enough room to do Sure. Up. So you pulled forward, looped around to the left. The other kids are where? By the stall. They're over by the big board box. Yes. And then, at what point? Did you see James on the ground? I want to say when I went to, I heard kids screaming. I don't remember. I thought it was for sure Rachel, but mm -hmm. they both could have been screaming. I don't know. Why were they screaming? Because you were leaving them? Yes. Okay. Because they knew I wasn't never just going. Sure. So, um, they were standing by the bathroom stall or whatever it is. And James was kind of standing close to them, but not that close. Mm -hmm. And as I showed you on the paper, I just went around him and didn't realize he had the handle. Did and you see him grabbing a handle? No. Okay, you're just. But when I kind of like, he, I'm assuming he grabbed the handle because I kind of pulled him a little bit, not much, and he got up and it fell back down. I guess I kind of probably. Made him hurt his knee on the ground or something, mm -hmm. and he lost his balance. And um, he tried to catch his balance. He didn't get to, right. and he fell and busted his head on the ground. And you drove back to the. I didn't drive back to the house. I went back to get him. How far away did you get? Um, just around the road a little bit. So keeps moving on me. There we go. So here's the road. This is the main entrance. Let me go back to set on. That's the main entrance and that's parked a lot. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's the main entrance. Well, I, when I, you come out the driveway, I remember um, turning this way. You turned left. Yeah. And then I only went, there's like this little cut off kind of like pull off to the side of the road. Mm -hmm. Well, I went there and just turned back around and I went okay. back. Okay. Did you sit there at the pull off at any length of time? No, I just. Okay. So, so when you come like, back, he's on the ground. Yes. I okay. was like, you know what? I'm not leaving my kids. He can just get me and leave, whatever. Right. What day did this happen? Friday. What time? Uh, I want to say 2, 3 o'clock. In the in afternoon? The morning. Or was it? In the morning. At night? In the morning. Like, in dark? Well, it was dark outside, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But so it was... Two to three a.m. a.m. in the morning. So yeah. was it Thursday night into Friday morning, three a.m. or was it Friday night into Saturday morning, three a.m. Friday night into Saturday a.m. Okay, so it was actually Saturday morning at three a.m. Yes. And it was dark. Yes. Okay. I couldn't see nothing. It was raining. And okay. How big was the blood spot? Um. I want to say about the half the size of my purse that it sits on the ground. So make a circle with your fingers and still like, like this. Show me up like this. Like that. A little bit smaller basketball. Um, I want to say about a basketball. About a basketball? 
It could be a little bit smaller. I didn't really. What would the blood look like? Was it thick and chunky? Or was it I didn't really, to be honest, I really didn't pay attention to the blood. I was more worried about trying to get some back. Sure. So when you got back home with James, you're back, you with come back kids. with the kids. Uh, how do you bring James? Do you just carry James into the house, or does James go out and get him? Uh, I carried him in. Okay. Um, Where the clothes at that you were wearing when you carried him in? Sitting on top of laundry basket. Are they dirty? Yeah. They got blood on them? Mm -hmm. What were you wearing? Um, gray Air Postal sweatpants mm -hmm. and a pink shirt. It was like a good color pink, maybe a little bit of white. It was just a t shirt, and then I had my pink and whatever. It's a coat. A jacket? Yeah. Were you wearing no shoes? So yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, I got like four or five pairs of shoes. Right, I got you. So you come, you carry the boy back inside. Mm -hmm. you, have you already contacted James and told him what happened? Okay, by text or by by call? It was a text. You you sent him a text? Yes, and then he called me, told me to bring him back because he couldn't get James to listen, and. James had bruises on him from him hitting him. He's never hit me. Right. Ever. But, okay. Where were the bruises at? Um, face, I want to say all over. Put right the mm -hmm. From James hitting him? Hitting your son? Okay. Does Trying to punish him, basically. Did he hit the other feet. two children? Sometimes. Looks like she's got remnants of a black eye. No, he's never hit her in the eye, but... Did you ever hit her in the face or nose? Um, he... Actually, yes, because he kind of, like, punches them. Like, they lie. He kind of either punches them or smacks them in the eye. When was the time he punched her? Because uh, that looks like she's got a black eye. I'm going to say, like, a couple days ago. Okay. What did she do to get in trouble for that? Why? Okay. I kept trying to tell him why, and I said, that's their, their kids, that's what they do. Right, sure, sure. You'll eventually catch them in the truth later right. on down the line. Okay. So, you bring the kid back, you carry the kid in, and then what happens? Where do you put the kid? Where do you put James? I just lay him on the lip, and the, the, when you walk in the door, that room right there, on the floor. The, the front, when you walk in the front the room? room? Yes, the front room. So the living room? Where the, the couch, couch is, yes. You lay I laid him on the floor. Okay. The bare floor. Mm -hmm. And he took him upstairs. James took him upstairs. And put him in the bedroom. What time was it? I want to say like a couple minutes once I got back and carried him in. He took him upstairs and put him in the bedroom. Like in a closet where? It was on the floor. There's a window here and a window here. He put it right there on the floor. Okay, so as I go up the steps, there's two bedrooms. The straight. Keep going straight. The straight bedroom. Okay. And he says, well, we're at on the floor. We're at in there. Right there on that. The, not this front window, but the side window. Okay. Okay. We're going to give you a few minute break and then we'll be right back. Do you need anything? Do you need another break? Do you need anything? I wish I had my anxiety meds. What, what are, are these called? Hydroxyphene. So it's taken three times a day. Alright. There it is. Alright, cool. Knock on the door if you need something. Alright.
Okay, this is part two of Brittany's interrogation. If you will notice, this is March 1st. The next morning at 7.47 a.m. If you look, she's rubbing her eyes and she's sleepy. And another thing you'll notice here is she is wearing gel fatigues. So when she walked out of the room after the part one interrogation, of course, they had enough to arrest her. Okay, this is going into the second day of her interrogation so just wanted to let you know that also another little quick thing I want to let you know in part one I did delete a good amount from this interrogation or from that interrogation for the simple fact that there's a lot of it to where she was just sitting there in the room by herself either sleeping or you know you've seen a lot of it anyway so I just cut all that out because there was no sense in just sitting there looking at her okay let's get right into part two day two Brittany Gosney's interrogations an hour before I was supposed to an hour and a half before I was supposed to get up but I tossed and turned all night and I wasn't thinking about anything I think I was thinking about I have to get back to work you know so I, I tossed and turned all night anyway he'll be here in a few minutes He's here, but he's over at his across the hall. He'll be right Do you back. know when the, the lady comes in for the medicine thing? Cause they yeah, so when you get back, they'll be there. Okay. Yeah, she's in and out there all day. Good morning. Here I got something to drink. My name's Scott, and I'll be giving you a polygraph. Let me first say I'm sorry for your loss. You know, what a tragedy. I'm sorry we've gone through this, and uh, I just can't imagine. I got three kids of my own, and I don't know what you're going through, and hopefully we can figure that out together because. <clears throat> Obviously, this isn't like you. You got three kids, so something went wrong. Something happened, and my job is to get another statement from you, giving you a polygraph, and uh, hopefully you pass that polygraph. If you work with me as a team, you will, and we can say this is what happened. There's no more need for speculation, because that's what people do in situations like this: is they speculate that maybe there's something more to this. But by working together, you and I will be able to show that no, there's nothing more to this. This is really what happened. Okay? Does that sound like a good plan? You going to work with me? All right, awesome. Like I said, I am so sorry for your loss. That's just a terrible thing. <clears throat> what we're going to do today is have... Consent form to take a polygraph. So I got to fill out. Then I'm going to ask you some medical questions to make sure you're medically fit to take a polygraph. And uh, I'm sure you are. This is just like do you have seizures and stuff like that. Uh, and then we are going to make a detailed statement about what exactly happened. And uh, after we get your detailed statement, uh, I'm going to give you a polygraph on that statement. And the questions are going to be something like, did you purposely leave out any information on your statement? And if you'll say no, you'll pass the polygraph, and then we'll be done. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. Is that a good plan? Right. Okay. What's your name? Brittany. How do you spell that? B R I T T A M I. And your last name? Your last name G O S N E Y. And okay, it is. 
first of the month, all right, time flies, isn't it? So basically, this will help me in the long run too. Well, it'll 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 help say this is the truth because you've changed the story a few times because we went from uh, he's just missing to yes because that's what the right. other person told me to tell right so finally we'll be able to say this is the truth you know she's being honest she's an honest person we can trust her uh, so it'll, it'll help that it, it'll help get the truth out okay all right okay it says, I, Brittany Gosney, uh, voluntarily, without threats, duress, coercion, force, promise of immunity, agree and request to take a pre... I'm sorry, I've got the wrong form. That's for if you want to be a police officer. You don't want to be a police officer, do you? Voluntarily, without threats, terms, coercion, force, promise of immunity, or reward, agree to take a polygraph examination for the mutual benefit of myself and/or officers or agents of the Middletown Police Department. I fully realize that I'm not required to take this examination. That you have the right to remain silent. That anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. That you have the right to consult with a lawyer before and during any questioning, and have a lawyer present with you while you're being questioned. That if you cannot afford a lawyer, one will be appointed to you free before any questioning and that you may stop talking to me or any other police officer any time during questioning. Do you understand all of your rights as I read them to you? Mm-hmm. Knowing these rights, do you wish to talk to me without having a lawyer present? Yeah. It says, I do hereby authorize the examiner to de- disclose both orally and in writing the examination results and opinions to the investigating officers, prosecutors, and or agency requesting for investigation. In addition, I also represent that not only am I in good mental and physical condition, but that I know of no mental or physical ailment that might be impaired by this examination. If you do not understand this form completely, do not sign it, but have the examiner explain it to you thoroughly or seek other competent advice. So basically what you said, no medical issues? Yeah, I'm just trying to ask you some medical questions. Uh, basically, I want to know what kind of medication you are on because that can affect the examination results. Uh, I want to make sure that you don't have seizures and uh, just medical questions that would that would explain some of the results. Because what I'm looking at in a polygraph examination is your blood pressure, heart rate, sweat gland activity. There's certain medications that will affect. Well. They didn't ask me, but I have a, a rare heart disease. Mm-hmm. My heart attempts to beat fast. Yeah. Okay. So that's a good thing to know, is that uh, stuff like that. And it'll just help me when I'm looking at the charts when we're done. Say, well, you know, Brittany, she, she has a rare heart disease that causes her heart to beat fast. So that would explain why her heart's beating fast throughout the entire test. So that's good to know. G-O-S-N-Y. And what's your address? 507 Crossroads Street. How old are you? 29. And your birthday? 2592. 
And education, how far did you go in school? To 11th. 11th grade, why didn't you graduate? Because I wanted to repeat everything I had already done. Well, why is that? I don't really know. I just, I did all my work in 11th grade and then they told me I needed to redo it all back over and I was like, why should I have to do that? So they wanted you to redo the 11th grade? And you just gave up after that? Are you working on your GED or anything? No. Mm -hmm. Do you read and write okay? Do you, um, do you have a disability there? Yes. Mm -hmm. What's your disability? Um, I've had a learning disability since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Some words I can't understand. Mm -hmm. If I say any words you don't understand, just just make sure you say Scott. My name's Scott. Say uh, Scott. I don't understand that, and I'll explain it to you. Okay. Because okay. it's really important. Yeah, there's there's like a lot of questions I don't understand. I try to ask to figure out mm -hmm. what you're trying to ask me. Right. Yeah. Don't be afraid ever while we're working together because we got to be a team. Don't be afraid ever to stop me and uh, ask me to clarify something, okay? Okay. All right. Now, you seem to be able to, I'm com com communicating with you very well today. So you seem like you're pretty smart, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I used to do cashier when I was a li for a living. Mm hmm. So. How'd you like that? It was fun. Mm -hmm. okay. Are you working anywhere now? No. But you were a cashier. How long ago did you work? Um, since 2018. 2018? Where'd you work? Um, I worked at Kroger's. Kroger's. One of my and children and, works at Kroger's. Um, Family Dollar. Kroger's and Family Dollar. How long did you work at uh, Kroger's? Uh, Well, I started working at Kroger's in 2016, so I worked there for three years. All right, so you know, so you did pretty well there. Why did you leave? Um, the kept cutting hours. Hmm. How about the Family Dollar? How long did you work there? Um, I want to say three, four months. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you like that? The, the manager was sexual, talking to me, sexual, following me, showing up at my house. Oh, seriously? Yes. And you just left then? Yes. Oh. They didn't want to do nothing about it, so I just mm. quit. Are you married? No. Okay. How many children you got? You got three? I have four originally. Well, tell me about that. Um, I was raped when I was a kid, mm -hmm. and I got pregnant. And I found my rights to the state. So you gave up one child then? Uh, well, I was, they told me I would be my best instrument since I was so young. How old were you? Uh, 12. Oh my gosh. You've had a, kind of a tragic life. Okay, so you had a child when you were 12, and then you uh, had three children. What are your children's names? You had three other children. My other three kids? Mm -hmm. Um, and James. And James. And is James the oldest? No, he's the baby. Oh, he's the baby. Okay, and then who's the oldest? How old is she? Uh, very be 10, so she's 9. 9? Mm-hmm. And then is? 7. And then James was 6, right? Yes. Okay. And then the child that you gave up. You, you I didn't give her up till she was um, a year and a half. So. Oh, so what was her name? Because you named her and everything. Yes. Her I name. Named How's it now? Do you know? Twelve. Twelve. Okay. Do you ever have contact with? Her? I sure had to. Mm-hmm. But like they upload pictures on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And how did, how did you get? What was that process? Um, well, when I was in a, um, well, I was I was in a group home. Then I went to like individual foster homes. Mm -hmm. Well, I was working, coming home, taking care of the baby, and going to school all at the same time. Right. And um, 
they just told me that I'm too young to even understand how to even take care of a child. Right. So I'm a, still a child myself, so how am I supposed to take care of a, another child? And they seen that I was trying my best. Right. But they just broke it down to me and explained, like, you're not going to be able to do this. Mm -hmm. And so then I signed her over for an open adoption. Mm -hmm. So that way I would be able to see her still, right. get pictures, and I've still got nothing. When's the last time you talked to her? Since I didn't wrote. Oh, seriously? Mm -hmm. Oh, that was difficult. Uh, have you ever had a polygraph operation before? No, I've never been in trouble ever. Polygraph examination. Uh, yeah, that's what the detective said. Detective Hoover said you've never been in trouble before. This is baffling how something like this happens, and, and that's what we're going to try to figure out together: is how something like this happened. Um, how? Um, who brought you up? Who raised you? My mom. Your mom? Was your dad in the picture? Do you want me to give you a clean up? Thank you. My mom was the one that raised me. Mm -hmm. What's her name? Betty. Cosme? Yes. My dad was there. Well, they were married. And then I don't know how they got the divorce or whatever, but they got a divorce. Mm -hmm. But they were still married when they had us, me and my two sisters. You got two sisters? Yes. Yeah. What are their names? Lisa and Heather. Where are you in the birth order? Uh, like. Uh, like you, middle child, yeah. oldest, middle, middle. middle. Okay. And they could even say I would never hurt my kids. Something went wrong, and that's what we're going to figure out, right? Um, so your middle child, your mother raised you. Who do you think had the biggest influence in your life as far as teaching you the difference between right and wrong? Well, my mom had me with my stepdad, mm -hmm. and I don't know what happened, but I got put in the state. Well, I was with my stepmom. My real mom and my dad, my stepdad, and then she gave me up and signed me over to my dad and my stepmom. Okay. What's your dad's name? Charles Godney. Okay. How old were you in that? Um, I don't I was little. I didn't know. Okay. Um... But yeah, she, he, she, he, my stepmom and my real dad had let me get raped. Like they were paying this guy mm -hmm. to rape. Well, basically they were allowing it. He was paying them money and all to rape me. Did your dad go to prison for that, I hope? My dad's paralyzed. Mm -hmm. He had a real bad stroke, so. My dad wasn't really there all the time, so it was mostly my stepmom. What's her name? Margaret. Margaret. Did Margaret go to prison? She, no, didn't do nothing. How about the guy that raped you? Did he, he go to prison? Yes. At least he went to prison, huh? Is he still locked up? What's his no, name? No, he just, uh, George, mm -hmm. they call him Pete. You said he was just released? Um, I don't know when it was released, but I know he's not in jail anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you have any grandparents that were influenced in your life? Um, like my my mom's uh, mom, mm -hmm. um, my grandma. Was she ever there for you? We went and visited her. Mm -hmm. So after you were raped at uh, your dad's house, what happened then? Did you go back to your mom? No, they made the guy that raped me take me out of the state with the little girl because I had the little girl already. Right. 
and they took me to Georgetown. To, I don't know where it was, but somewhere in Georgetown. Mm-hmm. And somehow another two fun kids got called involved, something like that. So they came looking for me because they went to the house, asked where I was at. Who's they? My stepmom and my um, real dad, but my real dad wasn't there. So, right. and he told him he didn't really know what was even going on mm-hmm. because he was always gone. Right. But um, they went to Georgetown and picked me up. Mm-hmm. I got a phone call. They told me to run. Where am I running to? I know nothing around here. Where am I going to? Right. And I was like, it's better for me to just stay here, deal with whatever. And then I got took in, and then I went to a group home first. Mm-hmm. And then I, um, after that, I went to individual um, houses. And you know, people that had foster homes? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Where, when you were in 11th grade and you dropped out, were you in a foster home at that time? No. Well, yeah, home? actually, because I was in middle of school then. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And now you live on Crawford Street. Is mm-hmm. that your home? Or is that somebody else's home? That's mine. That's in my name. What's in your name? Are you buying? Are you renting? I'm renting. You're you're renting? Okay. So, uh, your your boyfriend, Mm -hmm. his name is, what's his name? James. James moved in with you. Well, we both was living in a moose house. Uh Because we both had nowhere to go. Right. So we went and stayed at hotels because he couldn't see me on the street with the children. Right. So um, him and his wife had a big whatever. Mm-hmm. They basically separated, but they're still married. They're still married. Okay. Um, but they separated, and they've been separated from us a year now. Um, they. His wife was accusing me and him of doing stuff that we wasn't doing. Mm -hmm. So, and then um, we started basically forming feelings for each other. And that's where it started off at. Well, he had took me to the hospital because of my anxiety that I had. Mm -hmm. I had a real bad panic attack. And I couldn't sleep. I couldn't go back to sleep. I couldn't do nothing. Right. And my heart rate was just off the charts Mm -hmm. and I had no choice but to go to the emergency room and he had went with me instead of my brief my actual boyfriend at that time going with me okay so he kind of stepped in and helped you out through this difficult time yes right okay your physical condition right now would you say you're in poor fair or good physical condition like uh, your health your overall health Good. I mean, I'm all the shots. Right. I'm just not took my medicine today and tired. We'll, we'll talk about medicine here at the very end. Have you had any injuries or surgeries in the last six months? No. Okay. Are you in any pain or discomfort right now? Mm. Okay. Are you pregnant? I don't know. You don't know? Are you late? How late? A month. A month late? How did you get that checked? I told them, so I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Do they check you here? Uh, you don't know. Well, I mean, you can let them know if you're having any issues. Okay. Have you had a meal in the last 24 hours? Um, Have you had anything to eat? You yeah. probably had something to eat this morning. Yeah. Well, I didn't eat this morning. I went back to sleep. I was so tired. Mm-hmm. How did you sleep last night? Poor, fair, or good? Poor, poor. How many hours of sleep did you get? I don't even know. 
I don't even know how long. I don't even know when I got put in there, so. Yeah. <laughs> Did you sleep some? Yes. Okay. You seem, you're, like I said, you're not falling asleep on me, so you seem like you're a little rested. Have you been a patient in a mental hospital? No. no. Are you seeing a psychiatrist or psychologist? What's that? A therapist. No. Oh, very good. See, that's exactly what you're supposed to do, is if you don't understand anything, ask me. Okay. <clears throat> do you have a heart condition? Yes. And do you take any medication for that? No. Okay. Besides your heart beating fast, is there any other issue? I have asthma, that's about it. Okay, so you have asthma. Do you have an inhaler? Yes. Uh, do you have high or low blood pressure? No. Do you have seizures? No. Back problems? What is it? Back problems, problems with your back? No. Okay. Hearing problems? Sometimes I can't hear or hear anything. But tell me about that. Well, a lot of times anymore I have to ask somebody, like, they're sitting like right next to me, I'm like, what did you say? Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've never had my hearing tested, okay. checked out, nothing. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I'm going death some. Okay. Do you think you're zoning out or there's an actual hearing problem? You don't know. I don't. Okay. Yeah. You're not 100% sure of what I'm asking you. Just ask me to repeat. I'm okay. never going to get upset about that. Okay. I don't. I, I, my mother-in-law lives with me. She's 93. Oh, my gosh, I have to repeat questions of her all the time. So I'm used to dealing with people that can't hear very well. Okay. Are you a smoker? Yes. Have you had any alcohol in the last 24 hours? Don't do alcohol. Okay, now we're going to talk about medications. What kind of medication have you taken in the last 24 hours? Either illegal or legal? Um, the only thing I've taken was my legal drug that's prescribed to me, which is the droxazine for well, anxiety, mm -hmm. um, sertraline for allergies. What ha what's that called again? Sertraline. Sertraline? Mm -hmm. Um, sorry, I'm trying to remember my meds because uh -huh. it's hard to remember. I take a lot of meds. Um, I take stomach pills. I don't know the name of them. Mm -hmm. uh, I take single air for breathing while I'm sleeping. Mm -hmm. And another um, anxiety nighttime med. So two different anxiety pills? Yes. Okay. So one I take three times a day, so it'll drop to me. That's three times a day. When's the last time you took that? Um, yesterday morning. So it's been more than 24 hours probably, depending on the time. It was around 8. Around 8 o'clock. So. Yeah, it's 8.16 now. So have you taken any pills in the last 24 hours? Okay. No, they didn't give me nothing yet. All right. You are fit to take a polygraph. All right. Now let's talk about what happened. And uh, we're, we need to start from the very beginning of this. So, why don't you tell me what happened? I don't want to put any words in your mouth. I want you to just tell a story to me. And then I'll have some questions about that story. Okay. It was, it was Friday going to Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. Me and the boyfriend was having an argument. Mm -hmm. Well, the kids were... And the boyfriend's name is? James. Do mm -hmm. you want to put his last name because they're both? Yeah, better James. Hamilton. Hamilton, okay. We were having an argument. Um... He was complaining that I constantly don't discipline my children mm -hmm. because I'd rather not. Right. I'd rather just make them stand in a corner for a few mm -hmm. than put my hands on my children. Right. Um, and he told me I needed to get rid of them. Okay. And he's been telling me this for, since we moved in there. Mm -hmm. So we moved in there in February. He's been telling me a whole month. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, he told me he was ment- he wasn't mentally stabilized to be taking dealing with children, and I didn't know what he meant. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, he had told me to get rid of him. Mm-hmm. So I basically did what he asked. I took him to what was it? I told Rush Run. Rush Run, yeah. Rush Run Lake. Mm-hmm. Well, he told me Rush Run, so mm-hmm. that's what I typed in my GPS. Mm-hmm. Well, then I had called him and said I'm lost. Mm-hmm. What am I supposed to do? I'm fixing to come back home. Right. Um. Well, he said, just come back home twice to me. Mm-hmm. Well, I said, you're insisting on me getting rid of them. So that's what I'm going to do for you. Right. Because he said, if he, I didn't do it, he was going to do it. Right. Why I was asleep. Okay. So um, I took him to Rush Run Lake. Mm-hmm. The two older kids had gotten out, which is right. James was still in the back seat, mm-hmm. acting like he was asleep, and he wasn't. Right. I took him out, set him on the ground. He stood up, mm-hmm. and he kept trying to get back in the van because the door slide, and we just pulled the door handle uh-huh. to get in. Um, he kept trying to get back in the van. The doors automatically lock. Mm-hmm. Um, so I didn't see. I know he had the handle right. trying to get back in because mm-hmm. he kept saying, "Mommy, you don't want to be here." Right. Basically, he was a baby. He's he's scared. Right. Um, no, I did not want to take him nowhere. Mm-hmm. But he was insisting nonstop. When you say he was insisting nonstop, we're talking about James Hamilton. Yes. Okay. Um, I mean, he has a kid of his own, so I don't understand how he's not mentally stabilized for a kid. Okay. Yeah. But anyways, <clears throat> I told them to go towards the bathroom so I didn't run over none of that. Right. So I knew where they were at mm-hmm. and I knew they were safe. Well, James, well, the elder two went towards the bathroom like I asked, the older two. Mm-hmm. James refused to because he wanted back in the van because he was scared mm-hmm. and he didn't want to be there. Right. He had a door handle and I took off, mm-hmm. not realizing that he had the handle. Right. And I didn't take off four. I showed him on this on the map. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't get to all the way out to the main road. Mm-hmm. Um, but I had dragged him. I heard a little noise. I didn't hear a thump or anything like I ran him over. Did you feel a bump? No. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but. What I'm thinking is I dragged him and then eventually I didn't run him over because I didn't hear a thump or like the van lifted up on one side because I ran over animals that's already dead in the road so I know what it feels like. So I didn't feel like I didn't see that, feel that when I was driving or anything. So eventually he had to let off, let go of the handle Mm -hmm. and my daughter said that. I didn't run him over because I asked her, did y'all see me run him over? She said, I seen what she was doing, Mom, you didn't run him over. Right. And he had that door handle. We not realizing it. I accidentally drove him. And he, she said, I only drove him for, well, she thought it was only a few minutes because she doesn't know. Right. She said, I drove him for a few minutes mm-hmm. and he let go like he couldn't. Basically, I held on. Right. Probably because I was trying to hurry up and get out of there because that's what he told me to do. Right. Because I don't know nothing about driving. He's more experienced than I am. I'm basically a new driver and just started driving recently. How recently? 
uh, well, I don't know, I have my ID, so my driver, actual driver's license. I went to take the driver's test mm -hmm. and then uh, passed my driver's test and got my license. So you do have your license? Yes. Okay. And you were able to pass the test? How many times did you take the test? Um, I just took it one time that day. So you passed it the first time? The well, written, they, the written they, test? they made me the driving part. Mm -hmm. so they the made me. Part? Um, I passed the written part, I believe. Okay. Um, they made me try it twice. I got it wrong. Well, they did it three times. Mm -hmm. I got it wrong twice, and the last time I got it right because they said you only get three tries. And that's the driving part. Yes. Okay. And I got it right the third time. Good job. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But it's the first time ever I had my license. How long ago was that? Um, what was that, the end of last year? These, no, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, because we were in a um, hotel, it was in December. And you never had a driver's license before that? No, mm -hmm. never. So you've been driving for six months? Yeah. About? About six months, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we can check that for sure on that. Yeah, so, you don't mind. So you drove away, then what happened? Um, I went, I pulled out, went to the left. Mm -hmm. Went all the way to where there was two parts of went like this. Mm -hmm. You can either go this way or this way. There was an arrow, mm -hmm. a yellow and black arrow sign. I don't know, it was supposed to right there in front of me. Okay. I could see it with my headlights. Mm -hmm. I went there, I stopped there, I got that bar, turned back around and went back. Okay, no way. Um, I got almost to the where I had dropped them off at. Mm -hmm. And my two older kids were maybe a quarter mile from the the entrance of where I put them at. So they had walked about a quarter mile when you left? Yes. After you left. Okay. But when I had left, they were back by the right. bathroom. Right. Um, and I asked them where James was. Because mm -hmm. I didn't realize that I hurt him. Right. Or drove him. Mm -hmm. So I asked him, where's your brother at? I don't know. He's back there and laying down. I can't get him up. Mm -hmm. So I went back to see what happened. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, my daughter said he was breathing heavy. Because mm -hmm. uh, I asked her when she said she she couldn't get him up. After, I asked her if she, he was breathing. And she said, yeah, he was breathing kind of heavy. He took like two or three deep breaths. Yeah. And after that, she said yeah, she couldn't get him to wake up nothing. So therefore, it was dead when I, by the time I got to him. He was no longer breathing when you got there. Yeah. Okay. And what happened? Um, I, well, before I got to James, I made the other two get back in the van. Uh -huh. Then I went and got James mm -hmm. and put James, laying, I laid him in the floor of the van mm -hmm. in between the two front seats and the back seat. Mm -hmm. Took him home right. to 507 Crawford. Mm -hmm. Let the other, got the kids out, carried James into the house. Mm -hmm. James Hamilton already had the door wide open, mm -hmm. so I didn't have to pull out a key or anything to get in. So did you call him between I called the yeah, home? I called him. Okay. Well, I texted him. Texted him. And said, I got rid of him. Mm -hmm. And um, he called me because I said I might have accidentally hurt it, James, from, I, because, because I. This is before you went back to pick up the kids. Yes. You already texted him. And you said you might have accidentally hurt James. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he had called me. Mm -hmm. And he told me to go back and get them that he would do something with them when I got back, since I don't know how to do anything right. Okay. So you, you texted him and said, 
you got rid of him, you might have heard James, then he calls you and you talk to him. Yes. And during this conversation, he says what? He says, go back and get them. Mm -hmm. I will take care of them. I will get rid of them. I will even bring them back. And then what happened? Um, so that's when I went back. Yeah, when he said, I'll get rid of them. Three children. He's going to get rid of all three of them. Yes. Okay. Okay. And then what happened? So I went back. So that's when I turned around. Mm -hmm. Went back to get the children. Mm -hmm. The two was coming out. They were like a quarter mile away from the um, where I had left them. Mm -hmm. I went back and I seen. I asked the, the two kids where James was, and I went back. Well, I asked them if he was okay, breathing, and all that. So I went back and got James. He was laying on the ground. He was, um, it looked like he, he was bleeding right here, mm -hmm. but it was like drug blood stripping like this and like this. Right. And my daughter said he had hit the ground. Now, just a question, because this is 3 a.m. in the morning? Um, About? Yeah. Are there any lights there? Are there parking lot lights? Um, no, there are there's no lights. I remember seeing a shadow of an animal. Mm -hmm. Because I, I wondered how your daughter could see exactly what happened. My headlights. Because your headlights? Yes. And you think it illuminated enough where she could clearly see what was going on? Okay. All right. Okay, so... Well, I'm sure they said they were going to question to ask, talk to the kids, too, so... All right. So... You get back home, and uh, you had James laying on the floor. You carried James into the house. Where did you put him? I laid him, mm -hmm. the, the first room when we walk in the door, mm -hmm. I laid him on the floor. The two children wasn't crying or anything. They were more shook up than anything. Yeah. So they just went and grabbed their toys out the closet mm -hmm. and sat down. And was watching TV and playing with the toys. James Hamilton took James upstairs mm -hmm. to his bedroom, made him in front of the side window, mm -hmm. and then you go upstairs and a straight ahead mm -hmm. as soon as you go off the steps, mm -hmm. laid him by the side window. I told him we need to tell somebody, not just let them lay there. Mm -hmm. Because I've watched the Law and Order shows and all of that. Right. And I knew it wasn't right just to uh, leave them laying up there. Right. Well, he had took them up there. He said we had two to three days to get rid of the body. Because uh -huh. I, I knew nothing about dead people, bodies, none of that. Um, so he went upstairs. We had a heat rolling because we were cold. Right. Uh, and the children kept saying they were freezing. Mm -hmm. So we turned on the heat. He went up there and said he, well, this is what he told me. He went up there and blocked off the heat. Try to keep it cool in the room yeah. he was in. Mm -hmm. um, and then, what is today, Monday? Yes. Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, mm -hmm. well, Saturday night, well, we went to sleep mm -hmm. at 10-ish. Mm -hmm. Kids are already asleep at 9-ish. Mm -hmm. We went to sleep. He woke me up at 1, mm -hmm. told me we need to have this done by 2.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. Well, we'd be out of here by 2.30 in the morning. Yeah. Um, so we took and drove to any from to Indiana, Kentucky, White is it White River, Lake River, White You gotta tell me I can't put words in your mouth on that. So you can just describe if you don't know. Well it said Cincinnati Kentucky. You, you talk about where the detectives took yesterday. Yes. Okay, I know where that is then. It, it is uh, 
Yeah, 275 uh, from Indiana to Kentucky, white water area. That's right. Okay. I know it said white. I okay. couldn't remember if yeah. it was. But we took them there. Mm -hmm. We had to do it twice. Like, we went to do it the first time. Mm -hmm. There was, He said there was too much traffic. We were mm -hmm. running in trouble. Right. So he took that next exit, which is Pittsburgh, I think. Mm -hmm. We took that exit, got back on mm -hmm. the same highway, but going back down. We went to that next exit back down. Okay. Now, I know from talking to the detectives, I think you've skipped over something. And that is, you. he woke you up and said, so we have to have this done by 2.30. When he, he, he woke you up, what did you guys do? Um... I woke up and he told me to start getting dressed. Right. Because I was still trying to mm -hmm. wake up, function right. <clears throat> and he told me to start getting. Well, I went to sleep because I was so tired. I went to sleep with still uh, the sweatpants on that I told them I had on, mm -hmm. and the pink shirt. Mm -hmm. So I went to sleep <clears throat> with the same clothes on because right. I was so tired. I just wanted to go to bed. Mm -hmm. So he told me to get. Stock shoes and a thin jacket on or something because it was raining. Mm -hmm. um, so I did that. He went back upstairs and got. He went upstairs and got James. He carried James downstairs. He went up there and got him carried it down. Okay. I opened mm -hmm. the. We both went out the door at the same time, but I had opened the door first. Mm -hmm. So he told me to open the door. And we both went out at the same time. We need to go to. Um, when you go on our walkway, the front, mm -hmm. the sidewalk right there, <clears throat> stand there and look around, see if I see any headlights or anybody okay. out. And kind of glance around next door to see if there's any lights on or anything like that. Right. And he told me to just uh, wave when it was okay. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did and uh, opened the passenger side back door. Okay. Uh, so that's what I did. He laid James in there, <coughs> and he said he already has a string, well, the rope, not string, okay. the rope and the center box. Well, it was a brick. Well, it was like a big block like this. It didn't have holes in it. He made holes in it. Okay. If it makes any sense. So it's like a paver? Is it square? Yeah. They had to put holes in it? Yes. And yeah. it, um, it was something like a center block. Mm -hmm. But he had to make his own holes. Okay. And he had got that. He said he had got that from a neighbor's house over a fence. From over a fence. So is it, is it, is it a tall? It was like this long. How thick was it? And it was like this. Okay. And he had laid. We had stopped the first time. How did he put a hose in it? Do you know? Uh, I don't know. He did it on his own. Do you have to use a drill? I, well, you don't know. I have no idea. Okay. But I know he said he had to put holes in it. Okay. And then he told me there he's got the holes in it now. Um, he had see I'm losing track. Where was that? Okay, he, he you made sure the coast was clear. You mm -hmm. waved him out to the van. And I opened the van door. You opened the van door. We took off, we went straight down to Logan Street, mm -hmm. went left on Logan, mm -hmm. went straight down to the interpass, we went this way, once he made sure the traffic was clear mm -hmm. to hit the Cincinnati X. When were the ropes and the cinder box attached to James? That's what I'm trying to get to. Okay, I'm sorry. Because <laughs> um, he's the one that did that, I didn't do that. Right. He um, went to, you know, Catering Hospital right here. It's this date in Cincinnati before the highway. Or the it's still in Middletown, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. We went to, it said Cincinnati. We went that, um, we took that, I don't know what it's called. Were you on I-75? Yeah, we took Cincinnati. I know that for a fact. Okay. Right. We took Cincinnati, and he went straight to our own. Indiana, mm -hmm. and then from Indiana he went to, it said Cincinnati, Kentucky Bypass. He took the Kentucky Bypass. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And then um, once we got to the and in the bridge, mm -hmm. the bridge we tried the first time. Oh no! Actually, before that, one back. Before that, he had stopped. Um, he stopped once. I don't know how far it was. Mm -hmm. To and he turned off the headlights. Everything like he shut the whole van down. He went back there. I was just sitting in the front seat because I don't know nothing about getting rid of bodies. None of that. Right. He had put the center block or he made the center block basically put that on James's chest from it was like from here to like part of his leg uh -huh. well it wasn't all the way up on his chest it was like where his boobs were right um and he had this rope that he got for work use mm -hmm. and was using it to wrap I'm guessing wrap the kid, the James and the brick, the center block right. to hold tack because mm -hmm. I can't tie worth the crap yeah. and I wouldn't have done it anyway because I don't know how to do none of that. Right. Um, and once again, I didn't want to just get rid of the body. I wanted to call somebody. Right. I wanted to do what I thought was best. Mm -hmm. And he kept on insisting to get rid of the body because he had bruises from James punching them everywhere. Oh, okay. But if basically if he didn't have the bruises on him and he didn't want he didn't want to go to jail for the bruises or be in trouble for the bruises on the kid, I would have called and reported it right then and there when it happened. Mm -hmm. But he insisted on not recording it because he had bruises. Right. Okay. That I did not do. Okay. Because, like I said, I'd rather make him stand in the corner than put my hands on him. Right. So, James wraps the, 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 the cinder block around James's yeah. body. And then what happened? Um. Well, it took him a minute to get it all mm -hmm. however he had it needed to be done. Mm -hmm. So, after that, he got back in the driver's seat, mm -hmm. took off, went, went to go head towards the bridge. Mm -hmm. Well, he was looking around, looking. I'm so sorry, I'm not turning this off. This should be off. Okay, it's off. Anyways, he went um, to, we was going to do it the first time. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to help him to get rid of the body or anything, but he said, you have to help me. Right. Because he was, he was the weight from him dying dead, and the brick, he couldn't do it on his own. He tried to James. Okay. I don't know my ways about nothing, so. Right. He said it wasn't advised for me to drive anywhere, and I was like, I don't know where I'm doing, going on, doing nothing, so. Mm -hmm. Um, he drove the van even after he stopped mm -hmm. to wrap him up right. and he, he was driving the van the whole van the whole time mm -hmm. even to go back home okay. um, we had stopped to wrap the body up mm -hmm. well he had we stopped he wrapped the body up I didn't wrap it up right. I was um, waiting to, for him to get done <laughs> Um, you told me to try to duck down, I guess, so nobody would see a shadow in the car or something from the headlights. Mm -hmm. um, told me to duck down to make it seem like there's nobody in here and the car is abandoned. So that's what I've done. And we went to go ahead up to the bridge the first time. Mm -hmm. Well, he noticed there's cars coming yeah. at us. Mm -hmm. So... We, um, he said we had no choice but to go, keep going and go to the next exit. Mm -hmm. Got off on that exit, went back around, mm -hmm. got back on that highway, that same highway mm -hmm. on the opposite side, yeah. then got off on the next exit, um, going back down. I don't know what that next exit is. Okay. But you drove in there. Yeah. You went with the detectives, yeah. so they know. Right. 
I drove home. Well, I didn't drive home. Um, we went to the next exit. We went back. We went, got off that next exit. Went back on to get back on to I guess highway would it be yeah. highway mm -hmm. to go back to the bridge. Mm -hmm. Well, he had stopped. Like, cause I showed, showed the bridge don't have no worries. I'm just pull over off to the side. Yeah, it's kind of skinny, isn't it? Yeah, and he had stopped. I made like halfway, halfway down the road before the bridge mm -hmm. where it started cutting off. To wait till traffic was clear, he turned off the headlights. Same thing again. All right. Um, waited for traffic to be clear, mm -hmm. and took off flying to the middle of the bridge. Mm -hmm. Stopped to the middle of the bridge. Told me to get out. Mm -hmm. Hurry up and un open the back passenger side door, mm -hmm. and I was to grab his feet and help him toss right. the child over, mm -hmm. and he grabbed the top half, right. and he was in the driver's seat, got crawl in between the well, walk in between the two feet mm -hmm. up front, grabbed his head, and he had got out too to. Because we were standing like this, basically, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to toss him over. And I heard when I, we tossed him around our, uh, the splat because of the brick being heavy. Right. So you had the feet and he had the head and you guys just tossed him like that? Yeah. Okay. Then what happened? Um, we went home. Then what happened? Um, it was around almost five o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning the time we got back home. Right. Um, the kids were still asleep mm -hmm. when we got back. We sat there a while. I went to sleep. I couldn't stay up any longer because right. I still had my meds in me. I was still ready to go back to sleep. Mm -hmm. I even was kind of falling asleep going to do all this. Mm -hmm. um, I went back to sleep. He woke me up at eight o'clock. Said we gotta go report this mm -hmm. as a missing child. Okay. So then we came here. Well, he waited an hour to make y'all think that we went looking for him for an hour. Okay. So in between that hour of waiting, we went to the garage mm -hmm. that I showed them. Right. He put um, the rope, the, the leftover rope, and uh, I don't know the hard. Is it a hard drive you put in the recording camera thing? Yeah. He took the. I mean, I forgot to mention that he had the cameras. Mm -hmm. He had a recording thing, but it doesn't have audio. Right. Well, that's what he told me. I don't know. I don't know nothing about those cameras. Most security cameras don't have that. Um, he took the hard drive out. Mm -hmm. It was a skinny, like an iPod. Have you ever seen an iPod? Mm -hmm. He took the um, hard drive out, put it back in the original box and plastic and all. Mm -hmm. It was a blue and white box. Mm -hmm. He had put those boxes, because there was two of them. One he hasn't used, and the other one has the footage. What did he do with these hard drives? The hard drive? In the garage. They're in the garage right yes. now? Yes. Okay. I don't know exactly where at, but I've seen him go in the garage with it. I don't know if he went out the back door. So this was the hard drive. And was this before you came down here and reported him missing? Yes. Okay. So this goes up here. So he took the hard drive out of your security camera. Well, his security camera or something. It's his security camera, okay. I have no idea about none of that security stuff. Where are the cameras? Um, there's one on the front, mm -hmm. two on the side, one like this, mm -hmm. and one on the back. Okay. Do they record all the time? Yeah. Okay. All right. That's good. Okay. Um, Okay, am I missing anything or are you? No, I, I, I want to know.
because I'm trying to think of questions that other people will have to, because we don't want people speculating. Because what happens when people speculate, they, they think the worst. But we, we just want the truth to be known. The daughter you had when you were raped, her name's mm -hmm. right? You gave her for adoption. The first question anybody's going to ask, in my mind, is if these kids are too much for your household to handle, why didn't you just put them up for adoption like you did? I didn't want to. Why not? Because I knew I was going to be able to take care of them, care for them, make sure they went to the doctors, mm -hmm. school, everything. But you, you took them out to rush run to leave them. Because that's what I was told to do, or they, he was doing it himself. And if he did it himself, what was he going to do to him? Now, when you're driving to rush run, and you're thinking, I'm going to get rid of these kids. Surely you know if you just drop them off, they're old enough to talk and say who they are and where they belong, that they're going in up right back at your house. That's what I told them. So, they if you still insist on me getting rid of them somewhere. So if you're going to get rid of them, that really doesn't get rid of them. That just, that just puts them in where they're not supposed to be at. Yeah, and, and you're potentially going to be in trouble for that, for abandoning these kids at Rush Run. So that's not really getting rid of them. What was your plan to do at Rush Run when you got there? What, what, what were you going to do? Just drop them off, and I told them to stay in the bathroom so they wouldn't get hurt. Then what was going to happen? In your mind... I was just going to go back home. But these kids weren't just going to disappear. Well, they said I was going to abandon them. Okay, so and I didn't want to do that. But they were, they know where they live and everything. They, they don't know where I li we live at, but they do know my name. Right. And basically, that's it. They know my name. They know their name. Okay, so... How was this going to solve the problem? Because they were going to end up back at your house. How was dropping them off at Rush Run solving a problem? So he didn't have to deal with them? Yeah, but they were going to end up back there. Because somebody was going to find them and bring them home. Yeah, but that's, I took them there so he didn't have to deal with them. Because he said to take them smart so he can, because he's tired of dealing with them and me not disciplining them. Mm -hmm. In your mind, what was going to happen at Rush Run when you got there? In my mind, I was just going to drop them off and leave. Okay, because I'm going to ask you in the paragraph, is everything, you, did you purposely omit any information in your statement? Were you going to kill them once you got to Rush Run? No, I was not. Because you, uh, you were told you were in the wrong area. Right? When you showed yeah. him the Rush Run, he, he tells you you're, you're not in the right place. We had went there before to let the children use the bathroom. So I was confused because there was cars and stuff. It was, you was going back farther. Mm -hmm. And I was confused because I had never been there. Mm -hmm. So, and then he had told me to take them to Rush Run Lake, where I, I remember I was at. Why did it matter that you got to the lake? Were you going to drown them in the lake? No. Because, you know, there had been a case a couple of years ago where a lady took children. And actually, I was going to take them there, there, leave them there, and then when he was to go to work, I was going to go back to get them. So your intention was, n was not to go to a restaurant and kill them? No. But his intentions, I believe, was if I didn't get rid of him, he was going to. Was he going to kill him if he got rid of him? He's told him several times that he wanted to kill him. Mm -hmm. He couldn't stand him. Do you think he thought you were going to kill him? What did he think you were going to do at Rush Road? He didn't think I was going to do any of it. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what he told me. He didn't think I was going to take them and drop them off. He thought I was just going to take them, show them, and come back. Literally, I don't have 
killing anybody in my blood. I've never killed somebody in my life. He's killed, he said he's killed several people and got away with it. Mm -hmm. But your first child, um, when you got rid of her, you did it the right way. You put her up for adoption, the family took her in, and hopefully she's doing well. But these kids, you're doing it different to get rid of them. You're, you're abandoning well, them. Well, I have tried them to get, well, recently when we was in the hotel, mm -hmm. he had said the same, done the same issue, like you need to get rid of these kids or do something with them. I just sat there. Yeah. Ignored them. Right. And he was like, either you get rid of them, I get rid of them, I go to jail, I don't care. Mm -hmm. I've been to jail, I know how to, how it works. Right. I'm ready to rest my neck or be dead. Exact word he said. Mm -hmm. This is when you were living in the motel. Mm -hmm. okay. And he's been saying it ever since. Okay. So why didn't you just put these kids up for adoption or put them in foster care have a family member taken? Since he's been saying that for a year now? Is it, how, no, how it, it was a couple been, months. He's been saying this for a couple months? Yeah. How long have you been living on Crawford Street? We just moved in there February. Okay. So, if you're going to get rid of these kids, I have, why not do it a different way? I was going to take them to, I was told that you can take them to the fire station, the mm -hmm. local fire station and drop them off. They will be safe there. That would have been a good plan. Yeah. But when I had called around, they told me I couldn't do that that's still abandoning my children. Well, it would have been preferable than taking them to the middle of nowhere and dropping them off. Uh, it would have been a crack to hell and you. But you chose to do it this way. Yeah, that's because they told me I couldn't just take them there and drop them off. Who told you that? Um, he did. Because I looked it up on the website, where can you take your children where they will be safe and you will not get in trouble for it. Mm -hmm. And it says the fire, your local fire station. So why didn't you do it that way? Because I listened to what you said, you couldn't do it. But online it said you could. Right. You're Am I making any sense here? Yeah, but what I, I want to get over this hump because I don't know if you see it or not, but I do, and it's just a hump we need to get over. So you decided not to because of what he said, drop him off the firehouse, which would have been a good choice. And you decided to take him to a restaurant. But they still would have turned out they're old enough to know your name and they would have ended up home. So in my mind, in my thinking, the only way that would have worked is if when you left there they were dead, so they couldn't make their way back home. Well, I knew they were going to make the way back home because I wasn't going to do nothing to them. And why was it important for you to be in the right place? You had to be at Rush Run Lake. Because so any place would have mattered. Them. But, but any place would have been good. But he, he was telling you you were in the wrong place. Why was it important for you to be in the right place? So I remember the where they were, so they go, I can go back to get them. But when you dropped them off, you really didn't have any intention of going back to get them. You didn't change your mind until after you got to the entrance or the exit. Well, before I made them get out. Right. I sat there and was trying to, like, should I do this, should I not? Right. So I listened to him, should I listen to myself? Right. And, and in that moment, you decided to listen to him and leave him there. Yes. But then when you got to the exit, you went back. But when you originally dropped him off, you had no intention of going back to get him. But you changed your mind. Yeah. When you got, okay. But I was not intentionally taking him there to kill him anything. All right. I was taking him there to drop him off. Okay. I knew eventually they were going to come back to me and I was going to get in trouble mm -hmm. for abandoning them. Well, it's just abandoned with the firehouse then. If he, if he convinced you were going to be in trouble for that. He didn't tell me any of that. 
And he just told me I was going to, well, after all it was over, he said I was going to jail for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. When it was all over? Why do you say that? Because surely he thought this plane would work, dumping him in the river and reporting him missing. All right. <clears throat> so, you, your statement is that uh, Friday or Saturday morning, James, for, for two months since you've been living at the motel, has been wanting you to get rid of the kids. And if you don't get rid of them, he's going to. So you decide to take, take them to the restaurant and get rid of them. But in your mind, getting rid of them means what? Just dropping them off. Just dropping them off. Yeah. And not harming them, nothing. But you understand that they're really not getting rid of them. Not permanently, anyway. They're going to make their way back home. I knew they would make their way back home. Okay. Um, so, when you dropped them off, uh, James wouldn't get out of the vehicle because he, he was pretending like he was sleeping. Because he didn't want to. Right. So you pick him up. Am I okay to drink? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You set him down. He wants to get back in the van. He says, Mom, I don't want to be here. Is that right? Yeah. And he's holding on to the door. You take off. He falls to the ground, hits his head when he falls. You get to the exit of the park, change your mind, go back. The kids have already walked a quarter mile towards you as they're walking towards the entrance. Mm -hmm. You pick them up, say, where's James? James is heavy breathing. Uh, you go back for James. He's not breathing. He's clearly dead. Mm -hmm. You put him in the uh, vehicle. You uh, drive home. And, uh, oh, you, you first, before you turned around and went back, you texted him and said that you got rid of the kid. Mm -hmm. But then after you tapped hand, you said that James was hurt. James might be hurt. Right. But then after you texted him, you changed your mind, turned around, went back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, oh, no, he told you twice, go back and get the kids. Because mm -hmm. he said, I don't know what the, I'm doing. I don't know how to do nothing right. So you didn't change your mind. He told you to go back. Yeah. Okay, so you were going to leave him, but he told you to go back because you can't do it right. All right. Um, and I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. So I'm guessing in his eyes, he was hoping that I was just going to get real and kill him, all that. But I did not. Had you guys talked about it at no. the house before you took him to the restaurant? No. Well, well, clearly you did because he said you were in the wrong place, so he knew where you were planning on taking them. No, he told me just to take them to the restaurant. Can okay, you do what with them? What did he want you to do to them? Just take them there. But you can't just take them there. you got to do something. What did he think you were going to do at the restaurant? I have no idea because I wasn't. Well, you talked about it enough that he knew you needed to go to the water. Okay. Before, it, this helps with the story. Huh? Way before this, mm -hmm. he had bought the rope and all that. He had tied up all three of my children. Mm -hmm. Stuck dirty underwears in their mouth. Uh -huh. wrapped, tied their, their mouth up, too. With the underwear mm -hmm. and who's dirty underwear? The children's. Uh -huh. And put them upstairs in the closet. Mm -hmm. I told him he doesn't need to do that. Leave him, uh, leave him alone. Right. Well, he still insisted on, I'm done with these kids, basically trying to have good if they kill them. Mm -hmm. Is that what you do when you. They're going to die eventually once you wrap them. Well, tie them up to where they can't move and breathe, right? Mm -hmm. Did you cover their noses up too? Um, no. Mm -hmm. Just put 
the their, the children's own underwear in their mouth mm -hmm. and tied a rope to try to help keep the I'm guessing the underwear in their mouth. Right. And he had took them upstairs mm -hmm. and put them in the closet in the daughter room. Mm -hmm. Well, I wanted to go back up there to take a look. Um, take the rope off and all that. Mm -hmm. He told me if I was to go up there and take the rope off of them, he was leaving and taking all of them and getting rid of them. Mm -hmm. How long were they up there? Um, well, he had kept going up there because James, the little boy, mm -hmm. kept taking the rope off his um, somehow taking a rope off his mouth mm -hmm. and taking the um, thing, the underwear out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. And um, kept moving around, yelling, Mom, 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 please help me. Come, I got to use the bathroom. Well, I went to go upstairs. He jumped up and went up there. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what he did because I didn't go upstairs. Did you hear any ruckus or anything? I heard thumping, mm -hmm. like a lot of, like, on the floor. Is that when James, the little boy, got all the bruises on him? Probably. Then when he had one upstairs. How, how long before Friday did that take place where he tied up all three kids and put them in the closet? Um, well, I said, I'm trying to help, trying to give you the right... I wouldn't get it. I said James was, I did all this Friday into Saturday morning, right? right. So it was Friday night then. The, the same? Yes. Okay. It happened to be right before mm -hmm. what we had was arguing and then he got mad because I wasn't doing nothing basically. Right. I was just sitting there ignoring him and letting the children basically stand in front and do whatever they wanted. He had went and grabbed some rope mm -hmm. and he had bought from the Walmart mm -hmm. and started tying them up. Is that why he bought the rope? To tie them up? I don't, I don't know. He told me it was for work. What you do for a living? Electric. He's an electrician? Mm -hmm. So I don't know if he was maybe any junks here and there. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if he was using the rope to hold itself down. I don't know. Right. Um, but he had gotten the rope and it sat around for a little bit like he left it laying on the floor. I was going to go hide it, but he wouldn't even move, leave, nothing. How often did he work? He was out for the whole month, uh, week from being sick. Okay. So he missed from, he didn't work since the last the Friday before, okay. if it's making any sense, mm -hmm. um, and he was out that whole week, All right. so I had to deal with him the whole week. Mm -hmm. Well, I was also sick. I didn't want to deal with the children. Well, I didn't, didn't want to be beating on the children. I wanted to just like, hey, you guys can't be doing that. If you're in trouble, now you can get in the corner. Right. Well. He insisted on not feeding them. I said they had to eat something mm -hmm. or they're going to die. I don't want my children to die. Mm -hmm. Well, he's like, you know, I only advise you, I only want you to give them bread and bologna. Mm -hmm. And they're only allowed to have your water to drink. So, I don't know what he said. Um, even though before that, because remember, I told you all of this started happening with getting rid of the kids mm -hmm. when we was in the hotel. Right. He had. So the house was in your name. Yes. What's your attraction to James? What was my what? Attraction to James, the so like, boyfriend. You were able to get a place all by yourself, right? But you moved James. I couldn't afford it. 
I couldn't even afford the hotels. Do you love James? I did until I seen how he was acting towards my children. When did you stop loving him? Um, I haven't, well, basically once he starts telling me to get rid of the children mm -hmm. is when every, my love for him basically started going down. Mm -hmm. I was trying to get me mm -hmm. and myself right. out of that predicament and mm -hmm. go stay with my sisters. Mm -hmm. But I had no, they wouldn't let me. So at that time, I didn't mm -hmm. know where to go, what to do. When did you call them? Um, I talked to my sister Lisa a mm. lot right. about everything that goes on. Mm -hmm. I need somebody to tell, somebody to help me. Basically, well, I don't know, not help me, but because I, I mean, I wasn't going to get do nothing to them children, but. I wanted to tell somebody, so I had the, other, the understanding from someone that knew more of right to wrong. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know how none of the law works, none of that. Like I said, I've never been in trouble, ever. It's not really about the law, it's just about being a loving mother, you know, so. Yes, I didn't. So, you, you, when you're thinking about kids, like, I don't think about, well, is it legal for me to do this to my children? I think more like, is it right for me to do this? Yeah. Well, I was talking to her about what was going on mm -hmm. while we were constantly arguing. And it was constantly because kids wasn't listening and I wasn't disciplined. Mm -hmm. And I told, I told him over and over, they're kids. What do you expect children to do? They're not going to listen. Mm -hmm. I mean, the only thing you can do is Make them stand in the corner. Mm -hmm. And I told him, he's like, well, you can spank them, mm -hmm. just don't leave a mark. And I looked at him, I rather not spank my children. I do not want to leave no marks on my children. Right. I rather just stand them in the corner because that don't leave marks. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. So... At the motels, when he started complaining about the kids, mm -hmm. and the house that you got is in your name, how did you get that house? Well, I had, with the stimulus checks, mm -hmm. I had saved up between that and my son has SSI. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has SSI because he's ADHD. Mm -hmm. He has a learning disability. Some of his words you cannot understand. Mm -hmm. So, like, you have to ask him several times of what he's saying because right. you can't understand it. Mm -hmm. Well, I had applied for all three of them at this side because none of them, they had all three had learning disabilities. Okay. And I was told by the doctor, mm -hmm. the ADHD doctor that prescribed the medication, like, because I told her I need it some type of help system, something besides food stamps so I can pay for and leave for me and my children's roof over her head. Right. And she told me I can uh, get SSI for them. Okay. So that's what I was doing. I started the process with first mm -hmm. and then after that I did the other two. Right. And I got approved. He went to the medical doctors that they have you do before you get approved for the SSI. Okay. I took him to the doctor. Mm -hmm. They did the testing, however they did it. I sat out in the waiting room. Mm -hmm. After they asked me what they had asked me, I sat out in the waiting room while they did whatever to examine mm -hmm. to see if he had disability or not or stuff like that. <coughs> well, I had applied for the SSI, did the appointments and all that. Got approved not too long ago for it. Mm -hmm. While they owe me, still back pay. Mm -hmm. But with him working, he was paying the motel and whatever else. Okay. I had the money. I was saving the money from the SSI mm -hmm. to get me and my children my own, our own place. Right. 
and basically I was trying to get away from him, but he just said that I was going to, that he was going to help me right. pay the bills. Mm -hmm. So that's my attention when I thought he was just going to do, was right. help me pay the bill, like a roommate type ordeal. You weren't romantic, romantically involved? We, were, we still were romantically involved. Right. But I was trying to like give each other a break, if you get what I'm saying, mm -hmm. to see maybe if that would help our relationship better. So I would save up money to get us me and my children, a place to live between the SSI and the stimulus pay right. that I had got. So I was saving up that money to get us our own place and to make sure we have enough for the rent and maybe half a deposit mm -hmm. and um, to get the water and the electric on. Well, the electric is on in his name because I couldn't... He wouldn't allow me to get in my name because he didn't want me to pay the 175 for the winter rule, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, I was just going to put everything in my name. Right. He insisted on put. He went ahead of me and put it in his name. Mm -hmm. I was going to put it in my name. But he beat you to it. Yes. Right. So that way, if I did tell him to get out, mm -hmm. everything would be in my name. I wouldn't have to right. worry. Did about you ever ever tell him to get out? No. I eventually, he ruined it once he said, I'm putting the uh, electric in my name. I wanted to just go ahead and pay whatever I had to pay, plus the water and the rent and the deposit, and put it all in my name. Did you back back electric bill? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. And I even called around to try to see if I needed help with getting the electric a little cheaper for me and they told me the lowest they can do to me right now was the 175 for the rear rule program and to sign up for the to start payment arrangements. Alright, so is everything you've told me today true? Yes. When your intention was, when you left in the restaurant, Wait, when you were driving to restaurant, mm -hmm. when you were driving there, you did not intend to kill anybody. No, I did not. And when you were driving away, you're, you felt in your mind that what would happen when you left these kids at the park? Mm -hmm. what, what did you think would happen? They might get hurt or... How would they get hurt? Well, he told me that somebody might end up kidnapping them. Mm -hmm. I was like, I hope not. Right. What did you think would happen to him at the park? I knew this later once on their way back home where they would have seen somebody going by and stopped him. Mm -hmm. what, what did you think would happen at that point? Can you explain more stuff? Oh, well, well, I'm trying to, because you had a plan, clearly had a plan, because you and James, the boyfriend, you guys talked about it. You knew where you were going to go. You were going to go to the area by the water. Well, when he wrapped, he tied them up or whatever it was. Or he tied them up Friday. Oh, I forgot about that. How did they get untied? I untied them. Okay. I had told him to go to bed. Mm -hmm. Like, I was letting it all go and just sleep on it. Right. And he kept nagging at me. I could, He wouldn't let me go to bed. Mm -hmm. Even though after I had told the children to stay up there in the room and go to bed. Right. I will see them in the morning. Mm -hmm. He insisted on, no, you have to get rid of them. You can't go to bed until you get rid of them. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't want to get rid of them. Right. Why can't we just go to bed? Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm tired. It's late. I don't want to get rid of my children. Right. I was going to look at him and tell him, why don't you go somewhere? Mm -hmm. And he said, I don't have to. I pay the bills here. You told him that, and that was his response? The only ability to pay is electric. Right. And then I started thinking, like, maybe I should have just called the cops. Mm -hmm. They probably would have made him leave, right? If it was in my name or a... Gosh, if we knew what he had done to the kids, tied him up and put him in there, we would have taken him to jail. That's domestic violence. 
pussy. I don't know nothing about the law, mm-hmm. or I would have done that. Yeah. So you get him untied. You tell him to go to bed. He won't let you get to go to sleep until you get rid of. Him. Yeah, they started. They started to put him in. The mm-hmm. so diary told him uh, lay out for bed and lay down. Right. But I didn't go to sleep because mm-hmm. I was literally getting ready to go. Well, you know, I smoked cigarettes. I told you that. I was going to smoke a cigarette and then go to sleep. Well, I smoked my cigarette and then he went back to started trying to argue with me. I kept trying my best to ignore him. Mm -hmm. And he kept saying, brick walls, brick walls. What's that mean? Basically, talk to the wall. Okay. Because I wasn't acknowledging that he was speaking to me. Uh I was trying to block him out basically mm-hmm. and finally I just couldn't deal with it what I should have done was just got up walked away and went to bed mm-hmm. but I was still trying to enjoy my last cigarette before I went to sleep All right. and he still wanted to sit there and constantly argue with me I looked at him a couple times told him to shut up because right. I didn't want to hear it mm-hmm. um, he told me to make him shut up I said I'm not going to put my hands on you to make you shut up you have the choice to either shut up or leave me alone or else. Right. <laughs> so then at that time, um, who tell me I'm still trying to wake up and where was I at? So you told the kids to go to bed. You're having your last cigarette. You just want him to shut up and your intention is to go to bed. Yes. And just wake up the next morning and everything be fine. I still have my children. They're alive. They're okay. But he still kept insisting on You can't go to bed. You need to get real. So I did what he asked, basically, instead of listening in to my gut. But you guys had talked about how you're going to get rid of him. Because he knew you were in no, the wrong No, he place. was going to get rid of him before that on his own. What was he going to do? You know I don't know. He just said, I'm going to get rid of these fucking kids. Exact words. How did they get untied from the closet? I untied them. Okay, so they they were upstairs tied up. He had, he, he, little James. Like, before all this happened, mm-hmm. he was saying that he was going to get rid of the fucking kids because he's sick and tired of dealing with them. Mm-hmm. Excuse my French, but I'm telling you that right. words he said. Mm-hmm. I told him, no, you're not leaving my children alone. Okay. And he said, you want to watch? I'm ready to rest my neck or go, uh, go be with my mom, which his mom is dead. Mm-hmm. And that's what he kept telling me over and over and over and over. Basically, it was every day of my life. Okay, so James ties up the kids in the closet. This is Friday. Yes. Friday night. Friday night. All this. So you untie the kids. Yes. See, that's probably what I should have told him, too. It would have helped out a lot more, huh? All right. So if you untie the kids, you want to go to sleep. He won't let you sleep. Yes. He, uh, the kids were going to sleep upstairs. They were already in bed? Yes. And he's saying, no, you can't sleep until you get rid of the kids. Yep. Now I see why you said there's a gap or something missing. Yeah, yeah. Now I understand now after listening to you saying. Mm -hmm. So he says, nope, you can't sleep until you get rid of these kids. And at some point you talked about it, how you're going to get rid of these kids because he knew you were in the wrong place. Well, he told me I got the best place for them. Mm. James, big James. Yes, not my son. Right. And that's when he told me to rush run. I got the best place for you. What did he tell you to do? Um, he said just take them and drop them off. Just take them and drop them off? Because James wants, now James, big James, he wants to get rid of the kids for good. He doesn't want them back. I, I so don't know. So he told you something besides just drop them off. No, that's exactly what he said. I wasn't trying. 
But you, well, actually, this is exactly what he said. Take them and drop them off. I don't care what you do with them. Okay. If that helps, too. Yeah. So he's trying to remove himself a little bit. Go there, take them and drop them off. I don't care what you do with them. And I looked at him and said, do you think I want to get rid of my, children, my own flesh and blood? Mm-hmm. And he just said, I don't care. Get rid of them. Do something with them. And I kept asking him over and over, why should I get rid of my children? At what point, and it might have been way before Friday, at what point did you discuss leaving them at the firehouse? And James, oh, and James in the James hotel. At the hotel. At the hotel, you'd already talked about getting rid of them at the hotel. No, he had told me I need to get rid of them. So I was thinking of the best mm -hmm. way that I knew they weren't going to get hurt or any of that. And you talked about drug month fires. Why now your first child was right? Yes. Why didn't you talk about just doing it as you did with was one and a half. Well, when I called two for one kids, I even called them myself. Who'd you call? Two for one kids. Two for one? The, for the ch children. Well, I don't know if it's called two for one kids in Middletown mm -hmm. or Dayton, because that's where I was at in Dayton. Mm -hmm. So I had called the Job and Family Services mm -hmm. and had asked to talk to someone to go about how to get rid of the children mm -hmm. because basically I was concerned about their safety mm -hmm. and I didn't want nothing to happen to them. Right. So they told me the only thing they could do was open up a case. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get rid of them or nothing and he wasn't for it. Why wasn't he for that? I know he said no, don't do it. I'm guessing because he thought I was going to be able to just to get rid of them, like manage. Do you know who, you, how long ago was that that you talked to someone about getting rid of the children? I'm trying to remember the lady's name. She told me the lady's name. Mm -hmm. I had wrote it down too, but I don't, I can't go home and give you the paper. It was a lady that I talked to. At Family Services? Yes. And you talked to her about? Trying to put them in a foster home or somewhere safe that I knew was safe. And she said she couldn't help you, she could just open a case? Yes. Which would have you helping? She'd have to open a case. Well, that's what she said, it wasn't going to help me. She has to open a case first. And she told me if I wanted to, she was going to do that. But he told me to call him and let him know what was said. Do you know what this family services organization is? Montgomery. Montgomery? It was Montgomery, Montgomery. yes. Okay. Where I got my food stamps from. Okay. And medical. Okay. So you had called them while you were living in the motel. With Family Services in Montgomery County. Yeah. What, what was your intention to do like you had done with? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. But that didn't work because they had to open a case. And yes. James, yes. Big James didn't want you to do that. Yes. Sorry. Right. Is it making a lot more sense now? Yeah, it is. Okay. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, just, I'm trying to answer all the questions that somebody's going to ask later on. Because okay. that's going to be one of the big questions. My name's just too much. Like it was well, when we was at the motel, to do that. when we was at the motel, mm -hmm. he had we were having problems. The oh, the and James was being hayless and all that. Mm -hmm. Well, I let him play, do the normal kids do. Right. And we're at a hotel. You know how kids like rolling in the hallway. Oh yeah, and, kids love that. Um. Well, he had told me my daughter wasn't listening. She kept lying. Mm -hmm. Kids lie. And that's, kind of that's what I tried telling him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said, all kids lie. Name one kid that does not lie. Right. Just because you're proud of when they tell their first lie. That means they're smart. Um, so he's like, I'm tired of her lying. Mm -hmm. I said, well, 
all kids lie. Name one kid, right. find one kid, and show me that kid that doesn't lie. Because mm -hmm. I knew right in there. Right. But as adults, we stop lying because we realize there's consequences of that. Right. But kids, kids don't. And basically, later on down the line, when they get on my age, they'll mm -hmm. learn. All right. Okay. But anyway, back to the hotel situation. All right. Wasn't listening. I just told her to get in the corner to basically let her know, like, hey, you can't be lying. Right. Well, that's when he started insisting on getting rid of her. Oh, my gosh. So I was calling around mm -hmm. to find a safe place for her to go. Mm -hmm. And she kept, um, basically she kept, he told me she was being unruly not following our rules is being unruly is what he said. Mm -hmm. And I kept trying to ask him, like, how is that unruly? Kids are kids. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, I don't know how none of this stuff works. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. But anyway, um, he wanted me to get rid of her first because she wasn't listening the other two was. How do you want you to get rid of her? Basically the same thing he told me before. Get rid of them, drop them off somewhere. I don't care what you do with them. Me thinking as a mother right. was thinking the safest place mm -hmm. to take them and either knock them out or get myself out of the situation I was in. Right. If that's making a lot of sense to you, this makes a lot of sense to me. Because. Exactly. As I said, I didn't want to harm my children, and mm -hmm. as you can tell of me telling you, I was trying to get rid of her the safest way. Right. And then once they told me I had to open a case, mm -hmm. that just made me tell me, and then listening to what he said, mm -hmm. and her saying it wasn't going to help my situation. What I should have done was asked her, what can I do for me and my children that don't feel safe? And she probably would have gave me a list of places I probably could have went. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of shelters, women's shelters for but people that are in an abusive relationship. Now, when he tied them up Friday. He said even for abusive relationships. In, in, in abusive situations. Like what I've been wondering. Where the kids are being abused. Yeah, my thing was, if he was abusing the kids, wouldn't I be next eventually? You'd think an abusive person is an abusive person. But and he hadn't gotten around to abusing you yet. His previously relationship mm -hmm. was his wife. Mm -hmm. They had a daughter. Right. Well, she had a daughter. He was raising her since she was in diapers. Mm -hmm. Well, in between all that, he was in jail before that for I don't know what, but he right. had said he was in jail before that. Mm -hmm. Well, he had got released when um, in 2007. Mm -hmm. And um, when all the fighting and all that happened, we were living with them. Me and James's dad, right. which I don't know if they told you, Lewis Hutchison. Mm, I, don't know. I don't think so. If they did, I forgot. Well, his, they told me not to tell him. Mm -hmm. Well, them. You oh, guys, yeah, yeah, you, you, you gave James's dad's information. For some reason, they, James wanted that to be a secret. Well, he wanted to be. I was like, why can't I just tell him who his, his dad is? Mm -hmm. So you, mean, you were living with James' dad for a little bit? We were back and forth. We were homeless. Right. So we were going from family to family, basically jumping around, right. trying to find the safest spot for us and our children. Right. Well, he had real bad seizures, mm -hmm. Lewis. Mm -hmm. And he refused for a while not to take his medicine. Well, I had to sit down with him and have a talk. Like, if you want to be around for your son's life and the other two that you raised as your own, then won't you have to? Don't you think you should take your medicine to be around for them? Right. And he was like, "Yeah, sure, you make sense." I'm going to, and he starts taking it back. Mm -hmm. So, because it was not him taking them, his seizures was getting worse or worse or worse, because they said it was caused from stress and all that. Right. But. Um, they had gotten an argument previously before that. Me and Big Lewis. James and his dad. 
Big James and his dad got an argument? No. Still, his wife. Oh, okay. They had gotten an argument mm -hmm. about the same ordeal that I'm going through right now right. with me and my children. Mm -hmm. They were going through the same ordeal with their one children, which is named Sarah. Mm -hmm. And he was beating the out of the mom. So I was that? No. James Hamilton was beating the shit out of his wife. Oh, okay. If it's making sense. All right. Me and Lewis mm -hmm. wanted to call the cops. Well, he's a convicted felon. Mm -hmm. He had a gun. And he was going to blow all of us exactly what he said. I'm going to blow you all away mm -hmm. if you call the cops. Well, we was going to call the cops because we were all stuck in this one room right. and didn't want to come out because he had his gun flopping around. We didn't know what was going to happen, so we wanted to stay in that room because they were towards the back of the house. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to kind of stay away from the situation, not let our kids see people doing this with guns and beating crap out of people. Right. So we tried to stay away from it. Well, we kept getting up. Me and James Hamilton kept getting accused of having sex with each other, which we did not mm -hmm. until after they kept saying we did. And we moved out and separated. He separated from his wife, and I separated from James's dad that I had been with off and on for my whole life. Was James's dad your boyfriend? When I was living with Yes, when I was living with James Hamilton and his wife and his daughter. Okay. Um, I know you're probably confused like you're telling me your whole life story. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question about something. I'll think of it again. <laughs> but when you think of it, just... Because there's a lot of oh, I got that a, question back. a lot of information you're giving me. Well, I don't know what his name was. The detective that I Detective Hoover? Yes. He told me any information will help my situation. Mm -hmm. And tell the truth about the whole situation. Right. So he and he came in here before you came in here and told me to tell you everything the whole situation mm -hmm. of how it all started, which I left that out. So now I'm telling you the whole entire story. Mm -hmm. So, I know you probably Big right James is James Hutchinson. No. No, James. Big James is James Hamilton. Hamilton. James Hamilton's dad is. What's his name? James Hamilton. You mean my son, James? No, 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 your boyfriend. You're confusing me. Okay. I don't know who James Ben Hamilton's dad is. Jay, my son, James, is, is named... Uh, my son's father's name is Lewis. Oh, so we're talking about Lewis. So your son's, we were saying your son's last name is... Hutchinson. Hutchinson. That's probably where you got okay. Yeah, I think it's too many Jameses. I'm going to keep track of it. Okay, James Hutchinson, the six-year-old, his dad it's is... Lewis, L-E-W-I-S, Hutchinson. And his middle initial is E, if that helps you. Okay. So you were living with... James Hamilton and his wife, Priscilla Hamilton. Priscilla. You were all living together for a period yeah. of time? And plus my two other children and her kid. Her kid. Where, where was this going on at? Um, 1229 Woodside Boulevard. 1229 Woodside Boulevard. So they have one child and her name is? Sarah. S-A-R-A-H. Woods. And then you've got three kids. Yes. James. Daphne. 
Why are you all living together? Because we were homeless, basically, born back. So, you and, and Lewis, yes. you were living with them? Yes. Because you were homeless? Yes. Okay. All right. I'm clear on that. <laughs> I remember what my question was. Uh, gagging someone, putting dirty underwear in their mouth, mm -hmm. and tying it up like that is sort of sexual because some people are in the bondage. And it's not like you took a washcloth that's not attached to your genitalia ever and put it in their mouth. If he just wanted them to be quiet, he put like a washcloth, a shirt, a sock. I like to go get him a washcloth. But, but, but putting dirty underwear in your mouth. He insisted on that. It's kind of sexual. Is he sexually abusing these children? Not that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. But you see my meaning? Yes. You see where I'm coming yes. from there? Because he's, he's taking something that's touching their sexual organs and he's putting it in their mouth. So some people would see that as a, a, a kind of Per perverted sexual thing. Yes. I, I, I don't know. I know mm -hmm. nothing about it. My children have never mentioned anything about it to me. Maybe he said something to them not to mention it to me. Mm -hmm. as, I, as I was saying before, his previous relationship, he was threatening to kill all of us. Mm -hmm. And before that happened, because we were trying to help Priscilla get out of the situation she was in with him. But I'm, I'm going back to the dirty underwear thing. Because it wasn't even clean underwear. For some reason, it's dirty underwear. Yes. Know. He made me get him out the dirty underwear. See, that's sexual. Do you, do you think he was doing anything sexual to him? Is there any clues that he was? Any clues that he was? Clues. I mean, did he, did he talk about, you know, no, I'd like the kids to join us in our sex act. No. He wanted them to watch. He wanted no. to see them naked, anything no. like that. Yeah, I was still trying to figure out why he wanted dirty underwear. Why couldn't he just... Why not clean? Like, he wanted you to get it out of the dirty. Yeah. I was still trying to figure out why dirty underwear, too, myself. Well, like I said, it'd be a question you asked him, huh? Yeah, it would be. Yeah, and <coughs> the kids, that's something to interview the kids about. It is, uh, did, did, did he ever touch him and stuff like that? Were they sexually abused? That is odd. So he, he's tying, he's upset. He's tying these kids up. And does he tie their hands behind their backs? He ties their hands and their feet, like they're laying on their stomach and they're like this. So you like all the time. Well, like, yeah. Or is it like their feet are, because. Well, their hands are like this, and he does the feet. Bends the feet back. Is it like that? Like this is their face, this is their arms? And yes. Feet? Yes. Oh. And then the one rope around the mouth. With dirty underwear. Yes. And he made you get the underwear. Yes. Did you hold him down while he tied him up? Nope. So they're laying in the closet hog tied. I sat there with smoking a cigarette saying, You don't need to do this. Goodness. And why did you do that? Because they used they wasn't listening. They wasn't listening. And he's fed up with it. Okay, I'm going to have to start my list again. So Friday, he's upset and they won't listen. So he hog ties them. Mm-hmm. Puts them where? Upstairs. He makes you get out dirty underwear. Yes. Told me to find the most dirtiest underwear ever. Most of theirs. Most dirtiest underwear ever. See, now I feel better about telling you guys to mm hold. -hmm. So, you go, do you really do that? You go through the laundry and look for dirty underwear? The I just found the closest one. The closest one. Okay. I wasn't looking to see if they were dirty. I just grabbed what he said. Okay. So, when you get them out, the dirty laundry. Mm -hmm. Find the dirtiest one you can find. And you give him these dirty underwear and he does what? Uh, well, after he wraps them up, the hands and the feet, mm -hmm. well, ties them up however he did it, mm -hmm. he puts...
the underwear in their mouth after he wraps them up. Okay. It ties them up however it is. That's what, if it's, uh, I, I want to make sure I'm right on this. The, like I yes. see this picture. Their, yes. Their arms are bent. Yes. Their knees are bent. Yes. Their arms are, and then their hands and their feet are tied. Yes. 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 That's hog tying. Okay. Then, uh, then, then what? Um, he sticks the underwear in their mouth mm -hmm. and then ties them out, um, rope around the mouth to hold the underwear in. Do you put the underwear in their mouth? Nope. I did nothing. Okay. You're, you're sitting there smoking a cigarette telling him not to do it. Yes. Okay. And okay. I didn't want to put my hands on him mm -hmm. for him doing that because I didn't want to get basically beat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or shot because he... Now, how long... Now, I know little James, he gets the underwear out of his mouth a couple of times and he's yelling, Mommy, help me. i got to use the bathroom. I went to go upstairs mm -hmm. to untie all of them, not just the one, mm -hmm. untie all of them. Mm -hmm. And he insisted on, no, leave them be. He jumped ahead of me before I could even get up because wow. we were sitting on the couch. Mm -hmm. I heard James yelling something. I couldn't make it out. But he had said that when he went upstairs, James said that he was yelling for me to let him uh, untie him and let him use the bathroom. And like I told him, mm -hmm. you should have never tied him up anyway. Right. To just, and he's like, and then he was, that's when I told you, he told me if I was to go up there to untie them, to get, uh, he was either going to get rid of them or I would need to get rid of them. Okay. So did you go upstairs that time? Yes, I sure did. Mm -hmm. How long were they up there tied up like that? Um, Well, it was long enough to where their hands were purple and oh. numb. Okay. Purple and numb. Even, you might even might be able to see it, my daughter, mm -hmm. for instance, mm -hmm. and maybe they have the rope prints mm -hmm. on her wrist. If you do. Yeah, we'll have to look at that and make sure. They might even still have it on their legs. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. So you go up there. And that's probably how she had it. They said my daughter looked like she had a black eye. Mm -hmm. I really couldn't tell because of lighting. Mm -hmm. So that's probably why she's got a black eye. It's probably he might have hit her for doing something she wasn't supposed to do because he went upstairs several times because mm -hmm. he kept hearing noises. Right. I told him to leave him alone. I'm about to go up there and untie them up because they, they don't deserve this. No, no. So you go up there and untie him? Mm -hmm. Where's he at when you're untying him? Sitting out there on the couch. Mm -hmm. Well, I went to have them come back downstairs mm -hmm. to sleep where I knew, I knew where they were. After, especially after him tying them up, they would probably be scared shitless mm -hmm. of what was going to happen to them next. Mm -hmm. So I wanted them to go downstairs and sleep in the living room. Mm -hmm. He looked at me and said, I don't want to see the kids. I don't want to even look at them kids. Keep them the fuck upstairs. Mm -hmm. I said, so they can't even use the bathroom? Because the bathroom is downstairs? Yes. Mm -hmm. And they have to go down the stairs to the kitchen to the bathroom. Well, through the kitchen to the laundry room to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And he would see them going from the living rooms right there at the kitchen. So he, the couch is on this wall. Right. He would see them walking to the bathroom. Okay. So you untied them. They came downstairs, he said, no, he doesn't even want to see him, and then what happens? Um, I, looked, I yelled up there and said, please go to sleep upstairs. Mm -hmm. I'll be up every so often to check on you guys, okay. make sure you guys were okay. Right. And make sure they were sleeping fine, they wouldn't have a nightmare from mm -hmm. what had just previously happened to them. Mm -hmm. And make sure they were breathing fine and all that. Mm -hmm. And plus, they kept saying, Mom, my hands are down. Mom, my hands are down. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. He told them just to do this and do this to get the, I guess, the flood like, uh, flood flow back in the... Flood flow back in? Yes. Mm -hmm. 
because, like I said, when I got two of them, because mm -hmm. I insisted on going up there prior to that to untie them, mm -hmm. and I looked at him and said, I don't care what you want, I am untying my children. Right. And when I went to get them, their hands were purple. Mm -hmm. And they had socks on and shoes, so I couldn't even imagine what their feet looked like. Okay. I'm sure their feet probably was the same way. What were they wearing? Night clothes. Night clothes. Get ready. They did have clothes on. Yes, they had night clothes on. I was going to send them. I was going to send them to bed because it was um, around eight o'clock at night when it happened. Mm -hmm. When he started to tie it up, and well, actually, it was around. I'm going to say anywhere from seven to eight because. It was getting close to bedtime. They go to bed at nine. Okay. When you untie them, it's about seven or eight. No. Well, he started tying them up. Oh, okay. When you untie them, about what time was it? Um, almost bedtime. Which is nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. So they laid there for one or two hours. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you untie them at nine o'clock. Bring them downstairs, tell them to put them back upstairs, they complain their hands are numb, he says squeeze your wrist, you know, move your wrist around, squeeze your hands, that. get circulation going. Then what happens? Um, I don't want to go bring him, I told him to come back downstairs. Because mm -hmm. he made him piss himself too. Oh. So I made him change. I knew it was right, change your clothes so you don't get raw and all mm -hmm. that. I made them change their clothes. Did all three of them? Yes. Okay. I made them change their clothes because they had what they had on because we had went somewhere before that to the store or something. Mm -hmm. And normally I take all three of my children with me. Right. To go to the grocery store, doctors, whatever, unless they're in school. Because mm -hmm. um, I felt more safe when they were with me than leaving them alone. Mm -hmm. And especially after what me telling you, you see why I'd rather keep them with me. Right. But, and plus with me being right, so mm -hmm. I didn't, I learned not to leave anybody alone. Right. Well, especially a little child alone. Exactly. Um, so even when I went to go do laundry, I took them with me. Okay. Um, and when he did want me to leave them at the house, I tried to hurry up and get what I had done. He did get done on the track. Sometimes he did want you to leave the kids at the house? Yeah, he told me they don't deserve to go outside. And he or they don't deserve to go nowhere. Okay. So sometimes he would try to get you to keep the kids with him alone. Mm -hmm. right. When you left them alone with him, when you got home, they were still the same way we were at. They were still in the corners. They'd be in the corners. Would they be wearing the same clothes? Did you notice yeah. anything unusual when you got um, back? To be honest, I literally didn't. You didn't. Okay. I didn't even think about. All right. But probably the dirty underwear thing. Oh, yes, I didn't about? think about it. Right. Okay. So. Uh, they cleaned up because when you untie them, they, they pissed themselves. And um, uh, all three of them pissed themselves. All three of them. Because, like I said before, that James was asking to use the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And then the other two, I guess, since he told him no, right. the other two didn't even bother. Right, because why? Because James didn't get to go. So, why would they get to? All right, so. Um, you time they came downstairs, he said, no, you don't even want to see them. They go back upstairs. They didn't even get the chance to come downstairs. Oh, they didn't even make it downstairs. They were still changing their clothes. Okay. So they didn't get wash off even because you don't have any water upstairs. No. They I, wanted them to get, I wanted them to get the clothes okay. and at least get a rag, something, mm -hmm. let me wipe them off All right. until the next morning mm -hmm. to get a bath. Mm -hmm. And he wouldn't even let me run them downstairs, even this. You wouldn't let them downstairs. So you cleaned them up the best you could upstairs? Yes. Okay. So they they get cleaned up as best they can without soap and water. And uh, 
You leave them upstairs to go to sleep around. No, I let them upstairs to get dressed in their own rooms. In their own rooms. Okay. So they left the clothing upstairs, mm -hmm. and they were still upstairs. So I went downstairs and got some water on the rag okay. and started trying to wipe them off mm -hmm. to get the, the urine right. off of them. Because mm -hmm. um, I know personally, I'm a female. I don't like to be wet. I don't. Right. It's Nobody cold. does. And I damn sure don't like to smell to like pits. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they clean up in their own rooms. They change clothes. You come back downstairs. And sit on the couch. Sit on the couch. So I lit the cigarette, throw a smoke a cigarette, was mm -hmm. watching TV, trying to drown him out, right. trying to block yeah. him out. And you're saying brick wall, brick wall, because you're a brick yeah. wall. You're yeah. Yeah. And then what happened? Um, that's when he said, I don't want to fucking see them. I don't even want to fucking look at them. So, I said, so you want them just to stay upstairs, not even come downstairs? Mm -hmm. So, I was hoping, for the kid's sake and my sake, mm -hmm. that he was going to work, because sometimes he works month, uh, Monday through Sunday. Mm -hmm. I was hoping, for our sake, that he was going to go to work that mm -hmm. next morning. Right. Because I was not going to leave them upstairs. So you were okay. hoping Saturday morning he'd go to work? Yes. Okay. Okay. And that's what I'm like, and, and I like that. You were hoping that, you know, how can you kind of figure out what's going on in your mind? And, and it helps when you share stuff like that. So you were hoping he'd go to work Saturday morning. Because he had said prior to that that he was want to go to work, he couldn't stand being here. He mm -hmm. hated every last one of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then what happened? And he said that he didn't he didn't feel wanted, he don't feel loved. Just started going on around when a bunch of crap. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I was trying to block him out, trying not to listen to it. Mm -hmm. Um I he just hog tied three kids in that upstairs. Why would he feel one is in love? Isn't that weird? Mm -hmm. Anyways, um, where were we at? Uh, he, you were downstairs smoking a cigarette, trying to block him out. He said brick wall. He said he doesn't feel one to their love. By none of us. By none of you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm guessing because he starts feeling like the love was. Um, Right. Yeah, I just started changing myself, mm -hmm. like distancing and all. Mm -hmm. And we literally went like two weeks no sex. Mm -hmm. So, what does that tell you? Right, it does tell something. I was mm -hmm. just trying to distance myself from him. Right. And he kept saying that he was distancing himself from him. Who, for me, but I who would normally initiate sex? Who would normally initiate sex? Well, I would only do it when I wanted it. Mm -hmm. um, when he wanted it, I didn't say no, nothing. Mm -hmm. Had he tried in those two weeks? No. Mm -hmm. He hadn't tried? No, because he, he was sick. I wasn't... Oh, he was sick. Yeah, because I wasn't trying to bother him. I mean, you're sick. I, I'm sick. Mm -hmm. When I was sick, I didn't want to be bothered. I didn't really want to be fucked with. I didn't right. want nothing. I just wanted to be left alone, peace, quiet, mm -hmm. loving on my children and right. at that. Okay. What a mom does. Right. So, anyway, he's, at, at this point, uh, he's feeling sorry for himself. You're not really feeling as romantic as you used to. And is that at the point when he says, if you don't get rid of the kids out? Yes. Okay. Because that's when we started to kept, start, kept arguing mm -hmm. about the kids not listening and me not disciplining them. Mm -hmm. And me just making them stand in the corner and not beating their asses. Exactly. Right. 
and as you can tell, he was beating our asses. Right. He's hog tying them. Well, he was beating James. Uh, I swear to you, when that boy died, from his face down, he was bruised. So you hit him in the body? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bruises all over him. I felt so bad for that little boy. Gosh. So, you decide that it's best for you to get rid of. Yeah. Okay. So I wouldn't have to keep listening to it. Or, did you guys talk about how you were going to get rid of him? He had talked about getting rid of him prior to that. And if he got rid of him, how was he going to do it? He was talking about brush runs. He was talking about brush runs. Yes, he wouldn't tell me no details, nothing. So he yes. had been telling you he was going to take him to rush run. Yes. Didn't tell me how, what, nothing. Have you ever been to a rush run before? Once. And that was only because he has a friend named Dean and Ashley that lives out there. Mm-hmm. And I was the closest bathroom. So you just went there to use the bathroom? Yes. Mm-hmm. How long ago was that? Um, it was, it's been a while. That's why I said I didn't know I was lost. Remember? Mm-hmm. So when you were lost out there, you were in the wrong place. I typed in my GPS, Rush Run mm-hmm. Park. But it was there, the place that you ended up, was there a porta potty there? No. So it was the reason you wanted to be at the right place was about the porta potty? The kids had to use the bathroom. Okay. While you were out there, Rush Run? Yes. Okay. Which kids had to use their bathroom? All of them. But then James wouldn't get out of the car. He was scared, so eventually he was just probably going to pee himself. Okay. But he had to use the bathroom, he just wouldn't get out of the yeah. car because he was scared. He Why was he scared. scared? I was going to leave him. He was right. Did you tell him you were going to leave him? I told him I had no choice but to leave him. What did you say to them? I'm sorry, but I have no choice but to leave you guys. What did they say? Well, as I said, James said he didn't want to be there. Mm-hmm. The other two really didn't say anything. They asked where was the safest spot for them to go. Because Charles, James Hamilton told them they would get aid by a animal. I don't remember what animal it was. When did he tell them they would be eaten by an animal? Um, he told him that when he said it started saying he was going to get rid of him and take him to the restaurant. Could you so say he all was he, telling them. Yes, he said all he can do is just leave them there or tie them up to something mm-hmm. and leave them there and let the, coy- the coyotes eat them. Coyotes eat them. And as I was saying, I didn't want nothing to harm them, hurt them, nothing. So James Hamilton was telling them that he was going to take them to Rush Run, tie them up, and let the coyotes eat them. Yes. Okay. So you took them to Rush Run instead. Yes. Mm-hmm. And why not just let him do it, be the bad guy? Why did you do it? Honestly, I wasn't even thinking right nothing. Did you think coyotes would eat them? I was hoping they wouldn't. Mm-hmm. I don't know nothing about coyotes either, so. Mm-hmm. But you knew it was a possibility of coyotes. He, he even told, told ben, everybody that coyotes are going to eat me too. But eat you too? Yeah. Why Why would they eat you? I don't know. He told me to eat me. I don't know if you want me dead too or. Mm-hmm. Or what? So, uh, we've already been over the story when you dropped him off that uh, little James is holding on to the car, you dropped yeah. him, he fell, hit his head. And that was what happened before that incident. Alright. So really, the big question is, what led up to this? 
That's what we really want to clarify. So, did uh, now when James told you in the wrong place, I was because you were looking for the port potty. Yes. All right, that makes sense now. Because in my mind, you were looking for the right place because that's where the boat ramp was, and that's where you were going to drown. Them. Huh? Well, that's what I'm thinking in my head. Because is the boat ramp there where you ended up at the port potty? Yes, but I wasn't. But really you were never going to do that. No. Because in my mind, that's my mind. Why go there? Why go there? Why go there? And, and my, oh, that's where I had remembered where the bathroom was at. But it was all about the bathroom. James's plan was to tie him up and let the coyotes eat him. Your plan was to drop him off and hope that the coyotes didn't eat him. Yes, I told him to go in the, the bathroom and lock ourselves in there. You told him to lock yourself yes. in the bathroom? All three of them was? Yes, I told all three of them to go in there. Okay. I even told him to take James with him so I knew he was fine. Mm -hmm. I wonder why they didn't stay in the bathroom. They walked. They were walked, they were walked a quarter mile and he turned around and went back. Because they knew I was going to come back. How did they know? Um, because I would never take them there and he had still been there once before without me. Oh, really? Yes. What's that about? Um, them not listening and me letting them, he said, me letting them do whatever they want to do. Because as I was saying, I don't like to hit them. Mm -hmm. I don't like leaving marks. <clears throat> I'd rather just make them stand in the corner to make them know that they can't do that. So James had taken them to restaurant before without you. Yes. What did he do when he took them there? How long ago was that? Um... He's done actually it started when we were at the hotel. At the hotel. And he would do it late at night when nobody was well when he thought nobody was up. Late at night he took he took all three. He's took them all three of them before. Would they take them separately or yes, together? Yes, separately. So one by one, he has taken them all to Rush Run at some And had brought them back. What would he do to them once he was at Rush Run? I don't know. See, that makes me go back to the dirty underwear in the mouth thing. Is he doing sexual things to him at Rush Run? I, I don't know. I really don't know. That he would take all of your time. I tried asking him, why did you take him there? And I was planning on to get rid of him. Mm -hmm. Exactly all he said. Did any of the kids... And he would call me, and i tell him to bring them back home. Right. How long would he be gone with them at a the time? Well... At that time, we were staying in Dayton, so however long time it took them, it took several hours, I know that, from Dayton to all the way to that same area. And that's the same area he would take them to any other time. Well, that was the same area we had stopped all together to use that bathroom. Was there ever an issue where the kids came back and later they got a urinary tract infection? Or My blood? daughter has a lot. She gets a lot of urinary tract infections. Does she get blood in her underwear? I haven't seen no blood. How about the boys? Would they ever complain about being injured or their bottom hurting? Um, no, just James, he has stomach issues. Mm -hmm. He's constantly, like if he drunk too much juice, like the sugar was bothering his stomach really, really bad. Mm -hmm. And I had took him to the doctors, and they said it runs in the, the blood of the family because his dad, his dad, James's dad, Lewis, has the same issue, and Lewis's dad has the same issue. Like it runs, get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It runs down the whole time, fairly. How often would he take the kids away for hours at a time and go to restaurant? Um. I'm going to say several times. Several times each? Yeah.
I know for a fact he's taken two times. Mm -hmm. I believe he took actually all four, all three of them two times. Two times each. And he two different out. times. Yes. And it just be them. Yes. Them alone. Yes. Would you, t would you take any of them to, uh, like you said, the little girls get uh, urinary tract infections? Would uh, you so take them to the hospital? Or well, I did. When she kept saying it, it, just, it, it hurts down there. Mm -hmm. I did take her to the hospital. They told me she had yeast infection. Mm -hmm. At that time, like I said, I didn't think any of rape and none of that. She said she had, they said she had yeast infection. Um... Something else, but recently she just started that back. Mm -hmm. She started that when I was with um, Lewis, but that was because she wasn't wiping, and that's exactly what they told me. She wasn't wiping herself. Mm -hmm. So that, because I thought, like, how do you? I asked them literally, how do you get yeast infection? Because I never had it, right. and they was like not properly washing your body, not properly washing, wiping yourself. So then I was like, well, she, I showed her how to get a bath, right. like, if she needs it, because she's about that age where he, she's got to learn somehow right. to do it on her own. Mm -hmm. and how old is she? Going on 10. Because, right. um, I mean, she knows how to fold her laundry, mm -hmm. fold her blankets. Oh, yeah. So I figured... She's going to have to learn how to do that one time and then sooner or know you later. When was the last time she had an issue? Um, just recently. Hours. You can ask her now. She'll probably tell you her. It's just... In, uh, just now? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And I honestly, I ain't put not thought money about it. And I went to... I told him I was going to take him to the hospital. And he said no. Oh, he didn't want you to take him to the hospital. Now that makes sense, huh? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so you had, <clears throat> and I hate for my little girl to go to the hospital and go through all that testing ordeal, because she's never, ever been through that, ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that can be an experience. Hopefully she hasn't gone through worse experience with, uh, with Big James. Um, so he says, you get rid of them or I will, you take them out there, and once again, you were hoping the coyote wouldn't get them. Now, did you and James, he knew where you were taking them, there was, there was going to be a bathroom there. Now, when you were leaving, and he told you to go back and get them, why did he, why did he tell you to go back and get them? Because... Like I told you, I wasn't doing nothing right. Mm -hmm. Basically, because I wasn't going to do whatever he had planned for them. I don't know what he had planned for them, but my intention was not to harm them in any way. Mm -hmm. My intention was to make sure they were in that bathroom, and when I left there, I knew they were in that bathroom. Right. But little, little James wasn't. Yes. He was on like a house ball. And the other two was trying their best. Mm -hmm. to get James in the bathroom with them. How do you know they were trying their best to get him? Because they kept saying, doing this, saying, Bubby, come on. You saw him doing that? Yes. So you saw him laying on the ground when he left? No, he was, I set him on the ground. Right. He stood up trying mm -hmm. to get back in the van. Right. And before I got back in the van, I told them to get your brother and get him in the bathroom with you guys. Okay. Is it making sense now? And then they were saying, come on, Bob. Yes, on. They, I see him while I'm grabbing his arm, trying to get him in the back. But my big question is going to be, everything you've told me today, have you intentionally left anything out? Nope.
But my big question is going to be, everything you've told me today, can you use Russian to... Actually, I was wanting another pop. Okay. <laughs> I'll give you another pop after, okay. after the polygraph, because it's got some caffeine in it, and I okay. want you to be as calm as possible. And uh, we're going to take a break. Got to use restroom. You can use restroom. Well, just to let you know, when, if you see me, like, because you'll probably be able to tell my heartbeat racing fast. I will. Because I start to get scared. Mm -hmm. it, it, help, it helps me. Do you tell me I'll be okay? Yeah. Yeah, the, your heart rate really doesn't matter too much. We do look at it a little bit, but it's mostly blood pressure and sweat gland activity a little bit of heart rate. Most of it, believe it or not, is sweat gland activity. When we tell a lie, and I'll explain it to you all in there, when we tell a lie, we, lie, we sweat in three places. Palms of our hands, soles of our feet, and our forehead. If you ever talk to anybody, they just start sweating in their forehead and they look nowhere else, like not their face and their arms and everything. Well, when I start to get lying. scared, mm -hmm. my anxiety kicks in, and then it, I start feeling hot. Right. And like I need to cool off. Okay. What, what we do in the polygraph is there's a practice test at the very beginning to make sure everything's working properly. It's called an acquaintance test, mm -hmm. just to get you acquainted to the test, to get you used to it. Basically, are you going to ask me the same questions before? We will review all the questions. There's okay. no surprises in the polygraph. Okay. So I'm going to give you a practice test first just to get you okay. used to everything. It's a simple little number test. Okay. And then the questions that we've already reviewed, mm -hmm. I will ask you those questions. I'll ask you those questions in a series, and then we'll take a quick break, like a, okay. like a one-minute break, while I grade it by hand. A break, basically, for me, to, if I'm worked up, to calm down. Yeah, because when, when you're taking the test, you got to be perfectly still. So, And there's a blood pressure cuff on your arm. And during the break, I let that blood pressure cuff out, so there's no pressure okay. on it, so so your hand's comfortable. Okay. And then I'll, I'll start... So basically, you're trying to make me comfortable as possible without... Right. Making me have to be painful or... Right. Try to keep it comfortable. And then I'll ask you the same questions in a different order a second time. And then we'll take a break. And then I'll ask you the same questions a third time. Because what I'm looking at is I'm looking for a pattern. Because the mind is super fast. The way we think is fast. And uh, and if I just get... Is it okay if I um, hesitate a minute to say something? Like I'm thinking of... You won't have to think about it because we've already reviewed it. You okay, would have okay, already okay. thought about it. Okay. So the answers will come quick. Okay. So, but anyway. I'm sorry, I'm asking these, but no, I've no, never it's good. Of this. It's I've good never done none of this. So I'm looking for a pattern. Uh -huh. So I can't just ask you the questions once because maybe you had a random thought. But by switching everything around, say, well, this isn't a random thought. She's responding to the question. So that's why I have to give you the questions three times, at least. If you get the hiccup, start sneezing, get interrupted, I might have to give you the test up to five times. We won't do it more than five times because there's a little bit of stress in it. Um, we don't give it after five tries. We'll just try a different day. We'll try later. Uh, but about everybody just needs three times. Okay. So three times is normal. Okay. Five times unusual. Any questions so far? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to go in the other room. I'm going to do a little typing on the computer, then we'll review the questions I'm going to ask you. Okay. All right. I say, as long as we review the questions before we yeah. even start the process, I'll be fine. No surprise. <laughs> Am I allowed to take this water with me? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I've been sick and my mouth constantly dry. Okay. Why don't you wait here for just a second? Okay. Okay. Just tell me when you're ready. All right. And yes, before I've already went and tried it, my blood pressure checked out, and they said there was nothing wrong with it. But I don't know if they even actually, I don't even think they did the actual blood test, the actual, the actual, actual blood result. Well, I I won't know what your blood pressure is. I just know when it goes up and down. Oh, man. Let me get rid of 
of this computer that belongs to the other part of our operator. It's off today. Okay, we're gonna tell you at least turn around and look at you. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That's what my parents taught me. When somebody is talking to you, you must look at them. Uh -huh. I'm guessing that is respect. trying to make sure my house is clean and food in the house instead of taking care of me, basically taking care of what needs to be done for my children's sake. Mm -hmm. Which I know you're not supposed to re neglect yourself. You're supposed to, do, to take care of your children and take care of yourself. Right. Because if you don't take care of yourself, how can you take care of the kids? Right? Yeah. Have you been to some parenting classes? Um... When I was pregnant with, mm -hmm. I went to Pregnancy Center West in Cincinnati, uh -huh. but that's where I was pregnant with that. And they had you do these parenting classes by watching videos, and you have to answer the questions. Okay. And they give you baby books to get your kids, like they need diapers, wipes. Anything that basically a ch baby would need. Right. Basically, helping myself learn about parenting and getting help for the children. Kids need to come with an owner's name, don't they? Yeah. All right, what I'm doing is I'm just I'm going to be typing in the computer for just a minute while I type the questions that we need to ask, and then we'll review everything. Okay. So it's going to take me a minute. Where do, I have a question before you start typing. Where do I go to court at? Is it all up in there. the same building? Yeah, all okay. up here. Well, you've never been in trouble before, have you? <laughs> no, that's why I keep asking all these questions. I even asked how I got... I was thirsty last night. I said, what am I supposed to drink when there's I was in my room? A, there's a fountain in there. <laughs> I didn't know. I thought it was a sink. Yeah, it's both. <laughs> See, that tells you anything. I've never been in any trouble before. That's why they don't understand how. How does that happen? Huh? Yes. Especially with somebody that has no record besides a ticket for driving. Mm -hmm. And I didn't flood the scene of I stayed right here. And thanks for talking to you. You released all the pressure that I had built up. It helps to talk. It really does. Well, that's why I was telling you I used to talk to my sister Lisa to help mm -hmm. release the pressure. Yeah. That way somebody knows what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. What's your birthday? 2592. I 
have a daughter that's older than you. What is her name? Maggie. Officer Hoover's got the same daughter as my daughter's name. And we both have daughter names. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah he sure. told me that. Mm -hmm. I was like, hmm, that's pretty cool. I guess it's popular. Yep. <laughs> that's a good name. Well, you know why I named Why is that? Because at that time, I heard of nobody named Always. Uh -huh. Not. Have you met some since then? No. Nope. Oh, good deal. <laughs> I've uh, seen on Facebook, I'm friends with a bunch of moms, mm -hmm. and they had recently just had a kid and named their kid. And that kind of touched my heart. I'm guessing I'm the only one that I know of came up with the idea of mm -hmm. But I'm sure other people saw their kids or named their kids. Okay, what I'm trying to do, when I give a test, it's actually two parts of <laughs> this test. Um, I want to... <coughs> I'm going to have to cough in it. I'm going to have to cough in it. I already had my cough medicine for my congestion. Mm -hmm. I, I want to be able to report back to Detective Hoover mm -hmm. that uh, you are being truthful in your statements, mm -hmm. and you're not the kind of person that would lie about something once you call it, or what, once we talk to you about something serious like this. That when That's basically what he was telling when, me. When you make a mistake, you're you're an honest person. You you own up to your um, mistakes. I'm always honest. Right. I was just when he was asking me all these questions, mm -hmm. I was confused, didn't know what to say, scared. Mm -hmm. And plus, they kept bringing in more than just him. I just felt like I was outnumbered. Yeah. And I guess it may have probably something to do with when I was raised when I was a kid. Because the guy was not the oldest um, officer who was. Mm -hmm. So that might explain why I didn't really feel safe, comfortable. But he did tell me afterwards, I told asked him if I was if I was to ask for a female cop to talk to or a female, mm -hmm. they would have gotten one. And I didn't know that either. As you can tell, I've never been arrested ever. Maybe I should have asked that from the start. We wouldn't be going through all of this. Well, we still be <laughs> um. Well, I wouldn't have to go through question after question after question. I would have had it all out. What well, memory is funny? Uh, if something jogs in your memory while we're talking to you now, you need to let me know because a lot of people think memory is like a video camera. You could rewind it and replay it, but that's not the case because our memory deals with sight and sound just like a video camera, mm -hmm. but it also deals with touch, taste, and smell. And on top of all of that, we also, also recall uh, in a moment in time. Do you guys, after you take this test, do you guys tell us? Oh, I would have it right you? away. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk about it. Because I want you to pass. Okay. Uh, I want to pass too, so. <laughs> but uh, memory uh, deals with all five senses, and it also deals with our emotional state. I've been skydiving before. I've never been. I've right. always watched the um, yeah. parachutes. Yeah. I watched them fall out of been like, hmm, that looks kind of fun. I want to try that maybe one day. But when I think about skydiving, I remember what I saw. I remember the feel of the air. Basically, my what face. We, basically the same way would be watching parachuters. Right. <laughs> but but I also remember how terrified I was. You feel completely out of control, and you're falling through the air. Well, I'm scared of heights too, so yeah. I'm kind of leery on. Should I jump from an airplane? All right. <laughs> right. This, all this stuff's going in your head. So when you think about a moment in time, it's a really complex memory. Memory is very complex. So when I'm reviewing these questions with you, if you recall something, 
you need to let me know. So, or even if I don't understand what you're... If you don't understand, you need to let me know. Because okay. I need you relaxed about these questions. And if you remember something during the test or while I'm asking you questions, say, Scott, uh, I need to talk to you a little bit more about this. I left something out. Okay. I didn't mean to, but I left something out. Okay. Okay? Scott, I and, and I, right, cause I won't think you're lying. I, I think, well, Brittany just she just remembered something, right? But, uh, I just want you to. That's walk. probably why you try. You guys try to give people breaks from as you ask them a bunch of questions. Right. Give you a little break to come back to. Because you can think about it. Now. You can calm down. You can stop asking questions for a minute. You can really think about it. Uh, yeah, I was wondering last night, like, why do you guys keep giving me breaks? What are these breaks for? <laughs> so you can calm down and think about what the questions were, and hopefully something will be recalled. Do you know if they're out there looking for James? Yeah, they are. Because that is where we drive the walk back. Because um, another thing I just remember, James said it, Hamilton said it would be best to drop him off on the side we drop him off on because the water rushes this way. Mm -hmm. So he thought about which way the water was flowing when he did it. Yeah. I guess that's my memory, huh? Yeah, that's how memory works. And he said after a while, the water does something. He carries her. Yeah. But he said it has to be moved in 72 hours or something. Yeah, it's pulled a couple bodies out of the water. The water really does a number on it. I don't know. Nothing I've ever drowned, nobody, nothing. I never even drowned myself, even when I had a swim. Yeah, I'm when I felt like I was taking in all that water, I came back up. When I felt like I was drowning, basically, I came back up. That's probably my anxiety panic mode. Eventually, one day I should get my anxiety under control with the medicine, huh? You would think. Yeah, they told me, when I went to the doctors for my anxiety, they told me I was suffering real, real bad from, like, I had it my whole life and didn't even know it. Mm -hmm. And that was probably because it really didn't bother me unless I'm like going swimming or panicking. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think of nothing about it until as I got older. <laughs> Because I kept telling them how, like, I felt when the stuff was happening. And he told me it was my anxiety. All right, here are the questions. There's, like I said, there's three different kinds of questions. Um, How many questions are there? Is it like a whole bunch? It is, and they're all yes or no questions. Uh, here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten questions. Okay. 
here they are. Come on. Now, what I have a hard time remembering well, I'll repeat what them. you asked me, so if I don't understand what you're asking, I'm going to end up asking you like, what are you These are simple, short questions. Um, regarding the death of James, do you intend to answer each question truthfully? Yes. Very good. She has one question. Um, did you intend for harm to come to them? And when I say that, I'm talking about Basically, would you ask me was right. I intending on harming them? Because you told me that your intention was to, to get them in the bathroom. To get them in the bathroom and to leave. <laughs> I'm asking you, did you intend for harm to come to them? Because you told me no. You wanted them to be safe in the bathroom. Yes. So your intention taking them out to rush run was, for, not for was just to drop them off, not for harm to come to them. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. So that's why I ask you. Did you intend for harm to come to them? And when I say them, I'm talking about those three children. So I didn't intend to harm them. So that'd be... But did you intend for harm to come to them? Did no. You, did you intend for them to die or for coyotes no, no, to eat them? No, no, no. Because you told me you were hoping the coyotes wouldn't eat them. So when you dropped them off, did you think they would be hurt? No. Okay. So when I ask you, did you intend for harm to come to them, you're going to say, No. Very good. And I'm going to say this in a different way. I'm just going to add the word the park. So I'm going to ask you, did you intend for harm to come to them at the park? Right. Very good. And I'm going to ask you, did you purposefully lie or omit any information about what happened? So you told me what happened. Yes. Omit means, means leave something out. Did you purposely, it means on purpose, not an accident. Because, like I said, memory is complicated. You could have, you probably have forgotten a detail. That's okay. But if you remember the detail and you decided not to tell me, that's not okay. Okay. So I'm going to ask you, did you purposely lie or omit information about what happened? And you're going to say. Didn't I, hold on. Did I purposely leave something out? No, I did not leave nothing out. Okay. Would you rather me just ask it like that? Yes. Yeah. Because I can't. Okay. Um, Did you purposefully leave something out? No. About what happened? No. Okay, I'm going to say that then. Sorry, it helps me. I had a learning disability. No, no or, this is good. This is hard time, time comprehending what somebody's okay. saying to me. I've changed the, the question to be, did you purposefully leave something out about what happened? No. Okay, that's good. This is why we talk about it. And then I want to establish that you're an honest person. The Detective Hoover, you can believe what Brittany's saying now because she's an honest person. So I'm going to ask you, have you ever lied about something important? No. Very good. Excellent. Have you ever lied to someone who trusted you? No. Very good. Have you ever lied to someone in authority? No. Very good. All right, so those are those questions. And then I got comparison questions. These let me know what your physiology looked like, your, your sweat gland activity, your heart rate, your blood pressure when you're telling the truth. Uh, are you now sitting down? Yes. Uh, do you sometimes drink water? Do I sometimes drink water? Yeah. Yeah, when my mouth is dry. <laughs> yeah, that's a silly question. But I know you're telling the truth when you say yeah. Uh, are the lights on in this room? They are now. So be on when I ask you the questions. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. And then uh, I just got two more questions to make sure you trust me. Because uh, I said we reviewed all the questions. Okay. And during the test, I'm only going only to ask you questions we reviewed. Okay. Uh, and you're going to do it three times, right? right? Well, this is the first time, right? No, Practice. it's just done. Okay. Uh, this is just a review. This is just a review. Okay. Is there something else you're afraid I'm going to ask you about? No. No, because we reviewed everything. Do you believe I will ask you only the questions we reviewed? Yeah. Yeah. That's all the questions. Oh, well, that was easy. Yeah. <laughs> well, supposed to be hard. See, I thought this was going to be hard as ever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was just doing that last one of the other two.
because <laughs> I didn't even wake up. I guess they was yelling me for me to eat, but. <laughs> Good morning and everything. <laughs> yeah, I didn't eat yesterday except for that one meal that he had gave me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now, those are all the questions. Okay, um, what are we doing here? I'm putting some uh, little sticky pads on your palm, and these are to basically keep up sweaty. Yeah, just check for cleaning. Okay. That's what these are for. And they need to sit there for a minute. Is why I do them first. I'm just telling you how photograph works. Have you ever been in this uh, really scary situation where you get a knot in your stomach? Like maybe you have to talk to someone you don't want to talk to, or it's just scary and you get this tight feeling in your stomach. Has that ever happened to you? No. <coughs> it does to some people. You'll hear people say that I saw a set of my stomach was in knots. And uh, soldiers in battle. They frequently talk about. Well, right now I got phlegm stuck in my throat. I mm -hmm. can drink. Uh, soldiers in battle frequently don't lose control of their battles. They'll defecate on themselves during the battle. And the reason this happens is because when you're scared, when there's a threat, your uh, your body makes changes occur in your body so that blood. Is, is taken where it's not needed for the emergency and it puts it to where it is needed, our big muscles. Because subconsciously, our mind's like, uh-oh, there's danger. We've got to get ready to either fight this danger, run away from this danger. But we've got to get blood to our muscles so we can run faster, run farther, fight harder, fight longer. Okay? So when there's danger, the body gets blood where it's not needed, and in one case, it's our digestive system. Because when there's an emergency situation, mm -hmm. to survive, we don't need to digest food right now. We need to fight. So digestion is not important. So our subconscious, our autotomic nervous system is what it's called. It takes, it, it takes blood from where it's not needed, our digestive tract, and it puts it in our muscles. So when that happens, you get this sensation of a tightness in your stomach. And this tightness is the blood vessels constricting to push the blood away from digestion so that it goes and it can be used in the muscles. When this happens, our blood pressure increases, our heart rate increases, and for some strange reason we sweat on our hands, bottom of our feet, and our forehead. But there's nothing I can do to check your digestion, so I don't, I don't check that. But there's another area of your body that is also we get blood from in an emergency. And that's our skin. Our skin is the largest organ of our body. Have you ever heard someone say they were so scared it looked like they saw a ghost? Yeah. You've heard that phrase. That is actual, actually a physical change that happens to someone when they're scared. What happens is, once again, the subconscious kicks in, mm -hmm. like, this is a frightening situation. we got to get ready to run or fight. So we get blood from our digestion, and we get blood from our skin. When we get blood from our skin, the tiny little blood vessels in our skin is called capillaries. They're the tiniest of vessels. And they constrict real tight. They squeeze the blood out of our skin, and it goes to our muscles. And when that squeeze happens, see, we're kind of pink. That pink disappears, and we turn white. And we look like we saw a ghost. I can check that. And... Get it wrong. I use this instrument, oh here it is, called the plethysmograph. 
Doctors use that. Oh, oh, that goes on your yeah. finger? Yeah, hospitals use that to detect oxygen saturation levels in your, in your bloodstream. I use it to determine when blood flow is constricted. So what happens is I'll ask you a question. Mm -hmm. And if you tell the truth, the question represents no danger. Okay. If you lie, your subconscious is going, uh-oh, Brittany lied. So we basically I just need to sit there, relax, and just answer the question right. when you're asking. Because when you lie, your body gets prepared to confront the danger. But my thing is I like to get scared. Mm -hmm. So I need to just to relax, relax, probably take a deep breath, relax, and then answer the question. Right. Because I'm looking to see when you answer a question, is Brittany getting ready to fight or run? Right? So I'm looking for those changes that occur in your body as you are subconsciously getting ready to fight or run. Okay. So that, that's what I'm looking for, your blood pressure, heart rate, sweat plane activity. And the reason that these changes occur is because your body is diverting blood to your muscles. Okay. When you tell a lie. Okay. Okay. So that's how the power graph works. Okay. These changes are very subtle that I'm looking at. So during the examination, I want you to put your feet right on the ground and look, and the arms will be up here and just look forward. Am I allowed to like just relax, basically? Yeah, but you can't move during the test. Okay, well, as long as I'm relaxed, I won't right. be moving. Right. So, so during the test, you just sit there and answer <laughs> questions and be still. <coughs> In between question sets, you can move around a little bit. You know, everything will be connected, so you can't move around a lot. You can move around a little bit. Um, and, uh, and then after we after you take a question set, I grade it, then we start to the next set. Okay. All right? Any questions yet? No. You are sitting on a motion pad. Okay. If there's any lower body movement, that pad will let me know that you're moving your leg and you're moving your feet. Uh, these. Well, if I move mine behind, I have to use the bathroom. Do you have to use the bathroom? No, but just in case. case. This will be quick. Okay. This, this, this isn't going to be a long process. So, I'm just thinking it's going to take hours. No, no, no. You've already done the long part. Okay. This is the short part. Okay. We'll be done in 20 minutes. Okay. Sorry. So you're sitting on the motion pad. That's to detect lower body movement. I'm going to put one here and one up here on you. This is to detect upper body movement. Okay, so if you put your as hand... As long as it don't choke me or if you'll make me feel like I'm choking. It, it won't choke you. <laughs> put your hand together, raise your arms slightly, and bend forward slightly, I can put these on. Like this? Yeah, lean forward. Lean forward, so it gets fine. Give me one more. So I'm going to lean all the way forward. I'm going to raise your arms just a little I know. All right, you can relax. You'll feel a slight change in pressure. i got to bend those. And I'm going to... Sorry, I wanted to fix my cleaning. I don't like my oh, understanding. <laughs> Show it. Uh, That's why when she told me I had to take my beater off, I was like, um, I don't want to. All right. Oh, what happens, sometimes your hand will get real sweaty, and those will want to fall off. Like, you put your hand on that and just relax, and that'll keep that from sliding like off. This? You don't have to squeeze, just let it rest. Yeah, my hand's just sitting there. Yeah. This goes on your middle finger. Got a little finger. This. It's for blood pressure. This also tells me heart rate. We gotta do the practice test first. Okay. Let's see. Am I able to have my feet like this as long as they're? Yep. Okay. Okay. There. Are you right-handed? Yes. Okay. There is a number missing from this list. What number is it? Three. Write down the number three for me. All right. 
for the practice test, I'm going to ask you, in regards to the number you wrote, did you write the number one? And you're going to say? No. Did you write the number two? No. When I get to the number three, I want you to lie to me and say no. This is the only time I'm asking you to lie to me. Because what I'm going to have you do is say no to all of these. And I'm going to end up with... Okay, why? Well, I'm, I'm going to explain to you. I'm going to end up with four looks of what it looks like, what your physiology looks like, your heart rate, your blood pressure, your sweat gland activity, when you tell the truth. Okay. Not and, I'm okay. Gonna, and I'm going to have one sneak peek of what it looks like when you lie. Because it's much more important for me to know when you're telling the truth. That's why I get four looks at that. Okay, because I was confused. Like, why would you, you want me to tell the truth? I, I want to know what it looks like when you lie. I was going to say, why are you telling me to lie and you want the truth? Because I want to know. <laughs> so let's practice this once. In regards to the number you wrote, did you write the number one? No. Choice number two? No. Choice number three? No. Choice number four? No. Choice number five? No. Perfect. That will be the first test. Are you putting them on the board or something? Just say so you remember. Oh, okay. Why and say no. Just to help the brain remember. Just to help the brain remember. <coughs> All right. Let's get started. When I blow up the blood pressure cup, I'll reach over and squeeze it a couple times to make sure the air is evenly distributed in the bladder, and then I'll lower it to the pressure it's going to be at through that question set. Okay. Okay, so it won't be like squeezing, like it's squeezing your arm off? It will be, it will be squeezing, but not as tight as when you get your blood pressure. Okay. I hate when they do the blood pressure. It feels like they're about to pop my arm off. Alright. Okay. Alright, let's get this started. Tested begun, please remain still. Regarding the number you wrote, did you write the number one? No. Just look straight ahead, okay? Oh. <laughs> Always look straight ahead. Are you going to be tall like this? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. This is what is used. This, this test is getting used to the pace of the questions, too, which is kind of slow. Did you write the number two? No. Did you write the number three? No. Did you write the number four? This portion of the test, which you means to take the instrument out of operation. <coughs> okay, you can relax. You respond <laughs> very strong. 
Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, let me, that part. <laughs> yeah, let me show you what it looks like when Brittany tells a lie. Let me pull it up real quick. <clears throat> the green line is the easiest line to decipher. That is your sweat gland activity. I can't tell what's green. This one right here. Okay. So this is the number two. This is me asking, did you write the number two? You say no. This is saying, did you write the number three? This is what the number three looks like. This is, did you write the number four? And you just got a hard in response to that. So this is what it looks like, and it's an extremely strong response. So I'm going to be very confident that, okay. that, uh, <clears throat> that you passed and that if you had lied, I'd been at you to be able to catch a line. So I'm going to be able to report back to Detective Hoover that this is a good test. I just tell the truth. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Do you want to get a drink? Sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. Please remain still. Are you now sitting down? Yes. Regarding the death of James, do you intend to answer each question truthfully? Yes. Do you believe I will only ask you the questions we renewed? Do you believe I'll only ask you the questions we reviewed? The questions that you asked me? Yeah, we already talked about all the questions. Yes. <clears throat> Sorry, I was a little confused. Okay. That's all right, this is the first time. Have you ever lied about something important? No. Did you intend for harm to come to them? No. Have you ever lied to someone who trusted you? No. Did you intend for harm to come to them at the park? No. Sorry. I had a cough 
Well, maybe we might as well just stop this one because we'll have plenty to do this one over again. Okay? Okay. Just relax for a second. Sorry for making things difficult. No, no, you're not. I appreciate your help. Man, that's un- yeah, you've been coughing, so that surprised me. Do you need to take a drink? Mm, not yet. Okay. You ready to start again? Yes. Okay. Gotta start from the beginning. Has to be done, please remain still. Are you now sitting down? Yes. Regarding the death of James, do you intend to answer each question truthfully? Yes. Do you believe I will only ask you the questions we reviewed? Yes. Have you ever lied about something important? No. Did you intend for harm to come to them? No. Have you ever lied to someone who trusted you? No. Do you intend for harm to come to them at the park? No. Is there something else you're afraid I'll ask you a question about? Have you ever lied to someone in authority? No. Did you purposefully leave something out about what happened? 
Portion of the test is over. Please remain still and take the instrument out of operation. Very good. You didn't cough that time. Did I do good on that part? Uh, you can't score it by just one uh, chart. Like I said, we look for patterns. Okay. So I won't know until we get three good charts uh, okay. what the results are. So basically, you won't know until the end. Correct. And you said we're going to practice it twice before the actual... Oh, we're done with the practice. This is the actual test. Okay. Are you, like, writing this stuff down or something? Sometimes drink water. Yes. Regarding the death of James, do you intend to answer each question truthfully? Yes. Do 
you believe I'm only asking you the questions we're going to use? Yes. Have you ever lied to someone in authority? No. Did you intend for harm to come from them to them? No. Have you ever lied about something important? No. Did you intend for harm to come to them in the park? No. Is there something else you're afraid I'll ask you a question about? No. Have you ever lied to someone who trusted you? Did you purposefully leave something out about what happened? No. Good job. No more coughing.
Do it again. Thanks for Sorry, I'm ready to go to sleep. You got me all warm and comfy. Uh huh. Test the big gun because you're main still. Are the lights on in this room? Yes. Regarding the death of James, do you intend to answer each question truthfully? Yes. Do you believe I will only ask you the questions we reviewed? Yes. Have you ever lied to someone who trusted you? No. Did you intend for harm to come to them? No. Have you ever lied to someone in authority? No. Did 
you intend for harm to come to them in the park? No. Is there something else you're afraid I'll ask you a question about? No. Have you ever lied about something important? No. Did you purposefully leave anything out about what happened? No. I'm trying to stay awake, I'm ready to go to sleep. Oh, the hard move, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so basically, what you said is over. I can itch my own or whatever. Okay. Once you're done, you will take this stuff off me, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, it's starting to get a little uncomfortable. I understand, yeah.
five second everything I'll tell you how oh. That's when we started doing it, but it's just a good idea to do. So I'm sure we'll keep doing it. Of course I missed. Don't worry, I missed quite a few times, two times, or in the trash. In your mind, what did you think would happen to him when you dropped him off? I was hoping they'd be safe and okay. And not getting eaten by the coyotes. But then again, me abandoning them was still not safe. Mm -hmm. So, why did you drop him off instead of just having him do it? Because... Because he kept telling me I need to do something with them. To do so them. They're your children. You do something with them. Mm -hmm. Did you think you would ever see him again at the moment you dropped them off? I was hoping I would. Mm -hmm. But you didn't know if you would. No. What did you think the possibilities were in your mind? Did you even think about the possibilities? I'm going to I do did. this. I'm going to do this, and this is probably going to happen to them. I didn't think what the possibilities would have been. I was just hoping and praying that nothing happened to them. But as me dropping them off, I didn't think anything would happen to them. I didn't know what, basically, I didn't know what would happen to them. Then when the, uh, you knew James was hurt when you left, though, because you dragged him with the car. Yes. I 
didn't know you were dead. Right. And you always hurt. Did yes. you see him laying on the ground when you left? When I left? Mm -hmm. No. So you saw him laying on the ground when he came back? Yes. But you heard him screaming. I didn't hear him scream. I heard the other two scream. You, you, you heard him. Oh, you didn't hear the other two, but you heard him before that saying, I don't want to stay. Before I even took off. I'm trying to think of any other questions they would ask you. I'm trying to understand. Just trying so to that understand. was the only question there was a... You were, you were having some response to, did you intend for harm to come to them? Just that one. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have no response of harming them or any of that. Because I wasn't intending to harm them. But you, it seems that you were intending for harm to come to them at the park. You just wouldn't have to do it. Things would just happen on their own. Maybe they would freeze to death. Maybe a coyote would eat them. Somehow this problem was going to get solved while you were away. You could just wash your hands of it. You could drop them off. They would disappear. And this problem would solve itself. Is what it seems like was yes. on your mind. Yes. Without me. Without you doing it. Yes. Somehow, something would happen to them, and this would be resolved. Yes. Okay. Without me doing it. Without you doing it. Like a coyote would do it. Whatever. Right. I, without me, personally, my hands right. doing anything. Okay. Now that it's all over, how do you feel about it? I feel... A lot better. A lot better? Yes. When they started asking me questions, my chest felt like right. it was caving in. Mm -hmm. And now I feel relaxed, ready to get some rest. Right. Okay. Do you have anything else you want to tell me? Mm-mm. All right, let me take you back over there, see if the detective wants to talk to you anymore, and then uh, you can go from there. Can I stop at the bathroom on the way? Please. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but I did make sense. Okay, this is going to be on March the second, the next day after right, so the polygraph. Yes, I'm not understanding. Like the law stuff. Yes, okay. 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 Because have you talked to your attorney about any of this? He tried, told me I couldn't tell him anything. So that you can't tell him anything? Yeah. Why? I don't know. I just can't. I don't understand nothing about the law. Nothing. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm not no. I'm not a lawyer. You know, I can tell you. I can explain the best I can. Okay. So what's going on? Like the charges. I don't understand. Okay. Let's like go, let's what go, each let's, one means. Okay. None of that. Let's go through charge by charge. Okay. The first charge was murder. Okay. You took the six-year-old up to the park to. You're telling me just to leave him. Yeah. All right. Um, the six-year-old grabbed a hold of the car handle. Yes. And you took off. Yes. And you told me that he was drugged some. Yes. Okay. Uh, and ultimately, he died from that. Okay. Okay. That would be the murder charge they're talking about.
right, so I got a note from you that said you needed to talk to me. Yes, because I'm up? not understanding like a lot of stuff. Okay. Because have you I'm talked to your attorney about any of this? He tried, it told me I couldn't tell him anything. So that you can't tell him anything? Yeah. Why? I don't know. I just can't. I don't understand nothing about the law. Nothing. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm not no. I'm not a lawyer. You know, I can tell you. I can explain the best I can. Okay. So what's going on? Like the charges, I don't understand. Okay. Let's like go, let's what go, each let's, one means. Okay. Or none of that. Well, let's go through charge by charge. Okay. The first charge was murder. Okay. You took the six-year-old up to the park to. You're telling me just to leave him. Yeah. All right. Um, the six-year-old grabbed a hold of the car handle. Yes. And you took off. Yes. And you told me that he was drugged some. Yes. Okay. Uh, and ultimately, he died from that. Okay. Okay. That would be the murder charge they're talking about. Okay. You left for over 40 to 45, 50 minutes, and you came back. Okay. Right? Is that correct? Okay. And then... When you come back, the two are out on the road walking. Mm -hmm. You grab them. You pick them up. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. And then you went back to the lot. Yes. Yeah. You saw that he was dead, and you picked him up and put him in the van. Okay, so that was the murder part. Okay. The uh, tampering with evidence is the little boy's evidence. Physical, that's he's evidence at that point. Of okay. what happened. Of what happened. Exactly. Okay, right. So him being evidence, when you tamper with it, you picked him up, you put him back in the car, you took him to your house, left him there, and then you... Okay, what if, what would have happened if I would have called 911? Well, you could explain to the police this is what happened. Would I be in so much trouble that I'm in now? I don't know, because the circumstances would have been just some different. Not a, not a lot, but some different. Yeah, they would have shown that you would have shown that. Hey, I stopped. You know, you should have not. You know, you should have never took your kids up there and just dropped them off anyway. Yes. Okay. I know that. Okay. Um, and then the t and then putting the body into the river. That's also tampering with evidence. Abuse of a corpse is he's deceased, mm -hmm. and the abuse comes in when you don't report it, when you store the baby in your house for a couple of days, and then when you. Toss him in the river. That's abuse of that corpse. Okay, and he's being charged with the last two? Yes. Abuse of a corpse and tampering with evidence. Does that make sense? And they were, the judge was telling me how many years or whatever I could understand them. Okay, I don't know what the years are either. I really don't, or I'd tell you. There's nothing to hide. Well, he told me the one was something 90 days or something mm-hmm probably the corpse use of corpse if I had to guess I don't know murder but he told him the same thing okay and I believe they told me murder was 15 years or some bond or something a thousand dollar bond or something okay you're, you're you got a, you got a million dollar bond total right and yours a million dollars bond? I don't know. It's That's why I was like trying that. to tell the judge. I don't understand. With my learning disability, I have to have everything written down for me to understand it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, did he give you any paperwork this day? No. Okay. Well, you need to get a hold of your attorney. Who are, and you, don't, you remember Chris? Atkins is, is what it said on my little note. Okay. Uh, you'll How get, do I get a hold of him? You'll get a new attorney. Okay. Once this goes to the county, and it's going to the county Friday. Okay, is he going to the county too? Who? Uh, James? Yeah. Yep. I thought I was the only one that's just getting thrown no, around. No, he's going to the county. So basically, too. he's getting the same same thing. They're near the same treatment as me. Yes. Okay. Uh, and then we, what happens once we go to the county? We stay there. We come back. I don't. Like, I've never been in jail before, so I don't know. Yeah, tell. you'll stay there. You won't come back here. You'll never come back here. Once you leave here, you're gone. Now, you can, okay, so you can still send me notes. It'll just take a, a day or two to get to me before. Okay, how does 
Can you explain to me, like, how some stuff around here works? Like, if you this run is, out of toilet paper, what do you do? I, I don't have anything to do with corrections part of it. The corrections part over in the well, county do you know probably if they be give, better. If you get a shower, do they supply the soap and stuff? They should give you, like, an indigent kit, which would be uh, soap and shampoo or something. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know. I don't know how none of this works. Yes, they'll give you As that. As I was of telling you guys, I've never in my life been in trouble. I know, like that. I know that. I know that. I know this is scary. I understand that. Um, too. they said you have to go get my medicine, like you told me you would at my house. You said you was going to send some money there to get it. I'm going to talk to. I'm going to have to talk to that nurse. Has she already been in? Yes. I'm going to call her. I'll have to call her about that. Well, I told her the the place I was getting my meds from and. Like the doctors the and the pharmacy is all in the same area. Okay. And she said she was going to try her best to call the pharmacy. And I told her they're only open from 9 to 5, but the main part is open. Well, that's like what she does is here. So you'll be, if she told you that. Then and I'm allowed to have my medication if it's what I'm supposed to if have. It's what it's prescribed to you, yes. yes. So they cannot deny me of my medication. Nobody can. Well, no, they're going to give you your medicine. They don't. They don't care if you have your medicine or not. I mean, they want you to have your medicine if you need it. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm, she tried to there. tell me that my hydroxyzin was a need, and no, I have to have that three times a day. What's that for? And my anxiety. Your anxiety. Okay, I got you. Um, and the, there's one, two pills that helps me sleep at night. I've really not been able to sleep. Well, I didn't think you would be. People to anyway, even with that, probably. It would help me. But they won't. They probably won't give you anything to help you sleep, unless you list the nurse approves it or the doctor, because she works well, for a doctor. It came from the doctor, so it's for my breathing, because I have real bad asthma and mm -hmm. my heart rate problems. I'll check with her. I'll, I'll get a hold of the nurse and check with her. Okay. I've had, I had my medicines. She said she couldn't tell me what to do. I had a panic attack last night, mm -hmm. and I didn't know what to do. Okay. Uh, and if I had my medicine, it would help out a lot. Right, for anxiety. Yeah. I'm just trying not to end up in the hospital. No, I understand that. I agree. I agree. And then you said you would be able to get my sister's number out of my phone. Yeah, what's her name? Lisa. Last name? Is it just under it's Lisa? Just under Lisa. And you can call them out too. You I can, am. Yeah, the phones are not locked down. Would you be able to write her address down just in case when I'm able to mail people? Because that's her address. <laughs> What do I do? Click a button. There it is. Okay. Um. So the way it seems is James is getting out before me. That I don't know. It'll be up to the judge to make that decision. I don't know. You don't have as many charges as you do. Let me ask you a question. Are you covering for him at all? 
For what? For James. Was he not? Was he for sure not with you that night when you went up there to the park? Because I got some video from the house, and I'm going to check. I, I've not checked it yet. If he wasn't, that's fine. But if he was with you, I hope for the love of God you're not covering. For no, I was. I was by myself with the kids. But prior to that, I don't know what he did to the kids upstairs when he tied them up. He tied them up that day, yeah. earlier that day, right? That same night before we even left. I didn't bother to check on to see if they were okay or anything. Okay, what what same night? Before, I told you guys, well, if you go back to the camera footage, mm -hmm. it'll tell you the exact time. So you leave with all three children. Yes. Let's start there because that's where my mind is. You, you leave with all three children. All three children are fine. Yes, but James acts a little funny. What do you mean by that? Like, I kept asking him, like, what is wrong? He wouldn't tell me, and he kept hiding and putting a hat on, hiding his head. Mm -hmm. so hiding who's head? His, James, my son, James. Okay. So I don't know. So and you're saying he had tied them up earlier in that yes, same day? Yes, and he had kept going up there and hitting them and punching them and all kinds of stuff. Okay. But did James walk out on his own, or did you carry him out to the van? My daughter helped him out. Like holding his hand? My Both my kids helped him out. How did, how, how did they help him? Like they were holding his hand. So each kid's holding his hand, yes. and they'll walk, all three walk into the van? Yes. I got you. And he literally almost fell. I didn't think nothing of it. I didn't bother to check the kids. All right. So I don't know if he already kind of had that injury beforehand, and right. I just made it worse. Right. Because I'm sure he probably not a minute that he tied him up. He did. He did. He told us that. Did he admit that he was beat on him? Yep. He told us that he hit him, punched uh, James in the face. He punched. He always punches him in the face and the top of the head. Right. And I keep telling him that that place you can't do that anyways. And that's the most sensitive place on their body is their face mm -hmm. and their head. Right. Yeah. He told us that. He admitted all that. So basically, he admitted what I was been have been telling you guys that he's done too. Yes, he admitted to tying them up. He told us where he took those ropes when he after he got done with them. Okay. Uh, we got those, and then he told us you got the you and you also got the recording thing that was early. yep okay yep yep he told us he told us where that was yeah yeah but so. you guys didn't ask him like. Why he take it out? And I have no idea. I told uh, him my partner did. I didn't get to talk to James a bunch. I talked to him some, but my partner did most of the interview with him. Which is the other guy that was with yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so the first place you went was the wrong place. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Do you know where that place is at? How far away was that place from the place you ended up? Well, he had told, told me to look, put it in my GPS, Rapid Run Park. Uh, not rapid. I know what you mean. Restaurant. Yes, restaurant park. And it took me, there was um, like a garage right here. It went like this. There's a garage off to this side and a bunch of cars parked here. Mm -hmm. And if you went back farther, there was something else. I didn't go back that far. Okay. You just knew you were in. It, oh. Nothing looked familiar to me. Okay, so you left. Yes. Okay, but that was the wrong place? or yes, that was that was the wrong place. I got you. All right. Now let me ask you this: You told me on that this happened Friday into Saturday, and then Saturday into Sunday is when you took the poor boy up there to the, to the bridge. Yes. Okay. So um, James is insisting that 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 happened with you and the kids at Thursday into Friday. And then you guys dumped the body Saturday and Sunday. He's saying the boy was upstairs for two days, not just one day. Deceased. Well, see, I'm not, I don't remember the days. Okay. I could have sworn it was Friday and Saturday, but. Could have possibly been that. It could have possibly been. Thursday and yeah. Friday. Okay. Right. It's just between me and him, we've been going through so much. 
Well, you need to, you know you need to sever ties with him. I hope you're smart enough to know that. He's not he's not a good dude. Well, I done lost my kids. And they're going for good. Hang tight for a minute, okay? Can I have something to drink, please? Yeah. What do you want? Put that in your pocket. Um, I don't have any pockets. Is there any way that I can get my glasses out of my purse that I'm supposed to wear? Yes, they're back in your property. I took them back there last night because I thought they were the kids, that little boys, but I found those. Uh, oh my gosh. Your mind blank? Yeah, t totally blank. I might say you wanted to say something and then just like went away. Oh, I do have your meds. That's what I was going to tell you. I can't, I'm not going to be able to get them to him until tomorrow because the guy that, you don't know him, but he's our evidence guy. Yeah. They're locked up uh -huh. because we took everything from the house and it's all secure. We tag it into property. Like what from the house? Well, our pictures and just anything that we, any phones that we found, we take that kind of stuff in the house oh, when we do I'm search like, warrants. What? So, what? but he's got that locked up, and I will get that okay, to him. What, what happened to our stuff that's at the house? It's still there. But I talked Can to anybody go just, in there and get it? It's everything secure. The whole house is secure. Locked. Yeah, secure. Yeah, locked. And you said the landlord met us, met us yesterday. Uh huh. Which was Taylor, right? Short dude. Yeah. Yeah. Nice guy. And uh, yeah, he went, he let us in, and then locked up behind us. So we're all good. Everything's secure in the house. Um, that's something you might want to talk to your sister about. What is, would she I be would able be to go get my stuff out of there? With your permission, yeah, she should be able to get it. get your personal, especially anything that like sentimental stuff. Yeah, I would get that stuff if I were you. I was gonna be like I got your medication. Now listen, I'm going to try to remember. I need your medication. I'll go write it down right now because i got another long day tomorrow. So, yes, you're good. I got your medication. Okay, how would I get Matt, my glasses? Would you tell them to get me my glasses? Yes, when I take you back. She's got glasses in her property, and she'd like them back. I'm fine with that. Yep. Okay. So that's your pop. I'll give you about five minutes. So you guys came off of your street when you left that night? Mm-hmm. Or what? when you left, that with the kids? Well, I went the same get, way. Straight down Central? Did you come down to Central Avenue? Um, I went straight down the street and went to Logan. To Logan? Followed my GPS as it told me to go. So it probably told you to go down Central. So, you know, downtown or downtown yeah, Central? Yeah, I, I just typed in the GPS of okay. the park and that's how I got there. All right. Also, something I meant to mention to you, he told me to delete where I typed in my GPS. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can still get that from the, through the boost or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then the text message that I had texted him mm -hmm. before he called me, he told me delete. So, I don't know if you can get that off. Do you have a pass, do you know his passcodes to his phone? Like the main thing? Yeah. Like from the store? No, like, you know how I get on my phone, I have to type a little password? Are you talking about when you go to my boost? No. I got his phones. Okay. Okay. So to get into my phone, I have to type a password to get in it. 
Do you know what his password is? No, because he didn't have one. He didn't have one? Was he using that phone that he gave your daughter? Or is that your daughter's phone? No, that is his wife's daughter's phone. Oh, okay. Does he use that one? No. He has a black phone that's kind of similar to the bigger one of mine, mm -hmm. and another black phone that's the same one as that purple one yeah. with the black case. And there's no passcode on it? No. Morning. Morning. How are you today? Morning. So, real quick, like, we got all these phones and this one. This phone doesn't work, doesn't do anything. Okay, this doesn't have a phone. No. Okay, this is from the way. No number, no nothing. Okay. Is that the one that was in our purse? No, this no. one was the in the front. One the this one, one was in the front bedroom. Yes, that one doesn't all have right. nothing. Now, it, this that's phone. It. That is James's. This is James' primary phone. No, it's not. It's not his no, primary not. phone. Okay. So. Y'all are missing a phone. I can tell you that right now. Yeah. Um. James told me we were missing a phone. Just like this, but it had a black case. So where was it? He had it. And he then he went back to the house, so I don't know what he did with He told me he swore up and down that it was laying on the coffee table in the living room. That's the one I got. That's the one I picked up that night. Okay. When he left, and that ended up being his daughter's. Yeah. Or his ex-wife's daughter's. Okay, that's the one that came out of this one. This is the one. That one, yeah, that's got, they activated nothing. I don't okay. even know why he even... Because he was on it that day, or he was holding it when he, I walked in. That's to make you guys think that it's some his phone when it's not. Okay. I'm telling you guys that it's not his phone. And she told him, or he told her to delete the GPS off of her phone. Did she do that? Yeah. Okay. And also delete the message that he she had sent him. Wow. Yeah, that, that doesn't matter. I can bring back a lot of that stuff. Yeah, that's why I was telling him, like, would you guys be able to bring back that stuff even though after I deleted it because he told me to? Yeah. So, um... You guys said he has a safe there, right? Yeah. You might want to check in there for his phone. Where was the safe at? I didn't in the front room. Room. bedroom. But we didn't have any reason to check that. Is there a code to the safe? Yeah. Do you know it? 7128. Same as your phone here? That's what you gave me to get into your phone. My phone don't have no passwords, neither one of my phones. Right. Well, where did that where did that come from? Her? That's the boost the main thing from boost. Like to pay the phone bill, anything. Oh, the password to pay the bills or yeah, the, and to activate. To get anything from boost. I got you. I got you. So you think his phone pump might be in that safe? Yeah, he's done something with it. I'm telling you guys, he's done something. How do you, so, okay. He has, I had this phone and this phone. He had this phone and a, whole, a phone just like this, but black case and all. We had both two active phones. Mm -hmm. So you guys got to be searching somewhere because he has another phone. And that is the main thing. You think you'll be able to get those to be a tech? I don't know. I, I I should. I don't see why I couldn't. Well, I mean, he admits that she texted him. Yeah, he's in bed again. Told him call her and said to come back. What is 
your Gmail that is showing up that is on your phone? Do you know? Um, I can write it down for you. Yeah, write it clearly. <coughs> write it clearly. Queen Pretty Brit twenty at gmail dot com. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. I say I'm trying to help you guys anyway. Possibly. Yeah, yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. We appreciate it. Um. So. Okay. Where do you, so your gut? would tell you that phone is where? In the safe field, that's where he puts everything to hide, anything. But then if you, if you got, because it was 7128 to get in that safe. Is there a key in there um, to get in it? I think he has it on one of his key sets. Do you have any keys on it in his property? I want to say he had one or two loose keys, but it didn't look like. If we go back over there, we can't get in the safe. We'll just take it. Yeah. And then we'll get in it. Yeah. I mean, they're not that hard to get into. Um, yeah, because he might have, when he put it in there, he might have changed the. That's kind of what I'm thinking. If he went through the effort of putting it in there, he's probably. Done changed it. Yeah, he's probably changed it. I don't know why you would do that. I mean, it helps with evidence. So the so Friday, did you go up to Lowe's? I didn't go anywhere Friday. <coughs> Any time this past week, have you been to Lowe's? No, I don't go to Lowe's. He does. Okay. I've never been in Lowe's. I don't even know what they have. In does there. he take the kids to the store to Lowe's or anything like that, or he wouldn't be around them? Um, normally, he makes them stay at home with me. Okay, that's what I'm asking. So you've not been to Lowe's? And I don't know what Lowe's even looks like. So Lowe's department store up there at, uh, you know, where the old Steak and Shake used to be? Up there on town? That's I know where Lowe's is called, but I've never been in Lowe's nothing. Okay, that's what I'm asking. Somebody called and said they saw you in Lowe's Saturday or Friday. Actually, I went in there. I remember, actually, we went in there for a drill or something that he wanted. <laughs> Did you go with him? Yes. Were the kids with you guys or elsewhere? And if, and if kids were in school. Kids were in school. What, what day was it? Um, it had to be Monday or Tuesday. Of this past week? Yeah, because they go to school Monday and Tuesday. Yes, okay. That's right. And that's not where you guys got the rope. I don't know where you got the rope. I didn't go with him to get no rope. Okay. Cool. You, you thought that was Walmart, though, is what you yeah. told me. I mean, he only goes, he goes to Lowe's because that's what he goes for the boss. Right, which is right. To get the material get and material all that. So, I don't know. Did he lift the drill or buy the drill? They couldn't find it. Oh, they couldn't find the right one he wanted? Yeah, he had no luck with it. Okay. So, we just went back home. All right. Anything else? Nope. Um, do you, what is his email? Gmail. Charles937. I'm going to say, what in the world is that? Hello. It's a cloud, isn't it? Hello. Hi, this is Olivia with Children Services. Well, yeah, hold on, Olivia. There you go. That's a seven. Alright. That's a nine three seven. seven. Yeah. You don't have to it's almost a kite. So I messed up. Well, you After I left. Because when I walked in you just heard you sent me a kite that you wanted to talk to. 
Uh -huh. So you approach me, which is fine. Okay. That's any time. I told you that. Um, but I forgot to Mirandize you before we started talking. So, like, that information. This, 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 like, okay, I explained it to you, and I'll explain it to you again. I'm going to read this to you, okay. and then we'll go through step by step. So anytime I talk to you, I have to? You have to, yes. Any, why is that? Because say you give me some information that I'm going to use, like you gave me the information about his Gmail uh -huh. and his phone being well, probably I mean, you locked asked up. me that, so that's I know. what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> no, 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 no. But listen, since I didn't Mirandize you, I can't use that information. Okay. Okay. It's it's weird. I know, but uh, I'll, I'll explain I don't, it to you. I don't, I don't. Because by law, you don't have to talk to me. I know you requested to talk to me, but you don't have to talk to me without your lawyer present. Well, I don't have a lawyer. Yeah, you do. It's Chris Atkins. You told me. So, so the you, lawyer that I uh, they gave me in the court. Court. That is your attorney for now. Okay. Probably. Will once they you tell get me to, who my new one is once? Yes, absolutely. And I'll have his number and all that? Yes. Okay. So can I read you this and ask you those same questions? Okay, warning. I am a police officer. I warn you, you have the right to remain silent, which means you don't have to talk to me. Anything you say can will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to consult with a lawyer. You can talk to your attorney, your lawyer, mm -hmm. before and during any questioning while you're being questioned. That if you cannot afford a lawyer, one that's appointed to you, which is Chris Atkins, and then down the road they'll appoint somebody else. Okay. Okay. They may appoint somebody else. Uh, well, he said I qualify maybe for one or two. That's what Chris Acton said. Attorneys? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, before any questioning, okay, you can stop talking to me or any other police officer at any time during questioning. Okay. So you don't have to talk to me, and when you're done, just say I'm done. Okay. Okay, flip that card over. Print your name there again at the top. My wife keeps texting me. I wish she'd stop. I'm busy. Well, the only reason why I asked you to, if I can talk to you, because you're able to tell me stuff that I need, that I'm trying to find out. Yes. Well, you wanted to know about your charges and understand that. Yes. Well, you understand that because I've never been locked up for, so I don't know what... Yeah, everything means. Yeah. Yeah, it can get confusing. Today is the second, 3-2, and time is 12 10. 12 10? Yes. See, I wish when we were in jail, I wish we'd be able to see a clock. That would drive me insane, too, not knowing the time. I'm with you. I'm like, um. Because there's no clocks back there. No. You think they could put something safe on the walls? Yeah, that's what I'm. Yeah. I mean, put it even on the. Well, I, I wouldn't even care if they put it all the way on the ceiling in my room. Right, right. <laughs> You gave me, before I Mirandized, I'm, you've been Mirandized now. Mm -hmm. Can you confirm that this is your Gmail account? Yes. Queen Pretty Brit 20, 20 at, at Gmail. Gmail. Com, yes. And that you believe this is his? That is his. Charles 937 yes. at Gmail.com. Yes. Okay. And you I said. I have a couple more questions, but I'm trying to remember what they were. Tell me where his phone is again, where you think it might be. It has to be in the safe. And the code of that safe? Mm. That you could remember? Zero. What did I just tell you guys? Something three seven nine. Oh seven one two. No, it's my last four of my social. Last four of your social. Girls, but it has an O. Oh, seven one two eight. Yep. Sorry, I had it. <laughs> I couldn't remember either. You just told me. I had a remember. I'm having problems remembering. That's all right. So what else did you want to ask me? Um, how long will I be here? Until so Friday. You'll be shipped out. You probably won't know. That's not true. Uh, Butler County Jail will be better, number one, just so you know that. The facility is just newer. And it's just nicer. Um, Do I get put with somebody else or by myself? That I don't know how they work over there. I can take, I can make it work. I can do that here by yourself, and I'll, I would imagine you'll be by yourself until you go through court process.
Okay, so you don't know one hour. And don't, you know, my advice is don't tell nobody your business when in jail. Okay? Just tell them I'm here for whatever. Make up something. Okay? Don't worry about getting beat up. That's not kind of, that's not how. You'll be alright. Okay? People watch a lot of TV and they get into these situations and freak out. Like me? Yeah. You'll be alright. And I do got your medication like I told you. I, I will get that to you tomorrow. As soon as I get the key to that property room. And you do think that this could have happened on Thursday, yes. not Friday. Check that. So with me telling you guys exactly everything happened and uh, he didn't tell me exactly. He said I did good on the whatever thing, the polygraph test or whatever it's called, mm -hmm. except for one question, and then he went over with me. Do you remember what that question was? Um, I don't. I do not. Did I think the kids were going to get harmed? Mm -hmm. No, I didn't think they would get harmed, but I did not know if they would get harmed. Meaning that you, so was your intention to go up there and throw your kids in the river? No. Did you got did you and James talk about that? No. Did he did anything about driving them into the river? No. And you jumping out of the car and saving yourself? No. Uh, any 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 type of killing that I'm going to kill these three and I'm going to leave them up there. He's the talked about putting them in the car, throwing them in the river, and burn it. Okay. Um, but I've never talked about any of that. I wouldn't do that to my kids. Okay. So your intention was what that night? Just to drop them off yes. and be done? Yes. I got you. Not to harm them, nothing. Okay. That's why I'm saying that with James, it was a pure accident. It wasn't meant to happen. I hear you. Okay. Thank you.